From the personal log of Guybrush Threepwood. Sometimes when it's quiet, I can still hear the monkeys. It's hard to believe that it's only been a few years since I first washed up on the beaches of Melee Island, armed with nothing more than a goofy name and an overpowering urge to become a swashbuckling pirate. I want to be a pirate. Who could have suspected that such a humble pursuit would lead me to cross swords with the evil ghost pirate LeChuck, the slimiest slug ever to plunder the Seven Seas? <laughs> And who could have guessed that my battles with LeChuck would introduce me to the love of my life, Melee Island's Governor Elaine Marley. Or that my efforts to win Elaine's hand would repeatedly drag me to the mystery-drenched shores of Monkey Island. That's the second biggest monkey head I've ever seen. Or that I would finally end the scourge of LeChuck, burying him beneath a mountain of ice. Not me, that's for sure. Back then, the only thing duller than my sword was my wit. Now look at me. I'm married to the most beautiful governmental official in the Caribbean. The entire Tri-Island area shudders at the sound of my name. And now my plunder bunny and I are returning to Melee Island after the most incredible honeymoon in the history of- Guy Rush! Uh, yes, dear. Dreaming and make yourself useful. There's an enemy pirate fighting over there. Um, excuse me. I don't suppose you'd mind just leaving us alone? I'll give you all my milk money. Um, excuse me? I guess he doesn't want to talk to me. It's the grated door to the ship's cargo hold. It's full of hot coals. That cannon looks ready to fire. If only I could get that thing to go off. Their ship is bigger than ours. Those bullies. I don't think anybody reloaded that cannon. It's too cumbersome to handle with just my feet. There's a pile of red hot coals simmering on the deck there. Now I'm glad we got the ship with the flame retardant lacquered deck wood. Could you untie me? Push that smelly pirate right over the rail. Now that's the stuff of pirates. Mm. I hope the loyal citizens of Melee don't hurt themselves. I mean, you know, all the pushing and shoving on the dock to see my, uh, well, our return. Could be dangerous. Make sure this one stays on top. Then there was the swab who came at me with the rusty fid. I sure taught him a thing or two about the proper use of deck chairs. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> I got it. <sighs> the burden of being the governor of such an adoring yet unsophisticated public can be so draining. 
I'll be lucky if I can get a second to myself for months. You know, we make a great team. The way we communicate, the way we work together, and the way we anticipate each other's every move. There's nothing we can't accomplish. Hmm. Oh, well, here goes. Might as well get all the hullabaloo over with. What? Where is everyone? Maybe everyone went to bed early? Where's the welcoming committee? The banners? The crushing throng of well-wishers? Oh, dear. Do you know what this means? We can spend another three months honeymooning. No, you adorable numbskull. Something has gone horribly wrong while I've been away. N nothing else can explain. What's that? Hey, it's Timmy the monkey. How are you, boy? <laughs> Either his litter box is full or he's trying to tell us something. What is it, boy? Timmy? Is something wrong? Free grog at the scum bar? There's been an outbreak of scurvy? He won 74 bucks playing bingo but lost it all playing banana futures. There's trouble, trouble at the, the governor's, governor's mansion. mansion. Let's, Let's go. go. <laughs> hmm. Let's try 49, 6.7, minus 14. Fire! Huh? What do you think you're doing? What does he look like I'm doing, fancy pants? I'm knocking down the governor's mansion. You can't knock down the governor's mansion without approval from the governor. Yeah. The governor's dead, ma'am. Dead? Was the marriage that killed her, they say. But I am the governor. Do I look dead to you? Uh, no, ma'am. Then cease and desist your boulder flinging immediately. Yeah. Sorry, governor. I'm on the contract. I'm legally obligated to destroy your mansion with this here catapult. Something's rotten on Melee Island. I know. But the stench usually drifts away with high tide. I've got a plan. Although it sometimes lingers during an eclipse. Oh, guy brush! Uh, yes, dear? I'm going down to City Hall to see about getting declared undead. Won't that make you a flesh-eating zombie? In the meantime, I need you to do two things for me. More back rubs and foot massages? And maybe later. First, I want you to put a stop to this insane boulder flinging. Stop the insanity. Check. Second, I want you to go to Lucre Island. Talk to my grandpa's lawyers. They might know how to help us fight City Hall. Oh, but I hate talking to lawyers. And not as much as they'll hate talking to you, dear. Okay. Well, I've got a resurrection to perform. Be good, dear. And don't forget, stop the catapult, go to Lucre Island. Sounds like the honeymoon's over. She was a lot nicer before she died. Um, excuse me. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Just a sec. What? Please stop firing boulders at my house. It's very unnerving. Sorry about that, Kate, but I'm on the contract. What are those numbers you're muttering? You know, I don't rightly know. They're supposed to be targeting numbers or something, but I'll be danged if I can figure them out. All I know is how to hit that cactus. I'm trying to extrapolate from there. Could you show me how to hit the cactus? Nah, I only do that when I think the catapult's out of alignment. I wouldn't want to waste one of these boulders. They're expensive. You seem like a busy man. I'll let you return to your evil deeds. Thanks. Um, excuse me. What? You seem like a busy man. I'll let you return to your evil deeds. Thanks. Hey, get away from there before I pop you one on the head, capiche? Good. Now stay over there, pencil neck. Hmm. Let's try... 17? 5.5. Minus 6. Fire! Hey, get away from there before I pop you one on the head, capiche? Good. Now stay over there, pencil neck. 
Hey, get away from there before I pop you one in the head, capiche? Good. Now stay over there, pencil neck. What an odd looking cactus. What an odd looking cactus. Hmm. No way. I don't want to be inside if that guy actually gets lucky and hits the house. 5.5. Mine is 27. It's three o'clock. You know, I've never even been in there. I don't even think I'm registered to vote. You know, I've never even been in there. I don't even think I'm registered to vote. Brush, what are you doing here? Uh, looking for a bathroom? Quit fooling around and stop that catapult. Sold. Another sold sign. Cream of Frog. Cream of Frog. Cream of Frog. Essence of worm-ridden seagull. Ugh, that's really, really disgusting. Essence of worm-ridden seagull. Ugh, that's really, really disgusting. Monkey armpit juice? Sea slug pate. Beady. Beady. Ouch. I hate to be that guy. Ouch. I hate to be that guy. Wow, a 4DFX Voodoo Mask 6. Cutting edge voodoo technology. The smell of this basket brings back horrible memories of Puerto Pollo. Nothing interesting up here. Perhaps I've become desensitized, but this pile of human bones no longer sickens me as it once did. What a strange mirror. What a strange mirror. Hmm. It appears to be attached to the wall. I'm not carting around anyone's mortal remains unless it's absolutely necessary. No way. Installing the drivers on these things always gives me a headache. No way. I've had more than my share of chicken feathers. No, I'm not into torturing complete strangers. The present company accepted, of course. I don't have a thing to my name. I'm not picking that up. Uh, no thanks. I'll pass. 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 That's a ring finger, I'd hate to see the size of the ring. For a pinky finger, it's quite large. Ah, the middle finger. 
the most communicative of fingers. This finger seems slightly different than the others. Hmm, this table must have been a hand-me-down. That's quite a thumb. If I want to point at something, I'll use my own index finger. Yikes! You fool. Hey, it's you! Yes, it is I. You seem to show up whenever I'm in trouble. Why? Who can say? Perhaps it's because we share an unspoken magical bond. Perhaps the fates have intertwined our destinies. Or maybe I've got an unbreakable five-game deal with LucasArts. In any event, I'm here to help. How can I assist you, Guybrush Threepwood? My mystic eye sees precious time wasted in idle chit-chat. What would you like to know? Didn't you relocate to the island of Puerto Pollo? I did, but I sensed that I was needed here on Melee. Besides, the incessant clucking on Puerto Pollo was driving me mad. Did you really move your thriving voodoo emporium back to Melee Island just to be near me? Yes, but perhaps my voodoo senses were on the fritz. Why is Melee Island so empty? That is an excellent question, Guybrush. I thought so. Well? What? Why is Melee Island so empty? Oh, that. About a month ago, a mysterious overseas investor began buying up all of Melee Island from the local pirates. Those that wouldn't sell have been challenged to various forms of insult games. Insult sword fighting, insult golf, insult darts, insult arm wrestling. You get the idea. Strangely, this investor always wins. He's the best insulter the Tri-Island area has ever seen. Eventually, even the craftiest of Mele's pirates have been forced to sell after wagering their homes and businesses in ever-escalating rounds of insult gaming. How awful. Why don't the pirates just refuse to play? How many pirates do you know that can resist a duel? Good point. In any event, the few pirates remaining on Melee Island live in constant fear of being challenged by this foreign investor. Do you know anything more about the mysterious foreign investor? Only that he comes from a far away exotic place called Sydney. Sydney? That sounds like the name of a kid who gets beat up a lot in school. You've helped me so much over the years, and I still don't know your name. My name is not important. Oh, come on! What's your name? Do not taunt the fates, Threepwood. The truth of my name will be revealed when the time is right, and no sooner. I'd like to talk about more important matters. Like what? I sense that you wish to dabble in the dangerous voodoo arts. What did you have in mind? Have you got any of those evil destroying voodoo dolls? Sorry, we're fresh out. We're expecting a shipment from Dinky Island early next week, though. How about one of those invisibility necklaces to help me sneak into women's locker rooms? Those are nice, aren't they? Yeah. Got any? No, it's been a bad year for unspoiled eyeballs. Do you have any plus 10 strength elixirs in stock? Perhaps. What are your current stats? Uh, I don't think I've got any. Well then, what good would a strength elixir do? I see your point. I could really use a potion that would make me immune to severe gas attacks. You're telling me. Tragically, our shipment from Booty Island is also running late. I'm in the market for an enchanted sword that hypnotizes my enemies into a deep stupor before I skewer them with it. You don't need a sword to send your foes into a stupor, my child. Just be yourself. Gee, thanks. 
Have you got any snacks? I'm starving. I left my gum machine in Puerto Pollo. You might want to try the scum bar if you're really hungry. On second thought, I probably shouldn't be shopping at a time like this. True. I sense that your desire to waste time in pointless gossip has not been sated. Go ahead. I'd like to talk about more important matters. Like what? The cards have foretold that you seek direction. How do I stop that weasel from hurling rocks at my house? What goes up? must come down. But what's more important is where it comes down. Yeah, like on my house. <sighs> I'm still not sure how to stop my house from getting destroyed. Gravity is your friend. Use their own instruments against them. How do I get to Luker Island? It's a fairly simple procedure. Get on your ship. But I don't have a ship. So find one. Must I draw you a map? Then assemble your crew. A crew? Where am I gonna get a crew? This is a pirate town. Even in these economically depressed times, you should be able to find a couple of competent sailors. Then sail to Lucre Island. But I don't know where to find Lucre Island. That's what navigators are for, Guybrush. I believe there's one in the scum bar. Actually, I think I can figure out what to do next all by myself. Very well. I don't need any more of your enigmatic hoodoo right now. As you wish, Guybrush. I'll be here later if you need me. Sold. Wow, that's one flexible merboy. Wow. I suppose it would make a good lawn ornament, but it'd never fit in my pants. Ahoy there, fellow seafaring wastrels. Yes! Ah! Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> uh, you uh, startled us. Yeah, that's it. Uh, I startled. <laughs> you two look awfully familiar. Oh, we have very common looking faces. Isn't that right? Oh, definitely. Can't swing a dead Chinook around here without hitting someone who looked like us. Dudes, aren't you the founding members of Keel Hall, the world's loudest pirate speed metal band? Not likely. Neither of us can carry a tune. Neither can Keel Hall. Are you sure we haven't met? Drop it, Threepwood. Hey, how'd you know my name? Doesn't everyone know the name of Guybrush Threepwood, Mighty Pirate? True, but I still think you guys look familiar. Aren't you the famous comedy team of Youngler and Munts? Youngler and Munts? Never heard of them. You haven't? But they're brilliant! They do this bit about how men leave the commode seat up, <laughs> and how women love to shop for boots. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess you had to be there. Apparently. I could swear that I know you guys. I really don't think so. Didn't we run into each other last summer on Fat Island? We've never been to Fat Island. And never in the summers. I could swear that I know you guys. I really don't think so. Didn't we share a cruise to Monkey Island once? I don't think so. Carla, make the bad man stop! He's come to take us back to Monkey Island! Carla? 
Uh, who? You can't fool me. You're Carla, the Swordmaster of Melee Island, and you're Otis. I don't know what you're talking about. Let it go, Otis. The half-wits recognized us. I knew you guys looked familiar. You were two-thirds of my original Monkey Island crew. The crew you abandoned on Monkey Island, you mean? Do you have any idea how difficult it is to escape from Monkey Island? No. How difficult is it to? Escape from Monkey Island. Um, well... It's really difficult. Yeah. The whole experience was very traumatizing. Scared us for life. Gee, I'm sorry. Yeah, well, sorry doesn't feed the narwhals, Buster. So, what have you rapscallions been up to? Ah, uh, where to begin? What have you been doing with yourself, Carla? You mean, after I finally managed to escape from Monkey Island? You're never gonna forgive me for that, are you? Not in this lifetime. Anyhow, I've spent the last few years here on Melee Island re-establishing my Swordmaster credentials. Well, that sounds productive. Oh, it was. Until that Australian showed up. Australian? Yeah. An Australian real estate developer. He challenged me to a round of insult sword fighting. Badgered me into betting my house. It was over so quickly. <laughs> Gee. Now I wander the streets of melee insult sword fighting for food. How sad. How about you, Otis? What have you been doing for the last few years? Well, after I finally escaped from Monkey Island, I made my way back to Melee Island where I tried to resume my former profession. Petty thievery? I prefer to think of it as proactive redistribution of wealth. Unfortunately, the indignities I suffer on Monkey Island have left me so jittery that I cannot pick a lock or a pocket without making more noise than a flatulent hippo. What vivid imagery. So how do you earn a living? Begging mostly. You'd be amazed how many people will pay to hear the story of the innocent pirates who were betrayed by their idiot captain. Whatever happened to Captain Smirk, the sword trainer? He sold his house to a foreign investor. But he didn't want to! The investor challenged him to a round of insult gin rummy and beat him. Smirk was so ashamed that he signed over the deed to his house on the spot and hopped the next ship out of Melee. The same story's been repeated dozens of times all over Melee Island. This slimy investor strolls into a pirate's house or place of business, challenges him to a game of insult something or another, then humiliates them so badly that they have to cave into his hostile takeovers. Haven't you noticed all the sword signs around here? Well, where's the third member of our old crew? You mean Meat Hook? That's a good question. After we finally got off Monkey Island, Meat Hook renounced his piratey lifestyle and returned to his true passion. Drinking? Painting. Painting? But the guy's got no hands. That's what we said. These stories are too depressing. Let's talk about something else. If we must. Won't you join my crew? For old time's sake. Guybrush, take a good look at Otis. Monkeys! Monkeys is full of the monkeys! That's what happened to him the last time we agreed to be part of your crew. Now, what in the name of Blackbeard's dandruff could possibly convince us to join you in another idiotic adventure? Well, how about... My undying and unconditional gratitude, baby. What was that? Were you coming on to me? Oh, icky. Hey, I'm married. Then quit using your picking up Winch's voice. It's creepy. Sorry. Well, how about... Some lovely property off the coast of Booty Island. Oh, that's rich. Everyone knows that a mysterious foreign investor has bought up all the real estate around Booty Island. Well, how about... Treasure. Boatloads of treasure. We're still waiting for the treasure you promised us the last time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, how about... A brand new car! What? Sorry, I kind of got caught up in the moment. Well, how about... Cushy government jobs. Hmm, that sounds interesting. Carla, what are you doing? What kind of cushy government jobs are we talking about? You know, the kind where you're paid three times the going private sector rate, no one checks your work, and it's impossible to be fired. Don't listen to him, Carla. He just wants to take us back to Monkey Island. We'd want contracts, of course. I'll see what I can do. Be seeing ya. Not if we see you first. <laughs> I wonder where this goes. Too bad it's locked. Guess I'll never find out.
Ahoy, mateys. Buzz off, buzzard breath. Yeah, can't you see we're busy here? You're in a bar. You're playing darts. This is busy? Listen, we're playing for the title of Grand Master Dart Champion of Melee Island. Yeah, and unless you're good enough to compete, which you aren't, we'd advise that you take a long walk off a short pier. Would you strapping young specimens like to join my pirate crew? I would, but once I win the Melee Championship, I'm gonna have to go on tour to win the Tri-Island Dark Throws Championship. Actually, you will be able to join this crew since I will be winning the Melee Island Championship. Says you, Swabby. Knows me, Cracker Brain. Are you sure you won't join my crew? Nah. Nah. Who's winning? Right now, we're in a dead tie. I'm a dart throwing maniac. Really? Back in grade school, they called me the dart master. Or something that rhymed with that, anyway. So, can I join your game? No. no. Why are there so many holes in the wall around the dartboard? Those are uh, from other players. Yeah, we never miss a shot. Get out of here. No, really. Pick your number. He hit it. Land one right in the eye of that skull over the door. Ha! That's easy. Hey, you're pretty good. Well, I guess I'll be shoving off now. Are you still here? Hey! Get out of the way! Oops. It's half full. Or perhaps it's half empty. The owner wouldn't be too happy if I took that. That sword's in there pretty deep. Looks like I missed a mighty bar fight. I'm pretty sure I'm not the one true king. The human body is a beautiful thing, most of the time. <laughs> Hail and hello, oh master of all things grog-like. What can I do for you, Mr. Marley? Uh, Threepwood. All ah, right, uh, sorry about that, Mr. Threepwood. This place is quieter than a crypt full of mimes. Isn't it a crying shame? It's been that way since that Australian blew into town. Australian? Aye, a scurrilous Australian land developer who's been using strong-arm tactics to buy up all the land on Melee Island. Half of our regular clientele have been driven off island by the no-good scoundrel. Wow. Do you know anything more about this Australian developer? Mm, not really. I'd surely love to give him a piece of my mind, though. How'd you like to join a crew of courageous pirates on a dangerous quest? Ooh, that sounds like fun. Great! But I should really check with my boss first. Hey, boss! What? Can I have a few days off to join Mr. Threepwood here on a swashbuckling adventure? Are you out of your grog-addled mind? No. I guess I can't go. Damn. You got me snacks? I've got some pretzels. Well, that seems harmless enough. Yep. The Scumbar's famous kudu jerky pretzels. Ooh. Got anything else? Mm, not really. Okay, let's have some. Sorry, can't give you any. What? Why did you... That drunk at the table over there? He has the last basket. Can't you give them to me without a basket? Sorry, it's Scumbar policy. Grog me, barkeep. Why, I'd be glad to. After you show me some ID. Uh, 
I, uh, left it in my other pants. Well, either you change your pants, or you don't get any grog. But I like these pants. Well then, no grog for you. I've got troubles. Like what? The government is trying to blow up my house. Well, that's a crying shame, Mr. Threepwood. Yeah, if anyone's gonna blow up my house, it should be me. Well, I haven't got a crew to take me to Lucre Island. Hmm. You know, there's probably a pirate or two hanging around that could be coaxed into joining your crew. I need a ship to take me to Lucre Island. You might want to try the Melee Island Municipal Shipyards. Does Stan still work there? Oh, no, no. The whole place is run by the harbor mistress these days. Harbor mistress? Aye. She's very by the book. Although, <laughs> she does have her tender side. If her tender side is anything like the painting behind you, I don't want to see it. On second thought, I hate listening to myself whine. You and me both, brother. Uh, I've got to go. Right, well, Grog will do that. Hi there, scruffy looking pirate person. I'm Guybrush Threepwood, mighty pirate. What's your name? Cheese, Ignatius Cheese. What big arms you have, Mr. Cheese. The better to insult arm wrestle with, Mr. Threepwood. Don't you mean insult sword fighting? Nay. While you were away, the insult sword fighting paradigm became attached to a host of other pirate pastimes. Paradigm? Well, nowadays you can't throw a dart or, or play a game of checkers without being expected to toss in a withering bon mot. I think I tossed a bon mot in a food fight once. My particular speciality is insult arm wrestling, which I use to defend my bar from hostile takeovers. Wait a minute. Your name is I Cheese? I Cheese? I How would you like to join my crew of mighty pirates, Mr. Cheese? And what, pray tell, might I be finding myself doing if I joined this crew of mighty pirates? You'd be traveling to Lucre Island with a crew of Cretanous Buccaneers to meet with my wife's lawyers. Now that sounds like a worthy mission for a mighty pirate navigator like myself. Really? Aye. The seas around Lucre Island are very treacherous and can only be navigated by a skilled sailor. I'd love to face that challenge, but... But what? I can't. Why not? Is your keister glued to that chair? Well, yes, now that you mention it, it is. But that's not why I can't go, Mr. Wizen Pirate. Well, then why? Because if I leave my bar for too long, it'll be stolen out from under me. You're the owner of the scum bar? I, the one and only. That's funny. I always thought the scum bar was owned by a guy named Ron. I, he was the original owner. I won the bar from him in an epic 12-hour long game of insult goldfish. That sounds like a humongous fib. Believe what you like. In any event, I've been fighting off a hostile takeover bid from an Australian land developer. Come again? You heard me. A greedy Australian is making a grab for my bar. With guns and swords and cannons? Worse, with insults, jibes and mockeries. It's taken all of my insult arm wrestling skill to keep him at bay. Gosh. If it weren't for the whole wife being declared dead thing, I'd say that was the strangest thing I'd heard all week. Is there something I could do to convince you to navigate my ship to Lucre Island? I'm open to persuasion. What do you have in mind? I was kind of hoping that you'd cave in due to my incessant nagging. Kid, I've been married for 30 years. So? So if there's one thing I'm immune to, it's incessant high-pitched nagging.
Are you sure there's nothing I can do to convince you to navigate my ship to Lucre Island? I'm open to persuasion. What do you have in mind? If I beat you at insult arm wrestling, will you be my navigator? Hmm, that's an interesting proposition, Threepwood. It is? I mean, of course it is. How about this? If you beat me, I'll be your navigator. Great! But only if you teach me some new insults. Agreed. Well then, let's see what you've got. Uh, hey, look over there! I'm shaking! <laughs> I'm shaking! Uh, I'm gonna put your arm in a sling! I am rubber! You are glue! Uh, give up now or I'll crush you like a grape! I would if it would stop your whining! My stupefying strength will shatter your armor into a million pieces. Uh, why? You studying to be a nurse? Hey, look over there. Uh, yeah, yeah, I know. It's a three-headed monkey. I've out wrestled octopi with these arms. I'm shaking. <laughs> I'm shaking. You're the ugliest creature I've ever seen in my life. Oh, yeah. I won. You did. Fair and square. Congratulations. You got yourself a navigator. Perfect for popcorn. There's no way that's gonna fit in my pants. Someone's gonna be upset when they see what their mask was used for. I'm not planning on starting any fires. Well, this fish has seen better days. Not even a life preserver will save what lies beyond that door. Hey! Stay out of the kitchen, you sissified sea urchin! Why don't people ever want me to go into the kitchen? Well, this fish has seen better days. I can't use this. I'm not picking that up. Uh, no. It says, happy birthday. No, it's probably the only thing this poor guy has to his name. Hi there, fellow swashbuckler. <laughs> What's the word on the street? <laughs> Got any more juicy nuggets of info? <laughs> How would you like to join my crew on a dangerous piratey mission? We'll be heading to Lucre Island to meet with my wife's lawyers. You're right. That does sound sort of silly when I say it out loud. What's that you're drinking? Say, mind if I have some of your pretzels? You look like a busy man. I'll let you get back to your self-destructive binge drinking. Mmm, kudu jerky pretzels. I guess he doesn't want anyone taking his birthday pretzels. I guess he doesn't want anyone taking his birthday pretzels. Ahoy again, mateys!
Why aren't you playing insult dart throwing? The official Tri Island Dart Throwing Semi Professional League rulebook clearly states all dart competitions must be won by dart throwing skill, not by any other means such as bribery, insults, threats, or otherwise. I bet you can't hit another one on the first shot. Name it and all in. How about that post on the right side of the screen? No problem. Nice shot. I bet you can't hit another one on the first shot. Name it and I'll eat. I bet you can't hit that guy over there. Watch the master at work. Hey, you're pretty good. I bet you can't hit another one on the first shot. Name it and all it. There's no way you'll be able to hit the center of that life preserver on the kitchen door. Here goes nothing. I'm impressed. I bet you can't hit another one on the first shot. Name it and all it. Can you hit that big stuffed fish over there? Watch the master at work. Hey, you're pretty good. I bet you can't hit another one on the first shot. Name it and I'll eat. I bet you can't hit that balloon over there. Ha, that's easy. I'm impressed. Well, I guess I'll be shoving off now. Are you still here? Not even a life preserver will save what lies beyond that door. I guess he won't be needing these anymore. This fish has seen better days. I can't use this. I'm not picking that up. could go for a nice, refreshing grog right now. This inner tube looks as though it's been subjected to unspeakable stresses. It's empty. I'm Guybrush Marl... Threepwood. And I need a ship. How nice for you. And just what do you want me to do about it? Are you the harbor master? No, I am the harbor mistress. My full title is Chief Assistant Shipyard Regulator, Harbor Operations, Melee Island, a division of Inter-Island Transportation Services. Which means? Which means I'm in charge of ship allocations on Melee Island. Baby, you can be in charge of my ships any day of the week. What? Are you trying to seduce a government employee? Uh, no. So, uh, you're in charge of the ships.
Say, haven't I seen you somewhere before? But I, I'm sure I don't know what you're talking about. I know, at the scum bar. You're the naked girl in the painting. I am not. Besides, I haven't taken my clothes off in years. Who painted you? He was an awful man. He was good, but he wouldn't take his claws off me. Strange, too. He had a bizarre fascination with wax. What's your name? Why? Well, I'd like to know the names of the people I've seen naked. I wasn't naked. I was artistically posed. You could lose your job if anyone found out that you posed for that picture. How do you think I got my last promotion? Uh, I'd rather not think about it. I'm commandeering a vessel. Not so fast, mister. No boat leaves this harbor without my permission. And I see no reason to give you permission to take one of my boats. I'm married to the governor. I heard she was dead. Well, she does have her quiet moments, but she's alive and back on melee and ready to govern. Oh, so she's just been on vacation all this time, huh? That's nice. She won't be governor for long. I'm voting for Mr. Charles. He promised me a promotion. But Stan said I could. Name dropping won't get you a boat. Come on, just give me a boat. The rules prohibit the shipyard regulator, that would be me, from lending a boat to anyone who does not have proper authority. That would be you. Isn't there some sort of loophole? Nope. It's simple. Prove to me that you have the authority to requisition a ship, and I will follow procedure to supply one. What would it take to get you to look the other way? I really hope that you aren't trying to bribe an employee of the Malay Island government. Not that I care what happens to you, but I really don't want to fill out the paperwork. How does that work again? Okay, but remember, I'm not required to do this. As a civil servant and chief assistant shipyard regulator, I am here for your safety, not to be helpful. But if it'll make you go away, I'll tell you. I can hardly wait. I cannot and will not release a ship to any person, party, or entity that does not carry the authority of office or is otherwise important in their own right. Never mind. Now that I can do. All this red tape is giving me a headache. Don't say I didn't give you anything. That's the second most beautiful figurehead I've ever seen. Hey, she's got pierced ears. Why would anyone put earrings on a ship's figurehead? This one looks like a nice ride.
Deluxe. Now that's a fine looking ship. Wax show. I wonder if they're showing Mad Wax, Beehive Warrior. It's locked. Knock knock. Who's there? Anybody home? No. Go away. Then who are you? Uh, no one. There's no one here. But there's supposed to be a wax show today. No, there isn't. Yes, there is. No, there isn't. The sign out here says there is. Uh, yeah, that. Well, it's cancelled. Oh, okay. Bye. Bye. Who's there? It's me again. Go away. Hmm. Let's try... 22? 5.5. Mine is 27. Um, excuse me. What? What would it take to get you to stop flinging rocks at my house? Permanently? Yeah, some kind of restraining order, I guess. You'd need some fancy lawyers for that. Okay, how about temporarily? Well, the union gives us liberal snack breaks during the day, but I don't have any snacks. What are those numbers you're muttering? You know? I don't rightly know. They're supposed to be targeting numbers or something, but I'll be danged if I can figure them out. All I know is how to hit that cactus. I'm trying to extrapolate from there. You seem like a busy man. I'll let you return to your evil deeds. Thanks. What an odd looking cactus. What an odd looking cactus. Hmm, not a bad piece of modern art if I do say so myself. Hmm, let's try. 45, 6.7, minus 11. Fire! Um, excuse me. Yeah, 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 uh, just a sec. What? Could you show me how to hit the cactus? Nah, I only do that when I think the catapult's out of alignment. I wouldn't want to waste one of these boulders. They're expensive. You seem like a busy man. I'll let you return to your evil deeds. Thanks. Hey, get away from there before I pop you one on the head, capiche? Good. Now stay over there, pencil neck. Hey there. Here, I brought you some kudu jerky pretzels. Really? Thanks. 
I really appreciate this. You're welcome. You know, you could thank me by not chucking big old boulders at my house. I could, but I won't. Now leave me alone for a minute while I eat these. Oh, ungrateful. Hey, what do you think you're doing? Nothing. I don't know what you're talking about. You totally meshed up my catapult. What you trying to do to me? You're killing me over here. Well, guess I'm gonna have to start over at my calibration cactus over there. Get out of my way. I hope this works. There. It's recalibrated to the cactus. Let's try it. What the? Yeah! Ah! Ha! I can't believe you did that. Do you have any idea what those things cost? They don't grow on trees, you know. Guess what? I'm still dead. But don't worry. I'll love you even after rigor mortis sets in. We've been gone so long, they didn't think I was coming back. So those numbskulls at City Hall declared me dead at sea. What about me? Did they say anything about me? No. Then they decided to sell all my belongings and destroy the mansion. That's terrible. Did they sell any of my stuff? A and the worst part is, they've ordered a new election for the office of governor. Hmm, maybe I should run. So far, there's only one candidate. And you know the old slogan, when there's only one candidate, there's only one choice. Who are you? The name, Mr. Threepwood, is Charles L. Charles. But you can call me the next governor of Melee Island. You can't be the governor. I'm the governor. And it's a lifetime term. Well, that's the rub, isn't it? You've been declared dead. So I've heard. How did that happen? Who can say? Uh, perhaps if you'd spent a little more time governing and less time gallivanting all over the Tri-Island area with your pet monkey, the good citizens of Melee wouldn't have come to the mistaken conclusion that you were pushing up the petunias. Wait a second. Was I the pet monkey in that last sentence? Okay, we get it. You're running for governor. But why destroy my mansion? Oh, that. When you died, the mansion became the property of the state. As a favor to me, the future governor of Melee Island, the town elders contracted a demolition firm. That's me. To destroy this outdated bourgeois symbol of the elitist piratocracy. But why? Because the days of pirate princesses ruling from secluded mansions are over, my friend. They are? Indeed they are, lad. If the Melee Island of tomorrow is to prosper, it must be governed by a man of the people. A man unafraid to mingle with the common folk. A man who won't hide in a mansion guarded by vicious piranha poodles. A man like you? Precisely. He makes a lot of sense, Elaine. I never did like those poodles. Ugh, guy brush! Well, I've got hands to kiss and babies to shake. Ta! Something fishy about that guy. Really? I thought he smelled more like a rotting corpse. I've got another plan. With maybe a hint of oregano. Ugh, guy brush! Uh, yes, dear? I'm going back to City Hall to run against Charles. Woohoo! How can I help? Go to Lucre Island to talk to the family lawyers. But why? I destroyed the catapult. Yes, dearest, I know. But with that demolition order hanging over the mansion, another catapult could come at any moment. We need the kind of restraining order that only my family lawyers can provide. But I want to come up with clever campaign slogans and do ops research. Guybrush, love of my life, I'm a politician. Let me do what I do best. I'll let you do what you do best. What's that? Sailing around the Tri-Island area on seemingly pointless errands. What? Oh, I'm sorry. Did I say that out loud? Oh, what I meant to say was, Venturing into troubled waters on dangerous quests. Well, okay then. That's more like it. Okay. I'm off to start my campaign. Don't spend too much time on Luger Island, dearest.
We don't own many coats in these tropical climes. How could a mere painting capture the essence of my love? Oh, that's so sweet, Guybrush. Now get back to work. Uh, yes, dear. It's an old sofa. No, that sofa doesn't have enough lower back support. Wouldn't want to end up becoming a hunchback and looking abnormal. Wow, this plant is really resilient. We haven't watered it since we left. It's a portrait of Elaine's grandfather, Horatio T. Marley. This must have been painted years before his yacht was sucked into a whirlpool off the coast of Australia 20 or so years ago. Never to be seen again. Hey, it's Elaine as a little kid with Grandpa Marley. Oh, how cute. Don't make me get out your baby pictures. But honey, you don't have any of my baby pictures. No, but I have some of you crying after you got smacked in the head. <laughs> The header says, Melee Government Employment Contract. Sure. I just have a hunch that a signed government contract might be useful. All right, let me sign it. The header says, Melee Government Employment Contract. Hello, my little plunder bunny. What are you doing here, Guybrush? I'm having a little trouble getting a ship. What kind of trouble? I don't have the authority to requisition one. Can you believe that? Me! There must be a bunch of new people around here since we left. Here, take this. It should give you an air of authority. What's this doohickey? It's the official gubernatorial symbol of Melee Island. It conveys the authority of the Office of Governor. It also gets the holder into some pretty great parties. <laughs> <clears throat> A true pirate doesn't need some gubernatorial symbol to prove he commands respect. Yes, well, all the same, I, I think you'd better take it. Oh, all right. Oh, does this mean I get to run the island now? I've got some revolutionary ideas about subsidized childcare. Just give it back the minute you return from Lucre Island. Did you see the way I rid us of that cataclysmic catapult? I always knew you had it in you to destroy heavy machinery, my chaotic little pet. Unfortunately, that's only a stopgap measure. We have to find a more permanent solution. We can make a public offering of the island and retire on the proceeds. You mean like Melee.com? That's stealing, even for pirates. We could launch a full-scale attack on City Hall. Hold the town hostage, I say. Arr. That's not very civilized, honey bear. Besides, I wouldn't want you to get hurt. I'm too young to be a widow. We could move away and leave this mess for someone else. But I like living here. Besides, it's probably just as messed up everywhere else. Thanks for trying to help, Guybrush, but I, I think we need to stick to the current plan. I'll get right on it. Can I have some money? Why? I'm not sure, but it always seems as though I could use a few hundred pieces of aid on my adventures. Well, I'd like to help, sweetheart, but we're kind of strapped for cash right now. Besides, what happened to your monthly allowance? I blew it all gambling on spitting contests on Booty Island. Well, then I'm sorry, my dear. It's time you learned an important lesson about budgeting. Oh, shucks. I really think I'll need some money on this trip. Not until you learn how to spend your money responsibly.
Nobody wants to be on my crew. Ask nice and don't make any ridiculous promises. Yeah, you should use that in your campaign. I'll leave the crew selection to you, my dearest, and you can leave the campaign management to me. Is there anything else? I'll let you concentrate on your campaign. Thanks. The door to the kitchen. It's the door to the kitchen. Right. It's the door to the kitchen. It's the door to our bedroom. Oh, yeah. The header says, Melee Government Employment Contract, Cushy Edition. Another contract? Just to be safe. Well, so much for my status as a reform candidate. All right, let me sign it. It's locked. I've always wondered what was behind the mansion. Now I know. I'm no expert, but this china doesn't seem very nice. I don't even think about touching the china, Guybrush. Who's touching it? I'm not touching it. No, sir, not me. Groovy banner. For some reason, it makes me want to ride a hog. Elaine would kill me if I got dirt on her family banner. I love chess. Especially the horsies. I've got no time for easily mastered games like chess. That pig-shaped bush frightens and confuses me. I don't think so. That is one fat bird. That's huge. Hey, I bet I could market this. Nah. Bolly want a fertilizer pellet? Hmm, looks like our landscaper has been monkeying around.
Ahoy again! What is it now? We got some heavy-duty begging to attend to. Be seeing ya. Not if we see you first. <laughs> Wow, you actually got us a signed contract. Well, let's see. Mm-hmm. Yes. Ah, yes. Good. Aha! Uh -huh. Um, Carla, do you even know what half of this stuff means? Not a clue. But look, it says cushy in the title. Well, all right then. All right, Threepwood. You've got yourself a crew. Ahoy again! What is it now? So, are you looking forward to our voyage? The horror! The horror! We'll meet you at the shipyards once you've got a ship. Never thought I'd say that again. Be seeing ya. Not if we see you first. <laughs> it's a door that goes somewhere. Sold. Another sold sign. Sold. I'm detecting a pattern here. Again, Mr. Cheese. Yes. I'm sorry, but I just can't get over the absurdity of your name. Well, if you say so, Mr. Threepwood. I'll have you know that the Threepwood name has a long and noble history. So does mine. Are you looking forward to sailing to Lucre Island? Aye. It would be a pleasure to sail with a refined wit such as yourself. It's been nice chatting, but I've got to see a man about a monkey. With what? I need a ship. I told you, you don't have the authority to... Check this out. What's this? The gubernatorial seal of Melee Island. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess you are an important person. Right this way, Mrs. Marley. Let me show you to your ship. This is the dainty lady. It's pink. You've obviously got a seaman's eye for nautical details. But, but it's pink. Now there are a couple of regulations that I'm required to explain to you. First, bring it back in the same or better condition as it is now. Second, life preservers are to be worn by all crew and passengers at all times. Finally, this vehicle is to be used for official business only. So no joyriding. Can I go now? Well. I'd love to hang out here on the docks with you all day. Actually, that's a lie. I can't stand to be near you. Bye. Oh, 
And enjoy your voyages on the dainty lady. It's pink. Is that the ship? It doesn't look very seaworthy. At least it doesn't smell like monkeys. Are you guys ready to go? Aye, Captain. Whatever. No. Don't make me slap you, Otis. Fine. Let's get this over with. Then we're off to Luker Island in search of high adventure and a legally binding restraining order. It'll all end in tears. Mark my words. Mr. Cheese, shouldn't we steer away from those dark, portentous clouds? Nonsense, Captain. A little rain never hurt anyone. <laughs> Why? Ah! Mommy! Button down Leap for the silent run. Shorten sail! Clear the scuppers! Get your hands off me! Sorry, baby. Well, there you go, Mr. Marley. Lucre Island. Ah, Lucre Town. The largest urban center in the Tri-Island area. Thanks, Mr. Cheese. Uh, next time you think we can get here with a little less drama? Oh, no. There's not going to be a next time, is there? Better not be. Once was enough. Okay, I'm going into town. You guys stay here and watch the ship. Oh, sure. I see how it is. The captain gets to make all the decisions. I'm not picking that up. I'm not picking that up. There's a duckling on this. Must be the duck standard. Somebody's selling fish over here. Ah, there's nothing like the smell of buckets upon buckets of rotting fish in the morning sun. It's a rather unspectacular duck. go to the law offices before I get some bait. That's a very aesthetically pleasing fountain, I think. I'm not picking that up. It's a pile of empty perfume spritzer bottles. I'll just take one. Nah, I prefer to keep this to myself and a select group of close friends. This stand is excessively odoriferous. Be glad this game doesn't have support for smell generation. That's a nice blue hue. Tis the smell of the sea in a bottle. This perfume has a neat stripe running through it. Oh, that's new candy cane perfume. It smells nice and it's edible. This is a very pink and very feminine looking perfume. Yes. That is L'Eau de la Fleur, the perfect perfume for the most feminine of ladies, or the least masculine of males. Heck no, I'm a tough pirate man. It does smell nice though. Uh, no thanks. Um, no, looks too exotic to me. 
Wow, what a plethora of colours in this bottle. Oh, yes, a breakthrough in scent technology. This is called Mutt, a well-adjusted combination of every essence known to pirate man. Ick. This is a very pink and very feminine looking perfume. Yes, that is L'Eau de la Fleur, the perfect perfume for the most feminine of ladies. Or the least masculine of males. I don't think so. That one scares me. Oh. Hey, stop that! That. Um, excuse me, is this? Come in. Come in. Come in. What can we do for you? I was told you guys could help me. Of course we can. What is it, wrongful dismemberment? Hit and run dinghy accident? Hurt your back while pillaging another ship? Uh, no. I need you to see if you can save my house from being destroyed. That doesn't sound very prestigious. Lucrative. Did I mention that my house is the governor's mansion on Melee Island? Governor's mansion, you say? Well, that changes things. Nice use of the TM. But you can't be the governor. I'm here representing the Honorable Elaine Marley Threepwood, governor of the tri Island area. She's my wife. Oh, I get it. He's joking about the wife thing. And people think lawyers have no sense of humor. You know, it's illegal to make such wrongful and preposterous claims. Should we sue him? How much money do you think he has? I'm serious. We just got back from our honeymoon. Three glorious months on the high seas. And returned to find the mansion under siege by a dastardly demolitionist. Is this alleged demolitionist wealthy? Hmm, yes, we could sue them. Put a lien on their catapult. File a writ of habeas money. Wouldn't you rather go after the big bucks? If Elaine wins the election, she'll be a powerful person. And if the mansion is saved, she'll have someone to thank. And if that someone is you... We would be given a lot of money? Er... Uh. Not given. Think outside the juror's box, my esteemed colleagues. We could become the official lawyers for the Tri-Island area. Yes, the preferred legal team of the governor's office. What do you need from us, young fellow? Mm, I don't know. You handled Grandpa Marley's estate, right? Right. 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 Did he have a plan for such a crisis? Nope. 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 But we'll get right on it. Right. Right. Okay, I'll wait. Actually, this may take a while. Legal issues can be quite complicated. And take a lot of research. Isn't there something else you could do for a while? See the island. Take in the side. Um, I guess so. Oh, hey. You might as well take this. What is it? It's a letter from Grandpa Marley. It was supposed to be delivered after his granddaughter got married. This will save us a trip. Now be gone. We have work to do. Hmm, let's see what it says. <clears throat> My dearest Elaine, if you are reading this, then you are married and I am dead. Now that you've finally settled down with a fearless pirate husband, it's time for you to claim the final pieces of your family's heritage. At the Luker Island Municipal Bank, you'll find a safe deposit chest under my name. Among other things, the chest contains the deed to the Marley Mansion. Never lose sight of this deed. Furthermore, the chest also contains my wedding gifts to you. I'm sorry that I was unable to deliver them in person, but I go to my grave confident that you've chosen a man I would be proud to call grandson. Lastly, and most importantly, the chest contains the keys to the most terrifying secret in the Caribbean. A secret ten times as terrifying as Big Whoop? The secret of the ultimate insult. Yipes. If the unholy power of the ultimate insult ever found its way into the wrong hands, there's no telling what sorts of hexbond mischief can be unleashed upon our fun-loving pirate citizens. Guard these secrets with your life, and know that no matter where you are, your grandfather is watching over you. With all my love, Horatio Tokamata Marley. How sweet. Uh, P.S. If your deadbeat parents come around looking for a handout, tell them to take a long walk off a short gangplank. We'll just buy all the expert witnesses we need. 
You can't handle the truth. And just why not, young lady? Bank policy, sir. I can't convert these traveler's checks because we've never heard of, uh, what's his name? Australia. But you've honored them countless times before. We've had a bad run of counterfeit money come through here lately, so we've had to tighten our policy. And if you ask me, these don't look real. <laughs> Besides the funny name, there's a picture of a strange animal on here that has another one popping out of its belly. That's a kangaroo, you ignorant pirate trollop. See? There you go. Kangaroo. Another funny name. Funny to say, too. Kangaroo. <laughs> kangaroo. <laughs> oh, truth. I've got business to attend to, but I'll come back, and when I do, I want these honored. Have a nice day, Mr. Mandrill. He should switch to decaf. Kangaroo. 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 Free scupperware promotion today. Just open an account with 10,000 pieces of eight or more. Ugh. It's full of names and numbers and lots and lots of math. Um, excuse me. Please speak with the teller. But I just have a quick... Please ask the teller. I'm very busy and she can probably assist you. Hi there. Welcome to the Second Bank of Lucre. I'm Brittany. How may I help you? What happened to the first bank of lucre? Nothing. It was our public relations department's idea. They felt that being called the first bank didn't project an image of experience. I'd like to retrieve some items from my safe deposit box. Fine, sir. And whose name is it under? Marley. H.T. Marley. Here's a letter that might help. I see. This is for Governor Marley. Do you have power of attorney to act on her behalf? I'm her dashing husband. <laughs> Not good enough. Oh. Well, there is this. Oh, my. <laughs> That will be fine, sir. Just a moment, Mr. Quidworth. There's a gentleman here to use the vault. Hmm, yes? Hmm? Well, everything seems to be in order, Mr. Marley. That's Mr. Threepwood. As you wish, sir. If you'll just follow me into the vault, we can open up your grandfather-in-law's safe deposit chest. Here it is, sir. The safe deposit chest of H.T. Marley, just as he left it over 20 years ago. Wow, what an amazing collection of junk. Why would Grandpa Marley store garbage like this in a bank? That Governor Marley was an eccentric old soft, wasn't he? <laughs> you know, we were all crushed when he disappeared off the face of the earth like he did. Anyway, well, I've got some loans to turn down. You just let me know when you're done here, and I'll come running. Gee, thanks. Well, I guess I better start looking for that deed to the governor's mansion so I can get home to Elaine. Let's see now. Hot water Mr. bottle, Freeport. monkey what pacifier, uh, crocodiles, uh, Jimmy uh, Hoffa, do-it-yourself tattoo kit, Robert bloody Jeffrey stiletto Jeffrey knife, Jeffrey bottomless Jeffrey. mug. Well, you really should have called me first. We have rules about leaving the vault unattended. Gee, I'm sorry. I'll go back to And I'll see if I can scrounge up a crop. Wax lip. Wax lips. Ah, there it is. Come on. Yikes! Who are you supposed to be? Isn't it obvious? I've Guybrush three foot. No, you're not. Well, what makes you say that? Well, for one thing, Guybrush is much better looking than you are. <laughs> and for another, the real Guybrush doesn't smell like anchovy halitosis. Ooh. <laughs>
All right, mate, bucko. That's enough of that. Back away from the Barney heirlooms and be quick about it. Now, Mr. Threepwood, take a good long look at the last face you'll ever see. <laughs> that deregulated banking would lead to this. It's an old cracked sword. I'm Guy Brass Threepwood, mighty bank robber. That's G-U-I-B-R-U-S. H T H R E E P W O O D. This hanky has PP embroidered on it. I highly doubt that this belonged to Grandpa Marley. Ooh, this thing reeks. It's a small packing sponge. I'm Guy Rush Three Boat. Criminal more nefarious than me, and that's paint those feet. I can't remove it with my bare hands. Well, I can't remove it with my bare hands. If I could open it, I wouldn't be trapped in here. Forget the vault! Just give me everything else! That's G-U-I-B-R-U-S-H-T-H-R-E-E-P-W-O-O-D! -E -E I broke the hinge off, but I broke the sword, too. Top of the world, boy! Oh, forget the vault! Mm, Just give me that everything didn't get else. Me anywhere. The sword seems to be widening the crack a bit. With the sword jammed in there, the gap is larger. Don't be a hero! There are dry sponges stuffed in the door jam. There's only one criminal more nefarious than me, and that's Pinto's Pete! There are dry sponges stuffed in the door jam. There are dry sponges stuffed in the door jam. I'm going for three food. Mighty bank robber! There seems to be something inside. It's a music box. It's a cute little music box. Hey, there's a bottle of fine grog behind this music box. Oh, forget the vault! Just give me everything else! It's a bottle of the 67 Chateau de Spittle. A fine vintage grog with an insouciant flavor and a saucy aftertaste. We've got you surrounded! So long, suckers! And remember, you've just been robbed by 
Guy Brush Threepwood. <laughs> hey, where'd he go? Hey, what's all the commotion? Get, Get him! him! Ah! You're under arrest, Mr. Threepwood. Right, down to the jailhouse with you. All right, you. Didn't your mum ever explain that bank robbery isn't nice? It wasn't me, it was the No-Nosed Bandit. Right. No-Nosed Bandit. Or perhaps it was the guy we caught red-handed. You! Although we haven't found the loop yet. You'll find it with the real robber, so let me go and get cracking. Detective work isn't my job. If you want to clear your name, you've got a few things to do. Okay, what? I need the perpetrator, I need proof he was at the scene of the crime, and I need proof that he committed the crime. You know, it'd be a lot easier if I could just bribe you. I'll ignore that, Threepwood. Around here, we do things by the book. Now, since this is your first offence, you'll be placed under house arrest. I get to go back to the mansion and play with Timmy? No. You are confined to Luca Island. You are not permitted to leave until and unless you are cleared of the crime of bank robbery. To make sure you don't leave, you are required to wear the voodoo anklet of extreme discomfort. I was wondering about that. It's rather uncomfortable. Can you loosen it? Well, that wouldn't be the point then, would it? It gets a lot more uncomfortable if you try to leave the island. <sighs> At least I'm not in jail. Hey, I should bring Meat Hook here. He'd like this place. Inspector? Yes? Just for the sake of argument, what would it take to prove my innocence? Well, since you don't have an alibi, you'd have to turn the finger of blame towards the real culprit. Great! Uh, how do I do that? Off the top of my head, I can think of three things that would do the job. A. New evidence would have to surface linking the so-called real perpetrator to the crime. Two. The stolen bank loot would have to be recovered. And Z. The real criminal would have to be caught and brought to justice. That should be a piece of cake for a pirate with a keen analytical mind like myself. I'll keep your cell warm. Can you remove this voodoo anklet? I really need to get back to my wife. Sorry, you're stuck on this island until your trial arrives. Or until you manage to prove that you're <laughs> innocent. How's the investigation going? What investigation? You were caught red-handed. I'm just waiting for the judge. Oh. When can I expect my trial? As soon as the judge returns. Great, when's that? He should be back within a few weeks, when his vacation's over. A few weeks? I need to get back to Melee Island today. Well, I guess you should have thought of that before you went and robbed that bank now, shouldn't you? But I'm innocent. Tell it to the judge. Well, I better get out there and prove my innocence. Stay out of trouble. It's good to see that Luker Island doesn't mollycoddle its criminal element. Iron Maiden! Excellent! Uh, I have no idea why I said that. Ew, greasy. I guess they use it on these Iron Maiden spikes to allow smooth impaling. Ew, greasy. I guess they use it on these Iron Maiden spikes to allow smooth impaling. Now there's a manly pirate. What are you doing here? I'm a victim of society. Let me guess. You were framed, right? How did you know? Eh, just a hunch. Some old guy with a weird accent accused me of stealing flowers from his front yard. When are you due to be released? He'll be released just about the same time you prove your... <clears throat> innocence. Hey, 
Just because my captain is a notorious bank robber, there's no reason to take it out on me. Otis! Jace? You're not helping. What is it with you and flowers? It's a plot, I tell you! People are to make me seem less fearsome and piratey by accusing me of being the kind of pirate who likes to pick flowers. If it's any comfort, Otis, I never found you all that fearsome to begin with. Ah, go pick a pack of posies. I'm feeling an incredible feeling of deja vu. Would it help if I gave you a breath mint? Wait, it's passed. See you later, Otis. You're gonna get me out of here, right? Why, hello there, Brittany. Oh, hi. Why do you sound like a sick kraken? Oh, <laughs> uh, sorry. Is it too late to open an account? You're funny, Mr. Threepwood. <laughs> the bank is no concern of mine anymore. What are you gonna do now? Well, I always wanted to get into show business. What kind of show business? I want to be a singer and have my own backup dancers. I don't have any skills or experience, but I figure with the right attitude, there's no stopping me. <laughs> me too. Maybe we could start an act together. I don't think so. I'm looking for someone a little more... Piratey? Mm, cool. Then why were you wasting away at the bank? I was making ends meet while I put my act together. Guess I needed the push. I was getting too wrapped up in the whole financial system thing. <laughs> Hope that works out for you. Sorry you lost your job. Oh, it's all right. I didn't like working at that bank much anyway. I've always really wanted to be in show business. <laughs> Hope that works out for you. Well, I have manly things to do in a sensitive way. Bye. Hey there, money bags. Very funny, Mr. Threepwood. Are you enjoying the money you stole? It was the no-nosed man. Oh, I wish I had a dollar for every time I've heard that. Of course, I used to. Until you came along, that is. Eh, enough about me. How's the banking business? Oh, just great, thanks to you. Now I'm broke. And nobody on this island would trust me with their money ever again. What am I going to do now? Well, you could have a bake sale. I've only met one person who could sell pastries to pirates. And he's in real estate. You could steal enough to start your bank again. I'm a banker. I don't know anything about stealing. I'll find the guy who did it and wreak vengeance upon his soul. That won't help me much, but watching you fall on a sword would be entertaining. Let's talk about something else.
Have you seen someone go by here carrying a bag of loot? What does he look like? Sort of like me. Yes, I've seen him. But he didn't have a bag with him. Really? Where? I'm looking at him! Hey, I'm innocent. Yes, right. And I'm a 20 carat brooch. I hear my parole officer calling. See you later. Wow, Lucretown is a sewage system. How nice is that? I wonder if I can get into the bank through here. I'm not picking that up. Crud. I dropped the sword into the sewers. Oh well. Now it's a broken and very stinky sword. Wow. What a very deep, dark hole. Not to mention smelly. Phew. On second thought, I don't think I want to go down there for any reason. There's something scratched into the bottom of this. It says, Cindy loves Fred. But scratched out right next to that, it says, Jerry loves Cindy. What a weird place to profess your love for someone. Knuckles, artificial appendages, faux follicles. Nope, nothing I want here. It's a basket of finely crafted prosthetic limbs. It's a wooden hand. It's a false leg made of porcelain. <laughs> I'm not touching that. Oh, I heard that. I hope you're planning to pay for that hand. It ain't cheap. Actually, I don't have a dime. Well, then you'd best be putting it back then, eh, tiger? Sorry. It's some sort of document. The name on it says, Julio I. Julio. It has all sorts of useless information, such as prosthetic prescriptions, address, phone number, allergies. It appears to be some sort of high-tech file retrieval system. Welcome to the Palace of Prostheses, home of the no detection, no infection, no rejection, 30-day guarantee. You smell new. Who are you? It's me, your Uncle Freddy. No, you're not. What do you mean? Don't you recognize me? No, Uncle Freddy smells more like lemon bean curd. Okay, you got me. My name is Guybrush Threepwood. Who are you? Well, I'm Dave. Around here, they call me Dead Eye Dave. I'm the Tri Island area's foremost expert in anatomical approximation. So, How's the prosthetics business? Mm, it's been better. Let me guess. An Australian land developer is using strong-arm tactics to try and buy up your business. What? Where'd you get a weird idea like that? Well, I just figured... Well, you figured wrong. Australia, what kind of a name is that anyway? Uh, never mind. So what is wrong with your business? My monkey left me. And you're so despondent over your loss that you can't focus on your work, right? Despondent? Oh, the Pongo! Oh, don't be silly! Then why was he so important? Because Pongo handled all my paperwork and deliveries. He was the only one who understood my back office's automated Philomatic filing system. Without him, I have no idea which orders go with which customers. It's really upsetting my regular clientele. That's terrible. 
Have you heard from your filing monkey since he disappeared? What's he gonna do? Send me a postcard? Uh... Not to be insensitive, but are you blind? Do I look blind? I don't know. The twin eye patches could be some sort of hip new pirate fashion statement. Of course I'm blind, you lilac scented party waste! Sorry. <laughs> don't give it a second thought. My other senses more than compensate for my lack of sight. For example, I usually can identify my customers by their distinctive individual odors. You can recognize people by their smell? Usually no problem. Today though my nose is stuffed up because I got the, a bit of a cold. So I can only recognize amplified odors, like the lilac aftershave you've generously applied to your face. Fortunately, my hearing's still sharper than a barge full of bunnies. So how sharp is your hearing anyway, Baldy? Sharp enough, Binky. I'm looking for some gifts for my differently abled pirate friends. Then you've come to the right place. What kinds of prostheses did you have in mind? Frankly, I'm in the market for a prosthetic nose. Sorry, we're fresh out. It's shocking how quickly my regular customers blow through those things. <laughs> what have you got that's free? Free? <laughs> what do you think I'm running, a charity? What can I say? I'm broke. <sighs> okay, you've appealed to my sense of generosity. Here's what I'll do. I'll let you have one of my untested, unguaranteed, unapproved experimental prosthetic devices. Neat. What kind of prosthetic devices are we talking about? I'll let you choose through a story. Huh? Humor me. Once upon a time, there was a pirate named... Harry? Harry. A palm reader had told Harry that he was destined to marry a beautiful singer named... Cindy? Cindy. Unfortunately, Cindy's hand had already been promised to a vile cad named... Fred? Yeah, Fred. Well? Well, what? What happened? In the end, she ran off with a travelling prince who slipped a pair of glass slippers on her size 12 feet. The end. What a dreadful story. I know. Here's your free experimental prosthesis. What is it? These are a pair of Ace Stud Finder supersized prosthetic feet. They were designed for pirates with insecurities about the size of their, you know, feet. Unfortunately, these things just made them look like Dutch clowns. See you later. That makes one of us. There's something scratched into the bottom of this. It says, Cindy loves Fred. But scratched out right next to that, it says, Jerry loves Cindy. What a weird place to profess your love for someone. they'd stop staring at me. I've had enough of touching other people's eyeballs, thanks. Dave? Yes? And I still need to find some St. Swithin's Day gifts for my friends. What kinds of gifts did you have in mind? I'd like to have another one of those free prostheses. Can't get enough of experimental technology, eh? Okay, once upon a time, there was a pirate named... 
Jerry? Jerry. Jerry had his eye on a pirate princess named... Cindy? Cindy. Unfortunately, Cindy's hand had already been promised to a vile cad named... Fred? Yeah, Fred. Well? Well, what? What happened? Realising that beauty was only skin deep, she married the ugliest man in town. The end. What a dreadful story. That story's worse than the last one. I know. Here's your free experimental prosthesis. What is it? This is something special. It's a sample of my newly created, ultra-stretchy, one-size-fits-all prosthetic skin. Yeah. With just a few square feet of this miracle substance, a pirate can replace all the skin he's lost during a lifetime of sword fighting, knife fighting, keel hauling, and the occasional flogging. And it comes complete with a set of tiny hooks for easy attachment. I repeat. Yeah. I'm looking for a no-nosed pirate thief. Well, we certainly get a lot of those around here. Thieves? N no, no-nosed pirates. Really? Oh, my, yes. You'd be amazed how often pirates lose their honkers. Does this pirate thief of yours have a name? Not that I know of. Oh, that's too bad. Of course, even if I knew the pirate's name, it probably wouldn't matter. Without Pongo, I wouldn't be able to retrieve your pirate's file. See you later. That makes one of us. Hey, it's like a trampoline. This bank sure has a lot of windows. Hey, it's like a trampoline. Whoever lives here must be pretty small. It's a barrel of sticks. Just another barrel of sticks. Slightly irregular and blemished sticks. 40% off, Mark Price. Freddy, where's my new walking stick? It's right over here, Mr. Mandrill. A brand new cane, hand carved to the exact specifications of your previous stick. It better be, or I'll buy up your putrid little shop and replace it with something useful, like a public urinal. I uh, take it that you'll be putting this on your tab, Mr. Mandrill? What do you think? You know, if I weren't a peaceable sort, I'd whack that gentleman over the head with one of my sticks. I wouldn't stop whacking until his brains leaked out all over my rustic, hand-polished hardwood floor. <laughs> yep. But you're a peaceable sort, right? Yep. If I had a hamster, I could use this stuff for bedding.
It is very important to choose a walking stick that fits your body, lifestyle, and temperament. Your walking stick should be no more than waist high and hefty enough to support 50% of your body weight. Active people should choose a stick that corresponds with the type of activity. Boring. I guess I don't want a walking stick that bad. I don't think that would help anything. These sticks look perfectly fine to me. To the untrained eye, they might. Those sticks didn't pass our rigid quality assurance process. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what's wrong with them. They're probably fine for the non-discriminating type of consumer, but those sticks wouldn't pass the muster for our high-end buyers. I don't think there are any sticks I want in that barrel. It's Freddy's stick catalog. No need to make a racket ringing that bell. I'm right here. I'm Guybrush Threepwood, Mighty Pirate. What's your racket? Most people around here call me Freddy, which is a sensible thing to do, considering that it's my name and all. I carve walking sticks. I wouldn't think that a walking stick shop could support itself on a pirate-infested island. Well, under normal circumstances, I might agree with that sentiment. But lately, Lucre Island's been experiencing an influx of tourists, gawkers, and other assorted outsiders. They're always more than eager to purchase my authentic pirate walking sticks at a reasonable markup. Course. Besides which, I can always depend on Mr. Mandrel to break a few dozen sticks a week. He's been single-handedly keeping me in business for months. So the walking stick market is booming, is that it? Well, no, I wouldn't exactly call it booming. But it's putting food on the table. And if Mr. Mandrel ever pays off his tab, I can retire. Can you help me? I can't decide which walking stick is right for me. Well, now, in order to choose the right stick, we'll need to know a little about your walking stick needs. Where do you expect to be doing most of your walking? Back and forth on the deck of my mighty pirate ship. Oh, I see. And how many people would you expect to be walking with? I'll be walking with my wife. She's a governor, you know. Whatever you say, sir. How long will you be walking on average? About a half hour. 45 minutes tops. Hmm, I see. Well then, taking all your answers into consideration, not to mention the numerous personal observations I've made of your movements, I believe that the perfect walking stick for you would be the Veeblefester 9000 Rainforest Deluxe. As luck would have it, we've got dozens of them in stock. It's Freddy's stick catalog. Why would I want to look through the catalog when I've got the real thing right here? I'm back. So you are. You wouldn't happen to know anything about a no-nosed pirate, would you? Well, now, that sounds a lot like Peg-Nosed Pete. What would you like to know about him? Who is he? peg -nosed? He's the greatest pirate thief on Lucre Island. No one's come within a ship's broadside of putting him in leg irons yet, but I came close once. No. Yes, it happened one dark and foggy night. Many years ago, I was out testing out one of my new walking stick models, the WD-32. It has a real fancy looking wood duck engraved in the handle, and he tried to mug me. Gosh, what did you do? Well, I wasn't going to stand for that. I raised my cane up to give him a good whack on the noggin, you betcha. And? And he ran away. I didn't even get a chance to swing. I guess he knows better than to mess with old Freddy. Yep. Fascinating. Where can I find him? You can't. Come again? No one knows where Peg Nose's hideout is. Oh, sure. There's some rumors of him living in the middle of the treacherous mists o time marsh. But frankly, I, I don't believe a human being can get there from here. 
What happened to his nose? Well, it's something of a mystery. Most folks around these parts would tell you it was nibbled off by a duck. Yeah. Personally, I don't believe it. Why not? Well, sir, it's been my experience that ducks have exceptionally tiny teeth. It'd take a long time for a duck, even a particularly nasty duck, to nibble off a man's nose. I can't imagine a man letting a duck peck away at his nose for hours on end without seeking medical help. Good point. On second thought, I think I'll find out about Pegnose on my own. Makes no never mind to me, Junior. Stick around. I'll be back later. Be seeing ya. This stand is excessively odoriferous. Be glad this game doesn't have support for smell generation. Nothing like the smell of buckets upon buckets of rotting fish in the morning sun. Uh, no. Phew! It smells like dead fish in here. Nine kinds of dead fish. Huh? Groggy sailor smelling salts. Excuse me. Yes? Do you have any bait that could catch a cold? No. How's the bait business? Uh, it stinks. You're telling me. P.U. No, I mean it's horrible. I bet business would pick up if you crack open a window every now and then. Why, I tried that. Well, did it help? No. In fact, it seemed to drive prospective customers away. And that's when I realized, see, that something strange is going on. Strange? How so? Well, it may be the chum talking, but I could swear that Luca Island is getting less and less pirate friendly. Eh? Really? How? Why, we've been besieged. By hostile invaders? Lice! Tourists! Ah. Yikes. There aren't many of them around today, but you hang around for a week, and they'll pop up like a bloated corpse in a calm sea. Why, they, they've been driving some of Luca's oldest pirate-oriented businesses into new fields, and have compelled some of our nastier pirates to consider new lifestyle choices. Huh? Why, I myself have soiled my once noble bait shop with a cheesy Taimaitsaikis in a desperate attempt to get me hands on some of those tourist shekels. Well, is it working? Not very well. Insects seem to repel tourists almost as much as fish guts. Go figure. Do you know anything about a no-nosed pirate thief? Uh, well, that sounds like peg -nose Pete. You know him? Are you kidding? Everyone on Lucar Island is hide a peg -nose Pete. Who is he? Boy, he's the most notorious thief on Lucar Island. He's never been caught, and his loot has never been recovered. And his true face, aside from his trademark false nose, has never been seen. Well, I've seen his true face. It's not pretty. Yeah, right. And I've seen a bucket of chum solve complex math problems. <laughs> Where can I find him? Well, you can't. Nobody can. There's rumor that his hideout is somewhere in the heart of the mists of time marsh. Great. I'm off to the marsh. But no one has ever been able to navigate their way through the marsh without getting hopelessly lost. It's cursed. Darn. Another curse. How did he lose his nose? Oh, 
That's one of the darkest mysteries of Luca Island. <laughs> Some would have you believe that Peg Nose's proud proboscis was pecked off by a duck. <laughs> but I believe it was a school of deranged flounder that made off with his hunker. Mm -hmm. That's one of the darkest mysteries of Luca Island? No, well, no. But it sounds more ominous that way. Let's talk about something else. Well, whatever skins your salmon. It sure stinks in here. Eh, you get used to it after a while and come to miss it when you're out and about. That's why I never bathe, see? So I can keep that sweet, sweet scent of fish entrails with me wherever I go. Ah. How touching. Not to mention revolting. I think I'll just look around for a while. Well, you look all you like, but if you break it, you board it. I only see five kinds of dead fish here. That's not our entire selection, you know. Grandma Pete's Dolphin Safe Tuna Net. This must be where the magic happens. I'd rather not. I haven't seen so many glassy, lifeless stairs since my wedding reception. Wee! Look at the cute little termite circus. It's just like a flea circus, but with termites. That was exciting. That doesn't need wood shavings. It's a large stinky vat of free bait, marinating in bait juice. Yeah. Ooh, it's the Grouper Master 3000 series with bamboo composite core. Nah, I'd have no use for it. I can never seem to bring myself around to stabbing poor defenseless little worms with hooks. What a distinct aroma. What a distinct aroma. Yeah. Hey, check out that pair of flotation devices. No, Elaine probably wouldn't like that. I'm not picking that up. Somebody's selling fish over here. Eh, that's the end of the pier right here. Luker Island Port Authority. So, 
go. Yes. So who's winning? It's hard to say. I've been pressing Senor Castaneda's queen with my Montgolfier offensive. But I think the miserable Getz got me stymied with his Estrada barricade. Ah, I see. I'm looking for a no-nosed pirate. Yes. Does he play chess? Uh, I don't think so. Then I don't care. Your friend seems awfully focused on the game. Notice that, did you? Senor Castaneda is exceptionally well-disciplined. Once he sets his mind to a task, it's nearly impossible to shift his attention. Except... Yes? Well, he does carry something of a torch for Brittany, the bank teller. Interesting. I'll let you get back to your game. Thank you. Excuse me. Yes? Hi, Brittany. <gasps> Brittany, where? No, wait, it's just a duck. I'll let you get back to your game. Hmm. They're using it right now. So... Yes? I'm looking for a no-nosed pirate. Does he play chess? Uh, I don't know. Then I don't care. Oh, look, it's Brittany. <gasps> Brittany, where? No, wait, it's just a duck. I'll let you get back to your game. Hmm. It's a stinky puddle of swamp water. It's a crude raft. I've always wanted swamp scented perfume. What a distinct aroma. Watchbird gives me the heebie-jeebies. It's locked. Hey! Who are you? And what are you doing in my house? I'm Guybrush Threepwood, zillionaire. I own a mansion and a yacht. For a zillionaire, you look a lot like a smelly pirate. My name is Ozzy, Ozzy Mandrill. That name sounds familiar. Aren't you the over-the-top heavy metal performer who bites the heads off of monkeys? Don't play the gink with me, Threepwood. Who's playing? Well then, allow me to illuminate the dingy corners of your mind. Ozzy Mandrill is a businessman, a capitalist, a real estate developer. I'm also the future king of the Caribbean. <laughs> hey, you're the guy who's trying to buy out the scum bar. The scum bar? That's just the tip of the aardvark. I'm gonna buy the whole Caribbean. Why are you buying up all the land in the Caribbean? Because I'm a man with a vision. You too? 
What are yours like? I see a Caribbean freed from the chaotic plundering of grog-swilling pirates. A Caribbean made safe for the orderly consumerism of family-oriented themed restaurants and resorts. A Caribbean scrub clean of filth. A Caribbean you'd be proud to take home to your mother. Gee, mine are mostly about ice cream. And how do all my pirate friends fit into your capitalist utopia? Ah, oh, they'll be retrained. Retrained? Yes, the service-based economies of tomorrow's Caribbean will need legions of waiters, janitors, maids, and dishwashers. <laughs> But what about pirates who don't want to be waiters, janitors, and dishwashers? What makes you think they'll have a choice? <laughs> and how do the dozens of pirates support industries fit into your scheme? They'll be torn down, of course. No more will these islands be cursed with a blight of run-down watering holes, murky voodoo shops, and disease-ridden houses of ill repute. Instead, our streets will be decorated with classy art houses, whimsical theme restaurants, and upscale knick-knack shops. But what about the children? What about them? I don't know. Just thought I'd ask. I'm tired of discussing your warped dreams. And I'm tired of discussing them. What's with all the dead animals? I like having them around. They remind me of where I came from. Burbank? Australia, you ninny. Oh. My navigator tells me that you're pretty good with an insult. Pretty good? Listen, Kitty Wink, I'll have you know that my insults have finished off over 500 hostile takeovers. There isn't a man alive or dead who can withstand the might of my withering barbs. I bet I can beat you. Oh, really? And what stakes do you propose? If I win, you have to do the chicken dance in the middle of town. Fine. And if I win, you have to leave my house. Agreed. So, what form of insult game shall we play? Let's stick to the basics, shall we? <laughs> On guard. Touché! Oh, that is so cliché. Every enemy I've met, I've annihilated. With your breath, I'm sure they all suffocated. You're not worth a zack. I can't argue with that. You're driving me burka. Right back at you. When I'm done with you, you'll wish you had Baku rot. Well, did you redo to you too? Ha <laughs> ha! I lost. Naturally. Now get out of my house.
free scupperware promotion today. Just open an account with 10,000 pieces of eight or more. I really don't need it. I wonder what would happen if I pull it. It's an empty scupperware container. I'm sure this is useful, but how? Well, that doesn't need to be kept fresh. Pirate Magazine, popular news of the Caribbean's most scandalous and nefarious pirates. And in this month's issue, how to loot and pillage and still be there for the kids. I don't have time to read. I believe this would qualify as a luscious fern. I believe this would qualify as a luscious fern. I've always wondered how they get the ship in there. That's the second most useless trinket I've ever seen. Nobody can do mental math anymore. No way. Real pirates don't need to add. Instead, we hire our pirate brethren, the accountants, to add and keep track of our treasure for us. Ugh. It's full of names and numbers and lots and lots of math. No way. I'm trying to clear my name of a robbery, not commit another one. I sure hope the previous owner got a chance to empty their underwear drawer. I can't use this. I sure hope the previous owner got a chance to empty their underwear drawer. Oh, how cute. I can't actually fit anything useful into those. It's a light fixture. It's a light fixture. It's a light fixture. go out that way. Inspector Kennard is watching the entrance. Nobody can do mental math anymore. It controls that light. Technology marches forward. Shadow. It looks like a nose? Hey, a prosthetic nose. Ugh, gross. I'll bet this belongs to that smelly pirate guy. The one with no nose. I'll take that, Mr. Threepwood. Ah! What are you doing in here? I might ask you the same question. Instead, I'll just take that as evidence. Let's go try it on Peg Nose. What a great idea. Except no one knows where he is. Bring him in, and I'll consider it. But remember this. Even if it fits, it only proves he was in the bank. It doesn't tie him to the loop. You still think I did it, don't you? Yes, but I can be swayed by the right evidence. Now get out of here. Smells somewhat like hickory smoked fish. It smells sort of like flowers growing in a cesspool. Hanky remind you of anything or anybody? Oh no, let me see. <laughs> no, I don't really smell much of anything in it. What do you mean? I thought blind people's. Hey, 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 hey. visually challenged. Sorry, I thought visually challenged people's other senses become enhanced to offset the lack of vision. I mean, I have a fully functioning set of eyes, and even I can smell the foul odor coming off this hanky. <laughs> well, that only applies when my nose is clear. 
I've kind of got a little bit of a cold and stuffed nose, so I can't smell much right now. If you really need to make use of my amazing odour divining abilities, you're going to have to find a way to give me an amplified version of this smell. Like how? Just follow your nose. Do you mind if I turn this on? I said, do you mind if I turn this on? Hmm, guess not. Do you mind if I turn this on? I said, do you mind if I turn this on? Hmm, guess not. It smells a little like fish snot. It smells a tiny bit like a corpse floating in a bog. It smells kind of like a lumberjack wiped his armpits with it. It has the faintest whiff of something nice, though. It smells somewhat like hickory smoked fish. It smells sort of like flowers growing in a cesspool. This almost smells like that hanky, except the hanky smells more like hamster bedding, more fishy, and more pleasant. There, that should make my concoction smell better. Nothing like the smell of rotting bait to woo the ladies. This almost smells like that hanky, except the hanky smells more like hamster bedding. There, that should make the concoction smell interesting. Hey, this smells exactly like that hanky, only stronger. Woo! That's an all too familiar smell. Guess I can't complain though, since Kent Z. Yosarian is my best customer. Kent Z. Yosarian. The man regularly buys prosthetic noses from me. Really? He's my, uh, really good friend. Yeah, I lost track of him and, uh, missed him so much that I made a little odor potion to remind me of him. Okay, too much information. I have a strict rule of don't ask, don't smell. Well, anyways, if you know where I can find my uh, friend, that'd be very helpful. Oh, yeah, sure. He lives out past the mists of time marsh. You can't get through there, though, without the directions he gave me. And it's filed away someplace in my Philomatic system. Well, let's go get that file. I can't. Pongo, my filing monkey, ran away a while back. He was the only one who knew how to run the Philomatic. As a result, I have no idea how to retrieve the map. But if you can figure it out, feel free. The controls are right here. Thank you.
The name on it says, Harry D. Back. It has all sorts of useless information, such as prosthetic prescriptions, address, phone number, allergies. What a great idea. Pity about the elephants, though. What a great idea. Pity about the elephants, though. I haven't seen so many pointy things in one place since my last dental checkup. Sticking my hand into a basket full of hooks seems like a recipe for disaster. It's a basket of finely crafted prosthetic limbs. It's a false leg made of porcelain. Ugh. I'm not touching that. It's a wooden hand. Oh, you heard that. I hope you're planning to pay for that hand. It ain't cheap. Actually, I don't have a dime. Well, then, you'd best be putting it back then, eh, tiger? Sorry. Do you mind if I turn this on? I said, do you mind if I turn this on? Guess not. It's a basket of finely crafted prosthetic limbs. Did I hear something? Nope, just the haunting melodies of my music box. Dave? Yes? Have you heard from your filing monkey since he disappeared? What's he gonna do? Send me a postcard? Uh... I'm still looking for a no-nosed pirate. Do you know his name yet? Not that I know of. Oh, that's too bad. Of course, even if I knew the pirate's name, it probably wouldn't matter. Without Pongo, I wouldn't be able to retrieve your pirate's file. See you later. That makes one of us. Let's see, rubber knuckles, artificial appendages, faux follicles. Nope, nothing I want here. You're back, eh? Can't resist the smell of fresh bait, huh? If that's fresh, I don't want to know what old bait smells like. It's a large, stinky vat of free bait, marinating in bait juice. There, now my bait will stay fresh. It's a large, stinky vat of free bait, marinating in bait juice. Yeah. Wee, look at the cute little termite circus. It's just like a flea circus, but with termites. That was exciting. Hey, take that outside. You're scaring me bait. Oh, it'll only take a minute. requires stealth. Come and get it, boys. Ah, look at those little buggers go. 
They must be real hungry for the taste of redwood. Ahoy there, Mr. Cheese. Yes. Good work getting us into the harbor. Thanks. Next time it'd be helpful if you didn't use the ship's maps as coasters. How's the ship? Uh, when will she be ready for departure? She'll be ready long before you get that voodoo anklet removed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that. That's not an anklet. It's a sacred voodoo talisman. Whatever you call it, it's still not much of a fashion accessory. Actually, I don't like to talk about it. Oh, I can see why. Well, uh, okay then. Keep the ship uh, ship shape while I'm gone. Yeah, that's the end of the pier right here. Hey, Carla. What do you want? Otis is in jail. That figures. He always gets in trouble when he's on shore leave. Why aren't you on shore leave? Someone has to stay and guard the ship while the Big Cheese repairs all the damage you inflicted on it. Since you're stuck here, would you like me to get you something from town? Like what? Well, there's a lovely prosthesis shop on the east side of the town square. Do I look like I need any prostheses? Is that a trick question? <laughs> Are you sure you don't need any prosthetic parts? No, but keep it up and you might need some. I found a lovely bait shop on the outskirts of Lucretown. I hate fishing. You want a handcrafted walking stick? There's a shop that makes them. Walking sticks are for insecure wimps who can't keep their balance. I own five. Hmm, maybe I should do some more window shopping first. Whatever. Have you seen a no-nosed pirate run by here? I thought you were looking for your wife's lawyers. Yes, but now I'm looking for a pirate with no nose. This is how it starts, isn't it? What are you talking about? First, it'll be something quirky and fun like a no-nose pirate. Then maybe an innocent little voodoo spell used to, oh, I don't know, ward off vampire bats or something. And before you know it, the Chuck will show up with his legions of undead goons and pow, we'll all be stuck on Monkey Island again. <sighs> I should have listened to Otis. So what you're saying is that you haven't seen a no-nosed pirate? No. Carry on, Carla. Do I really have a choice? Don't touch that. We're using it to time our match. Um... Yes? Good gravy. Is that a tub full of gravy? Where? Oops, it was just a weather balloon. So Castaneda really has a thing for the bank teller, huh? Oh yes, he carries a picture of Brittany with him wherever he goes. Yipes! There's a spider on your shoulder! Where? Oh, wait. It was just a skinny cow. Whoa, isn't that Bobby Fisher? Where? Sorry. Uh, must have been a trick of the light. Hey, it's a plate of brownies! Where? Nice move, Brainiac. That doesn't count. You know the rules. You let go of a piece, it's a move. But, but, but. Rules are rules, Tabo. Fine. Excuse me. Yes? 
Hey, isn't that Brittany, the bank teller? <gasps> Brittany, where? Nope, sorry, just a stick. Hi, Brittany. <gasps> Brittany, where? <laughs> Ooh, good move. Don't tell me you're gonna count that. You bet your bonny butt I am. You unbelievable jerk. Who was it told me that rules are rules, Tabo? Fine. You wanna see a move? Here's a move. You call that a move? This is a move. You can't do that. Oh, yeah? Who's gonna stop me? Full step standing. Doily sniffer. Lard bucket! Monkey molester! This must be the ship shock shop I heard Mr. Cheese talking about. It's locked. Poor thing. Poor, ferocious, man-eating giant ostrich. Poor thing. Poor, ferocious, man-eating giant crocodile. I'd hate to see the creature that laid this. Poor thing. Poor, dim-witted giant koala. Poor thing. Poor, dim-witted giant koala. Poor thing. Poor, endangered giant wombat. Poor thing. Poor defenseless giant platypus. Poor thing. Poor cuddly wuddly giant dingo. Poor thing. Poor doomed hapless giant kangaroo. Poor thing. Poor defenseless giant platypus. I'm back. What do you want now? What's your beef with pirates? Well, for one thing, pirate smell. The only thing that smells worse than a pirate is two pirates. It's enough to make a man park a tiger on the rug. Uh, yeah, right. Well, I'll be seeing you later. Not too soon, I hope. Ah. I don't think he'd like that. Nah, I prefer to keep this to myself and a select group of close friends. What are you doing? What is that horrid smell? You've befouled my platypus. Ah, oh, crikey, look what you made me do. Now I need to order a new cane. I thought he'd never leave. Poor thing. Poor, doomed, hapless, giant kangaroo. Match dueling swords. There are more civilized ways to pick a fight. There are more civilized ways to pick a fight. It's locked. Poor thing. Poor, ferocious, man-eating, giant ostrich. interest in trying to hatch the egg.
it's locked. Still here, are ya? Spraying me with that. Sorry, but I want to be sure of this. Who did you say this smell belonged to? Like I told you, it belongs to Kent Z. Yosarian. Thanks. Ooh, ooh, stop spraying me with that. Sorry, but I want to be sure of this. Who did you say this smell belonged to? Like I told you, it belongs to Kent Z. Yosarian. Thanks. Ooh, ooh, stop spraying me with that. Sorry, but I want to be sure of this. Who did you say this smell belonged to? Like I told you, it belongs to Kent Z. Yosarian. Thanks. The name on it says Adeline A. Apricot. It has all sorts of useless information, such as prosthetic prescriptions, address, phone number, allergies. The name on it says Harry D. Back. It has all sorts of useless information, such as prosthetic prescriptions, address, phone number, allergies. The name on it says Melvin D. Deuteronomy. It has all sorts of useless information, such as prosthetic prescriptions, address, phone number, allergies. The name on it says Jorge H. Kristoff. It has all sorts of useless information, such as prosthetic prescriptions, address, phone number, allergies. The name on it says Josephus X. Ackley. It has all sorts of useless information, such as prosthetic prescriptions, address, phone number, allergies.
There are directions to Pegno's Pete's house. Weird. Looks more like a train schedule to me. There are directions to Pegno's Pete's house. Weird. Looks more like a train schedule to me. Hey Guybrush, I need your help. Here, take this. What's this for? What do you think it's for? Open the gate, dummy. Oh, you'll need this too. Ooh, a rope. That'll be useful. And this. Hey, great, a gun. Watch out, peg nose. If you're really me, then what number am I thinking of right now? 9,452. Creepy. That is the number I'm thinking of. I guess you really are me. It's locked. Guybrush, you're the greatest. Oh, I've got one more thing for you. Um, great, a rubber chicken with a pulley in the middle. Thank you. 
Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Hey, Guybrush, I need your help. Here, take this. Where did you get this? Cripes, do I always sound this annoying? Will you open the gate for yourself already? Oh, you'll need this too. Um, great, a rubber chicken with a pulley in the middle. And this. A rope. That'll be useful. If you're really me, then what number am I thinking of right now? 69. Creepy. That is the number I'm thinking of. I guess you really are me. Brush, you're the greatest. Oh, I've got one more thing for you. Hey, hey great, a gun. Watch out, peg nose. Hey, Guybrush, I need your help. Here, take this. Where did you get this? Do I always sound this annoying? Will you open the gate for yourself already? Ah. Oh, you'll need this too. Um, great, a rubber chicken with a pulley in the middle. And this. Ooh, a rope, that'll be useful. If you're really me, then what number am I thinking of right now? Sixty-nine. Creepy. That is the number I'm thinking of. I guess you really are me.
Thanks, Guybrush. You're the greatest. Oh, I've got one more thing for you. Hey, hey great, a gun. Watch out, Peg Nose. I bet a whole lot of crawdaddies would fit in this trap, and I bet it doesn't catch many either, with gaps that big between the bars. I can hear some people talking inside. If I move closer to the window, maybe I'll be able to make out what they're saying. Like I said, I got the job done. Now where's my money? Hmm, this should be good. Yeah, all in due time, my dear Mr. Pignose. Hey, that voice sounds familiar. We've only completed part of the plan. You've done an admirable job in getting Guybrush out of the way, as well as reappropriating the Marley family heirlooms. I trust you put them somewhere safe for the time being? Of course I am. I'm no idiot. That junk you're so interested in is safe and sound in my impenetrable cave. That junk, as you call it, may very well be the key to ridding these islands of pirates once and for all. Uh, uh, no offence, of course. Right. So about my fee? Later, my good man. In the meantime, the heirlooms are our little secret. Keep them hidden, and not a word to anyone. We'd hate to have my plan spoiled by an indiscretion. All right, Mr. Batgirl, we'll do it your way. But if you don't pay me soon, I'll cut your gizzard out. There's no need to be such a ruffian. You'll get what's coming to you. I'd better. I'm off to tend to my affairs. Now that we're in possession of the Marley heirlooms, I must begin determining how they relate to the ultimate insult. So, Ozzy and Pegnose are working together. After I deal with Pegnose here, I'll have to pay Mr. Mandrill a little visit. That's the door to Pegnose's shack. Pegnos must catch his own fish. No thanks. If I need stinky old fish, I'll go to the bait shop. Yeah, I'm not gonna get too close. Wouldn't want Pegnos to see me. Honey, I don't feel welcome. No thanks. I prefer to drink rum that's been prepared by people with fully functioning nasal equipment. If I just go barging in there, Pegnos will shoot me. Pegnose's panic attacks is fun, but I'm sure I could do better. That's a very slippery welcome mat. Ha! 
I don't think so. You're going to jail, bucko. Well, Inspector, here's your real criminal. What's this? That looks like Peg Nose Beat. Let me out of here! It is. He's the one who framed me for the bank robbery. I'd like this anklet removed now. You've got nothing on me. I overheard you and Ozzy talking about how he hired you to rob the bank and frame me. Ah, that won't hold up his evidence. Oh, he's right. You have proof he did it? But that prosthetic nose I gave you earlier should clear my name. Hmm. Well, not exactly. That would only prove that Peg Nose here was at the scene of the crime. It wouldn't prove he was the perpetrator. To do that, you'd need to prove Peg Nose had the loot in his possession. But... So, I will not be administering justice in this case. But you can't just let him go. Oh, Pete's not going anywhere. He's wanted for plenty of other crimes. Come back when you think you can prove what you claim. <sighs> All right. Gee, I wonder how Elaine's doing. And so, my swashbuckling citizens, as we approach the next century, can we really afford to entrust Melee Island's future to a man with no past, a man with no experience, a man who doesn't even seem to like pirates? Common sense says no! My opponent is right. I am a newcomer to these islands, and it's true that my experience in affairs of state is minimal at best. But it doesn't take a seventh-generation pirate princess to see that Melee Island needs more than a part-time status quo governor. A governor who can't even promise her citizens good times and free grog. Stop! Stop! Stop it! You, you, you can't be stupid enough to believe that Charles is just gonna give you free grog and good times, can you? Well, if it isn't Peg Nose Pete, the pilfering pirate. What do you want, you ponytail freak? So, the infamous Peg Nose Pete finally meets his match. You're nothing without your precious attack done. I want my belongings and I want them now. I don't know what you're talking about. Tell me where my stuff is and I won't hurt you. Ooh, now there's a threat. This is your last chance to tell me where the loot is. Oh, what? Or I'll bring my duck in here. Ha! Ha! There's no pets allowed in this building. Or I'll ask you again. That doesn't surprise me. Or nothing. That's what I figured. Come on. Please tell me where the loot is. I'll never talk. How does Ozzy Mandrill fit into this scheme? I don't know who or what you're talking about. Yes, you do. I saw him over at your house. And you still can't figure it out. You're a sorry excuse for a pirate. I am not. I'm mightier than you'll ever be. <laughs> right. I'll let you get back to running errands for the wifey. Did a duck really nibble off your nose? I'm not talking to you. Quack! <laughs> Quack! <laughs> Stay here. I'm off to enjoy my freedom. Freedom? You can't even leave the island. This cane has an almost imperceptible crack in it. Looks like high quality wood, though.
I'm back. So you are. Why do you put up with that rude, stick-breaking customer? You mean Mr. Mandrill? Well, for one thing, he's rich. If he ever pays off his tab, I'll be able to retire. For another thing, he's a steady customer. Barely a day goes by when he doesn't break his walking stick in a fit of rage and demand a new one. For a third thing, he's not too bright. I've been carving new sticks for him for months, and he's never noticed that I just keep gluing the same stick back together over and over again. <laughs> Anything else that you'd like to tell me about Mr. Mandrill? Oh, sure. I can't think of a thing. Stick around. I'll be back later. Be seeing ya. Those little buggers sure know high-quality wood when they see it. Freddy, my new kind of better be ready. Oh, it sure is, Mr. Mandrill. It's right uh, over on that bench there. Creepwood? Thinking of buying a walking stick of your own, are you? Uh, might make you look more distinguished. <laughs> Quite like a monkey in a hat. <laughs> yeah, those are funny. Hey. Put it on my bill, Freddy, and don't even think about overcharging me, or I'll own you. Yes, sir. Always a pleasure, Mr. Mandrill. It's a pile of sawdust. I'm not picking that up. I'm back. What do you want now? Hey, you're the jerk who hired Pegnos to frame me for the bank robbery. That's strange. I heard that you were the one who robbed the bank. Ha! I overheard you talking to Pegnos in the swamp. What? You heard me. I know all about your scheme to steal the Marley heirlooms. Ah! Your puny pirate brain is incapable of perceiving the true depths of my scheme. Besides, you'll never be able to pin anything on me without the loot. And you'll never find it. Ha! I already found it. Really? You found Pegnos's booty showcase? Um, yeah. What did it look like? I thought there would be more chintz. Hmm. You're probably bluffing. But I was planning to take a hike to the showroom anyway. And when I return, I'll have plumbed the mysteries of the ultimate insult. Don't touch anything while I'm gone. Grandpa Marley's letter mentioned the ultimate insult. Wonder if it's important.
Good thing I had that trail to follow. Up until now, that is. It's disappeared. Those termites probably ran out of cane to eat. Now, where did that Australian pirate phobe go? Oh, there he is. I must have kangaroos in me upper paddock. Be very, very quiet. I'm hunting Aussies. This ultimate insult nonsense has me uncharacteristically baffled. I knew I should have taken that class in ancient voodoo curses at the University of Toowoomba. The heirlooms must be nearby. It's pretty shallow here. I can see the dirt on the bottom easily. It's not so shallow here. I can just make out the bottom. They're very tropical. Ah, no way. I think I've had enough caper tossing to last me a while. Hey, there's a hidden passage back here. That must be where Ozzy disappeared to. This button practically screams push me. Ick, dirty dishes. For a master thief, Pegnose is a real slob. This button practically screams push me. What kind of twisted freak keeps the skulls of his victims lying in piles around his showroom? I bet he wasn't hugged much as a child. Ugh, no way. Who knows where these skulls have been? Other than inside somebody's head, I mean. What an odd collection of junk. There doesn't actually seem to be all that much valuable stuff in here. No, I'd probably get busted for possession of stolen property. Murray? Guess not. This button practically screams push me. I'm not picking that up. Hey, that looks like the Lucre Town Bank's missing loot. And the Marley Heirlooms. I've got to find a way to get in there. The bank booty and the Marley Heirlooms are in the cavern on the other side of this unbreakable window. Ick, dirty dishes. For a master thief, Pegnose is a real slob. Too dark to see. I already have something in there. Here, fishy, fishy, fishy. Mm, maybe I should wait until they're closer. Here, fishy, fishy, fishy. I already have something in there. Whew. It's a good thing I can hold my breath for 10 minutes. It's the stolen booty from the bank. just fell out of the chest. A tiny screw. I'll bet it goes to Pegnose's prosthetic nose. Now I can clear the good name of Guybrush Streetwood.
It's beautiful. I can't reach it. I mean, I really can't reach it. I don't think it's my time to walk into the light. That's Pegnos' showroom over there. What a strangely shaped stalactite. I'd better not. I'd better not. No, my little fish might escape if I open it. I already have something in there. I have no idea what that is. It's too dark to see. It's locked. Stay out of trouble. I recovered the stolen loot. Am I free now? That doesn't mean you didn't steal it. Oh, Inspector, I think you'll find this interesting. What's this? It looks like a tiny screw. I think you'll find it goes with a nose I gave you earlier. Oh, you do, do you? What makes you so sure, eh? It won't prove a thing. Quiet, you. Well, then. Perhaps we should give it a try. Oh, still you! Quiet, you! Well, I'll be. Well, let, let's see that screw. It doesn't fit! Quiet, you! If the nose fits, you must acquit. I've never seen that screw before in my life. Quiet, you! Well, all right, then. I guess your name's been cleared. Let's see that leg of yours. Oh, um, right. <laughs> the anklet thingy. Hold on. Maybe I should do a background check on you. Just because you didn't rob the bank doesn't mean you aren't wanted for other more heinous crimes. Hi, he stole a duck! Quiet, Quiet you! you! On the other hand, 
without the stigma of felonious robbery hanging over your head, you seem pretty harmless. So, off you go. Hey, was that an insult? <laughs> Done paying your debt to society, Otis? Ha freaking ha. Time to make sales, shipmates. Thank gods. I hate this repressive place. Yeah, I was getting kind of bored. We can't. I have more repairs to make. <laughs> Just kidding. Ship's ready. All right, mateys. Stay here and watch the ship while I go into town. Yeah, you guys stay here while uh, Guybrush and I check out the flora. If you get to go, I get to go. Scumbar, here I come! Hey, if anyone here gets to go to the scumbar, it's me. Hey, <clears throat> please stay here and guard the ship. I'll be back soon. Jeez, we were just kidding. We were. This can't be right. I'm afraid it is, Governor. Charles L. Charles' Good Times Free Grog campaign has given him a 23% lead in all the polls. But... Honey, I'm home. Guybrush, uh, you're back. Yes, and look what I've got. Uh, oh, wait, that's not it. Oh, Guybrush, this is wonderful. Esteban, take these papers down to Melee Town Hall and save my mansion. Oh, Guybrush, I am so glad you're back. What took you so long? Well, that's a funny story. It all started when I went looking for the no-nosed pirate. And then Ozzy said, I'm gonna put your shrimp on me body. After that, I was attacked by an army of koalas. And so the lawyers used the Marley Mansion deed to drop the legal papers to save the mansion. And I came back here. Well, seems like the sensible thing to do would be to destroy my grandfather's heirloom so that no one could get their hands on the ultimate insult. Whatever that is. I agree. Got a match? <laughs> Charles, you manipulating weasel. Get out of my house before I stick my piranha poodles on you. Yikes. No, no, my dear Mrs. Marley. Three point. Is that any way to talk to the next governor of Melee Island? I don't care what the polls say. The pirates of Melee will see through your tissues of false hopes and empty promises. <laughs> the pirates of Melee couldn't see through a window. They can't even see what's right in front of them. What are you talking about? Why, only the biggest lie of them. LeChuck! LeChuck! At your service. Enough of this inane banter. I've got an election to win. <laughs> How do you expect to be elected once I tell everyone you're really LeChuck? Go ahead, tell them. Shout it from the rooftops. It will only ensure my victory. And once I'm elected, I'll use my gubernatorial powers to divine the secrets of the ultimate insult. Huh? You heard me. The ultimate insult. With its unholy power, I'll make the seas run red with the blood of my enemies. I'll bring the forces of hell to the shores of the Caribbean. And I'll finally make Elaine my willing bride. <laughs> Oh, yeah? Well, you fight like a cow. I'm confused. About what? How can LeChuck be alive? Relatively speaking, of course. I don't know. What is the ultimate insult? And why are LeChuck and Ozzy Mandrill after it? I don't know. Well, I've got a plan. I know I'm going to regret asking this, but what is it? Why don't I run for governor while you try to figure out the mysteries of the ultimate insult? Hmm. That's close, but I've got a better idea. I'll redouble my efforts to keep LeChuck out of the governor's mansion, which should be a lot easier now that I know he's really an evil undead demon from heck. In the meantime, why don't you do everything you can to stop Ozzy and LeChuck from getting their hands on the ultimate insult? Whatever that is. Uh, okay. 
How? If I were you, honey, I'd talk to the voodoo lady. She always seems to know about these things. But have fun fighting the bad guy, schnookums. This is what it's like being a first lady. Does Melee really want an agent of the undead legions of heck governing its fiscal policy? I think not. Thank you for your time, citizens. And remember, vote for Elaine Marley on election day. Sold. Uh, guy brush. Ye old creepy unlit place for books. Gee, that doesn't sound too inviting. I'm Melee Island Governor Elaine Marley, and I'm running for re-election. It has recently come to my attention that my opponent, Charles L. Charles... Does Melee really want an agent of the undead legions of heck governing its fiscal policy? I How can I help you? I can tell that you're still interested in my voodoo wares. Did you have anything in particular in mind? Do you have any plus 10 strength elixirs in stock? Perhaps. What are your current stats? Uh, I don't think I've got any. Well then, what good would a strength elixir do? I see your point. On second thought, I probably shouldn't be shopping at a time like this. True. I see that you are finally ready to ask me about the ultimate insult. Yeah. What would you like to know about it? I sense that you want to know what the ultimate insult is. Good guess. The ultimate insult is the most coveted and dangerous voodoo item the world has ever known. More coveted and dangerous than the indescribable terrors of Big Whoop? Twice as coveted and five times as dangerous. Yowie. What does it do? It is a powerful talisman that allows its owner to spew incredibly foul insults. Insults? That's all? I thought it would be a potion that turned people inside out or something. But these are no ordinary insults, Threepwood. These are insults spoken in an ancient, forgotten tongue. Insults so vile, so emotionally crippling, that they transform even the fiercest of pirates into an egoless mass of goo permanently. Wow! Hey, wait a minute. If the insults are in a forgotten language, how come they're so dangerous? Wouldn't that have the same effect as insulting me in Finnish? You'd think that, wouldn't you? But the language used by the ultimate insult is so ancient that it's rumored to be the primal language, the tongue from which all other languages arose. Amplified by the voodoo magics of the ultimate insult, this original language has the power to speak to the very heart of a person's soul and mock it into oblivion. Whoa. Indeed. I see that you want to know how to make an ultimate insult. That would be useful. Sadly, I have no idea how to make an ultimate insult talisman. That's strange. 
You've always seemed to be the master of all things voodoo-like. Yes, but the ultimate insult was outlawed dozens of years ago in the aftermath of a terrible battle between two ultimate insult-wielding hoon guns that shattered the egos of an entire chain of islands. That's awful and bad for business. As a face-saving gesture, the united voodoo workers of the Tri-Island area agreed to gather up and destroy all known copies of the ultimate insult recipe, lest one ever be assembled again. I see that you want to know where to find the makings of an ultimate insult. It would be good to know where to start. As I said, the instructions to build an ultimate insult have been destroyed. However, I seem to recall that the individual pieces of an ultimate insult can only be found on one island. Monkey Island? Hmm, no. Too obvious. It was some other island entirely. Unfortunately, this island's name has also been lost to the vagaries of time. Very well. I can see that you're still fumbling for direction. How can I help Elaine win her re-election? That depends. What do you know about politics? Absolutely nothing. Then, short of stuffing the ballot box, I don't see how you can help her. Great! Better get a stuffing. But if you get caught, the Melee Town Council will string you up, stuff you with crawdads, and let pirates whack you like a piñata. Uh, I don't think I like that idea. Perhaps it would be best if you steered clear of the election. Actually, I think I can figure out what to do next all by myself. Very well. I sense that you want to know the connection between the Mali heirlooms and the ultimate insult. Stop doing that! But you're right. This chest contains Grandpa Marley's heirlooms. According to Grandpa Marley's letter, his wedding presents to Elaine hold the key to assembling the ultimate insult. But there's so much stuff in these heirlooms that it's hard to separate the presents from the junk. Ah, I sense powerful voodoo forces at work here. Weddings, nuptials, bands of gold. Reveal to us a gift that's old. Hey, a pair of earrings. Lacy veils and prenups, too, show us the symbol of something new. Ooh, a necklace. Bridesmaids tinged with jealous sorrow bring to light a present borrowed. A pen on a chain? What kind of present is that? One heart beats where once were two. The final gift is something blue. Oh, the final gift is something blue. Is something wrong? Yes. There should be a fourth wedding gift in here. A blue wedding gift. But my mystic senses detect nothing. Maybe it's still on Luger Island. I don't think so. My voodoo instincts tell me it's somewhere on Mele Island. How curious. Do you have any idea where I can find the blue wedding present? Only that it's somewhere on Melee Island. What am I supposed to do with the wedding presents? If Grandpa Marley was telling the truth, they hold the key to finding the ultimate insult. But how? If it were me, I'd find the woman who wore those earrings. I don't need any more of your enigmatic hoodoo right now. As you wish, Guybrush. I'll be here later if you need me. Good afternoon, citizen. I'm Melee Island Governor Elaine Marley. I'm running for re-election. It has recently come to my attention that my opponent, Charles L. Charles,
Hmm, looks like someone has been buying some grogs lately. Hey, there's a quarter in here. I'm not picking that up. It's a coin. It's jammed, stupid grog machine. my quarter. Jackpot. It's empty. Jackpot. I've already got one. Guy Brush, what did I tell you about drinking grog? Uh... Guy Brush, Ulysses Threepwood. No grog until my errands are finished. Guy Brush, what did I tell you about drinking grog? Uh... Guy Brush, Ulysses Threepwood. No grog until my errands are finished. That's the second most beautiful figurehead I've ever seen. Hey, she's got pierced ears. Why would anyone put earrings on a ship's figurehead? Nah, I don't think they'd go with my outfit. Those things really don't go together. Not again. Couldn't just leave me alone, could you? Most pirates would be happy with a gorgeous inanimate figurehead. But no, you had to stick those accursed voodoo earrings into me. Well, here I am, an enchanted, talking, ticked off figurehead. Am I everything you hoped for? Hey, a talking figurehead. Hey, a talking monkey. Well, actually, I'm a mighty pirate captain. Besides, there's no such thing as a talking monkey. Says you, I've been everywhere in this cesspool of a tropical paradise, and I've seen everything. Much more than some grog light swilling nobody like you. Um, okay. Well, I'll talk to you later. Suits me fine. Hey! Who painted me pink? Um, figurehead lady? What? What horrible abomination of nature gave you the ability to talk? Damnedest thing. I crossed tax with some old sea hag of a ship. How was I supposed to know she was carrying a cargo hold of voodoo root? So, a bunch of mojo crap fell off her decks and I sailed right through it. Next thing you know, I'm talking. Like you care anyway, squid for brains. You look kind of familiar. Perhaps you've seen me in your nightmares. No, I don't think so. Yes, you have. Watch this. I'm the king of the world! Woo! Ah! Stop! That's the scariest thing I've ever seen. What's with a surly attitude? You'd be surly too if you were screwed to the stem of a ship. Good point. Wanna be my official ship? Wanna be my anchor? Did you mean that in the literal sense or the figurative? How's this for clarity? Make like a jellyfish and dry up on the beach! I'd make a better captain. How long were you a bellhop before you got promoted? 
Let's drop the anchor topic. Oh, oh, very clever. Ever heard of a voodoo talisman called the ultimate insult? Sure. What of it? Do you know where it is? No. Do you know what it looks like? No. I've heard it can emasculate the toughest of pirates. Really? Are you sure you've heard of it? I've never heard of your stupid Ultraman insult thing. I was just yanking your chain hard. I'm looking for something blue. We're all looking for something, Rat Dander. But this is important. I need something blue, like a bride would wear at her wedding. And you would make a lovely bride. Not for me. It would have been for my wife. I can't help you, but I'll bet she's pretty blue now. I have to go now. Just don't go in the harbor. Some of us live in the water. A statuesque lady of your beauty should have a necklace. Oh, how sweet. You remind me of the daughter your parents never had. What is this compulsion you have to dress me up, you pantaloon freak? Um, figurehead lady? What? Oh, scrub off now, would you? Vibrant colors. Wow, this stone guy sure has some hot breath. Hmm, wouldn't the molten wax slide down the face of the canvas if it were on the easel? Oh, amateurs. full of grenade canisters. Don't be silly. Those are cans of special colored wax. Oh, I knew that. More fun than a barrel full of the uh, wax. He sure does have a lot of barrels full of stuff in here. Meat hook. Guy brush. I'd heard you were killed by a giant clam. can't be killed. I've got an unbreakable five-game contract. Oh, I've got to get a better agent. All I get these days are extended cameos. Maybe you should try branching out into new genres. I've been trying, but it's hard. I read for a first-person shooter the other day, but the gun kept slipping through me yorks. Mm, that's too bad. I know. I'm seriously thinking about chucking the old thing and moving to North Dakota. But enough of my problems. What brings you to me humble studio, old chum? I thought we could catch up on old times. Like what? Whatever happened to your parent? You mean the beast? Oh, he died. Hunger? Loneliness. A parent without someone to talk to is a sad parrot. Do you still do that thing you do? I don't know what you're talking about. You know, that funny thing you do. Come on, do the funny thing you do. I still don't know what you're talking about. You know, that thing you do with the talking and the face. If you don't want to do the funny thing, just say so. What are you talking about? You know, the thing with the tattoo. Ow! You mean this? Hello, guy brush. That's it.
How did you and Carla and Otis... Escaped from Monkey Island. Same way you did, of course. On Herman's hidden pirate ship? Herman had a ship? That jerk never told us. I, uh, guess we didn't escape the same way you did. If you didn't use Herman's ship, how did you? Escape from Monkey Island. I uh, don't want to talk about it. Oh, come on. No. On second thought, I really don't have time to reminisce. Fine by me. What do you want to talk about? What's with all the candles? I use them to create me art. Your art? I didn't know you had an art. Oh, yes. As a child, I was one of the foremost watercolor painters in the Tri-Island area. See? Here are me old paintbrushes. Nice. I love painting, but after I lost me hands in the accident, I just sort of drifted into piracy. I didn't really like being a pirate, but what else could I do? I was a painter with no hands. I'm looking for something called the ultimate insult. I could use your help. How can I help? Do you have any idea what the ultimate insult is? Not a clue. Maybe you should ask the old voodoo lady. She's good with stuff like that. Do you know what the ultimate insult looks like? Nope. I'm looking for Grandpa Marley's fourth wedding present. Why? Because it'll help me find the island of the pieces of the ultimate insult. That's funny. Why? Many years ago, when I was a child prodigy using conventional watercolors, Grandpa Marley hired me to paint him a map of the Tri-Island area. He said it was going to be a wedding present for his granddaughter. Unfortunately, he left for Australia before I finished it. Where's that painting today? I don't know. When I began working with wax, I painted over all my old watercolors. I just couldn't stand looking at him anymore. I think I covered Marley's map with some sort of landscape. That's all I can remember, though. Do you still have it? Oh, no. My waxy creations are sold faster than I can produce them. Marley's map could be anywhere by now. Darn. Do you think that the map you painted for Grandpa Marley is really the fourth wedding present? It seems likely. And you really don't know where it is? All I know is that it's out there, somewhere, with a beautiful waxy landscape painted over it. I think I'll plumb this ultimate insult mystery on my own. Okay. Anything else? Nothing important. Go back to what you were doing. Thanks. This paintbrush seems pretty solid. Lua bar? What's a lua? Great pictures of Grog! They've done something horrible to the scum bar! Welcome to the lua bar! I'll be right with you. Those are some bizarre looking drinks. Those are some bizarre looking drinks. 
They're cheap, crummy, mass-produced wooden chopsticks. Pardon me. Yes? Do you know what they did to the scum bar? Scum bar? What's that? It's what this place used to be before they redecorated it. It was dark, dingy, smelled like grog gone bad. Sounds disgusting. <sighs> yeah, it was great. What's good to eat here? Do you like sushi? I'm sure I wouldn't. You need to ease into it then. Order something that isn't raw to start with, and then work your way to the good stuff. The good stuff? I hope by that you don't mean the stuff that looks like it lived in the bilge of a ship last week. Ooh, the unagi. <laughs> That's the best. You aren't from around here, are you? Does it show? When I travel, I try not to look like a tourist. I like to really get to know the place I'm visiting. Then this is the wrong place. You should be down by the docks, working the ships, drinking grog. It doesn't sound like much fun. This is plenty authentic enough for me. Thank you. Thanks for your time. Sure. Those are some bizarre looking drinks. So Talor, you are not allowed back here. Close the door before I whack you in the nugget. Sheesh, lumpy. Excuse me. Why, hello. Great getup. What do you mean, great getup? Well, uh, you look really authentic. Just like a, you know, a real swashbuckler. Do you work here? No, I am a real swashbuckler. My wife's the governor. I'm a mighty pirate captain. Whoa, you really get into character. What's good on the menu? Oh, uh, I like everything. Really? That sushi stuff looks pretty gross, if you ask me. Well, don't tell anyone, but <laughs> I don't like it either. But everyone else is eating it. You know, after all, isn't that what real pirates eat? I've heard the flaming scuttlefish is the way to go if you don't like sushi, though. Did you know this place used to be a real pirate bar? Really? More than this? Oh, yeah. They had real grog, real pirates, and real fights. Whoa, sounds great. But, uh, what's grog? Uh... Never mind. Enjoy your stay? Yeah, thanks. These bar stools have flowers on them. Somehow that just doesn't seem right. Hmm. The style of this painting, it seems very meat hooky. These bar stools have flowers on them. Somehow that just doesn't seem right. There's some sort of mechanical stuff under the water that's making these boats go. Ah, how cute. Little itty bitty boats floating around carrying itty bitty pieces of something that appears to be edible. There appears to be a minuscule meal set on this silly square shaped tray. Excuse me, miss. Um, uh, miss? Can I help you? What happened to the scum bar? Oh, we're under new management now. We've done away with all the pirate swill and wenches. Ew. But I liked the pirates. Ew, gross. Nobody likes real pirates anymore. That's so last week. But I like the swill. We've replaced that old swill with family-friendly fun beverages. We have quite a selection. But I like the wenches. I mean, they, um, made it so authentically piratey. Our decorators went for realism without the fright. They insisted that we replace the wenches with totems and bamboo. Drink sales are down, but we can turn the lights on again. Excuse me, I have customers waiting. Hey. 
excuse me, miss. Um, miss? Can I help you? Can you recommend something from the menu? Oh, the sushi is all very good. Our chef is one of the best there is. Um, what sushi? Are you for real? Everyone's eating it these days. Okay, it's raw fish artistically prepared with natural ingredients from the sea. That sounds pretty gross. Well, we do have a heated dish for the less trendy people like you. Try the flaming scuttlefish. I'm a mighty thirsty pirate. What can I get you? I could sure go for a nice crowd. We don't have that, but we do have a fine selection of tropical drinks. What? No grog? I'm not sure what that is, but I know we don't carry it. Can I interest you in a fine tropical drink? They come with cute little umbrellas. What kind of bar doesn't serve grog? I've been serving drinks in bars for months. I've never known a bar to serve grog. But that's all they used to serve here. What else can I get you? But I really wanted a grog. Looks like you've maybe had too much already. If you don't calm down, I'll have to cut you off. What kind of umbrella drinks? Well, we have a few specialties. Deep blue sea with a coral reef chaser, monkfish mango madness, and barnacles and James Bryan cooler. I'll let you think about it. Can I order some food? Sure. What can I get you? Do you have anything that's cooked? Try the flaming scuttlefish. It's the only thing that isn't served raw. I'll have that. Excellent choice, sir. We're required to say that. Your order will be up shortly. Better move before he sees what I did. What in the name of Ivan? Oh, here is the problem. Some smart Alec has jammed the works. So help me if I find out who this is. Hmm, fishy. I wonder if all French chefs are issued pictures of the Eiffel Tower when they travel abroad. Pineapple and sushi dishes. <laughs> Smells like my laundry. Mmm, fishy. Mmm, warm. <gasps> Sacre fool! What are you doing in my kitchen? Ah! 
I was just looking for the bathroom. Out! 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 Oh, sorry. I've got nothing to paint on. I better move before he sees what I did. Sacre bleu! I do not understand. Why do the boats keep stopping? What are these brushes doing here? Wonder what kind of yummy goodies are baking in there. Hmm, brass monkey. Brass monkey, monkey! So what are you going to do tomorrow night? The same thing we do every night. Try to take over the Caribbean. So what are you going to do tomorrow night? The same thing we do every night. Try to take over the Caribbean. Mmm, warm. Bon vieux chez soi! Why do you still molest my kitchen? Health inspector, we have to have a talk about sanitation. Get out of my kitchen! I've got nothing to paint on. This paintbrush seems pretty solid. <gasps> oh, mon dieu, not again! I better move before he sees what I did. Sacre bleu! I do not understand. Why do the boats keep stopping? What are these brushes doing here? It's a painting from Meat Hook's Blue Period, depicting what appears to be the entire tri island area.
Oh, do you need me to carry that big, heavy picture for you? Yeah, do you mind? You know what else would look good on me? Your blood on my hands. Say, you don't happen to know anything about the ultimate insult, do you? I got your ultimate insult right here. Sounds like a big yes to me. Do you know where it is? How the poop deck should I know? You got a load of this guy. Thinks just because I'm attached to a ship, I know where every little two-bit piece of dirt of an island is. What a scupper licker. Ooh, look at me. I'm Guybrush Three Thorns. I'm a mighty stupid pirate. Interesting. Do you know what it looks like? I told you, you festering bucket of shark bait. I don't know anything about your supposed ultimate insult. Look at you walking around like you've got a bow spread up your... Hey, what's this now? Yikes, this looks complicated. This is your captain speaking. Prepare the ship for departure. Oh, great. Now where are we going? Jambalaya Island, home of the ultimate insult. Jambalaya Island? What kind of name is that? Can you get us there, Mr. Cheese? Aye. Make it so. <clears throat> Elaine? Aren't you forgetting something? Oh, right. I forgot to kiss you goodbye. Cute. No, you forgot to give the gubernatorial symbol back to me. Oh, yeah. Here. Well, I'm off to find the ultimate insult. Try not to get killed and or cursed, dear. What? What? Hey, a talking monkey! Oh, ungrateful. Uh, Mr. Cheese, wouldn't it be easier to sail around that typhoon on the horizon? <laughs> Where'd be the fun in that, Captain? Cry havoc and let the dogs Release of war. the cracker! Not in the face! Not in the face! Oh, the ship cannot stand the strain, Captain! There's no place like home! There's no place like home! This was only supposed to be a three hour tour. Well, that was a miserable journey. No cushy government job is worth this much grief. Welcome to Jambalaya Island, home of swashbuckling pirates and spooky voodoo curses. And tacky-themed restaurants. And tourists. Do I be hearing piped in music wafting through those artificial trees? What are you guys talking about? This is a perfectly normal pirate town. that's been completely taken over by the corporate tourist industry. Gee, Ozzy must have been really busy here. Oh, I need a drink. I've got repairs to make. I'll stay here and, um, uh, guard the ship. Community rowboat. Disclaimer. The Jambalaya Island Chamber of Commerce cannot be held responsible for the seaworthiness of the community rowboat. It looks almost seaworthy. Welcome to Jambalaya Island. That sign is really high in the air. Hi, Otis. What? Where's Carla? She's on chore leave. I'm sure you can find her at the bottom of a bottle of grog. I wish I could join her. Carla's drunk. Good for her. I wish I could join her. Why aren't you with Carla? Because someone has to stay and watch the chip. While, uh, mister, there's plenty of room between those reefs. Hotshot navigator fixes the damage he did to the hull. It's just as well. This whole island, it give me the creeps. Do you want me to get you anything from town? I don't know. I can't imagine needing anything from a town that's so clean. How about a half decaf, half cap, triple cappuccino, mocha latte from Starbuck and ears? No thanks. I try not to drink anything with a longer name than mine. Like Grog Otis? Yes, very much. How about a custom brewed boysenberry grog from the micro groggery? I don't trust those micro groggeries. Well, why not? I never seen a pirate go blind drink a micro grog. Now you tell me, what kind of grog is that? Good point. 
How about some authentic souvenirs from Planet Threepwood? Don't I get enough of you in my life as it is? You know, I can't think of anything you'd want either. I don't suppose you've got any useful thoughts about the ultimate insult. Are you kidding? I'm leaving the ultimate insult. Will you try to stay out of trouble this time? How much trouble could I get into walking on a dock? I shudder to think. Besides, I'm not sure I want to go into town. This island gives me the willies. Carry on. That's what I was trying to do. Welcome to Jambalaya Island. That sign is really high in the air. Canoes for rent. I can't seem to get the hang of volleyball. The ball keeps smacking me in the face and knocking me out. Real pirates don't play volleyball. Of course, the hooks and eye patches tend to keep them away from most sports that place an emphasis on inflatable balls and acute depth perception. It's an empty Star Buccaneers Grogachino cup. Star Buccaneers coffee, home of expensive espressos and gentrified Java. Wow, seems a little gaudy to have a sign that big inside the store. Touristy stuff mostly, lots of coffee and a Star Buccaneers logo coffee cup. It's an overpriced trendy mug with the Star Buccaneers logo on it. There's a sale on coffee beans. Oh my word! Really? Oops, my mistake. You almost gave me a heart attack! It's a ship riding a wave out of a big coffee cup. How cute! In a corporate retail sort of way. Pardon me. Yes? Yeah. 
isn't it a little dangerous to be vacationing in pirate-infested waters? I'll say! Somehow I got ripped off! What? Some scummy pirate weasel must have swiped my coffee mug from my shopping bag! Can you believe it? Uh, no! And this place is supposed to be pirate-free! Baby, that outfit is making me hungry. Don't get fresh, local boy! Uh, sorry. Do you know where I can find the pieces of the ultimate insult? Is that a new kind of frappuccino maker? No, it's a malevolent voodoo talisman of gut-wrenching power. I'm trying to stop an undead evil pirate from assembling it. Ooh, that sounds exciting! What do the pieces look like? One of the pieces looks like a golden man. Oh, you know, I believe the local cliff diving competition has a trophy that looks like that. Really? I think so. There was a picture of it in the travel guide. So you think the golden man might be the diving trophy? That's what I remember from the travel guide. One of the pieces looks like a bronze pirate hat. Hmm, nope, can't think of anything. One of the pieces looks like a silver monkey head. A silver monkey head, huh? Sorry, I'm drawing a big old blank. Sounds exotic though. If you find the shop that sells them, let me know. I've had just about enough talking about the ultimate insult for now. Fine! Well, what are you doing? I'm picking up some bags of this absolutely fabulous Star Buccaneers coffee. You just can't get coffee like this at home. Of course you can. There are thousands of Star Buccaneers. Yeah, but these have Jambalaya Island stamped on them. My friends at home will be so envious. I still say that coffee is coffee is coffee. Well, of course you do, you poor unsophisticated pirate. The locals never seem to appreciate what they have. I'll just be on my way. Ta! It's a tray full of mini bagels with some kind of weird pasty goop on top. That goop you are referring to is Star Buccaneer's own Schmear Whiz, a wonderfully delightful blend of artificial cream cheese and salmon lock bits with the convenience of a spray-on can. Um, great. We're giving away free samples today as a promotion, so please help yourself. Well, here goes nothing. Oh. Good gravy, that tastes horrible. It's the machine that dispenses all the Star Buccaneers' fancy coffee drinks. Welcome to Star Buccaneers' coffee house. Can I help you, sir? Grog me. Sorry, sir, but we don't serve straight grog here. But we do have some nice grog-flavored coffee drinks to choose from. Grog-flavored? It's a synthetic grog substitute. Quite good, really. I'll have one of those, then. You don't happen to offer free refills, do you? You betcha, sir. I'll take care of that for you. Can't get enough of my sweet coffee goodness, can you? Uh, just get me my grogachino, please. All righty. Coming right up. Have a nice day, and visit us again soon. about your eye-openers. I feel like I just drank an entire coffee plantation, donkeys and all! Still offering that free refill? You betcha, sir. I'll take care of that for you. 
can't get enough of my sweet coffee goodness, can you? Uh, just get me my grogachino, please. Alrighty, coming right up. Welcome to Star Buccaneers Coffee House. Can I help you, sir? I'm a mighty pirate. Surrender your women. Very good, sir. You almost sound like a real pirate. Can I make you a coffee drink? Um, sure. Good. I'll have your coffee of the day. Our featured coffee is the iced Gragaccino. I'll have one of those then. Still offering that free refill? I think you've been hitting the funky bean too hard there, sir. Your cup is still full. So it is. Have a nice day and visit us again soon. Souvenirs of Guybrush Threepwood's most... Murray? Murray the Evil Skull? Guybrush? Guybrush the Mortal Pirate? Wow, it is a small world after all. How did you escape from Monkey Island? The last time I saw you, you were sitting on a shelf in LeChuck's Demonic Amusement Park. Ah, that's a tale of heart-stopping malice and evil. Mm, naturally. It all started a few months ago. As usual, I was sitting on my shelf, working on my plans to conquer the world! <laughs> Suddenly, the amusement park exploded with a blast of demonic heck fire! Was it an unfortunate accident at Largo's Burrito Bar? No, it was LeChuck. Apparently his flaming beard melted its way through his icy tomb, freeing him. I knew I should have given him a shave before I left. But what caused the explosive blast of demonic heck fire? Oh, he was just letting off a little steam. Steam, get it? <laughs> I thought it was funny. So, after LeChuck escaped, how did you end up here? After his escape, LeChuck began destroying his theme park in a fit of demonic rage! Although, personally, I think he was just colossally embarrassed by the whole thing. I mean, really, what kind of a demonically evil scheme involves roller coasters and cotton candy, anyway? Enough editorializing. How'd you wind up here? Oh, that. Well, one of the explosions flung me out to sea, where, ironically, I landed on the shattered remnants of a midway dart game. After weeks at sea, I drifted to shore on this delightfully evil isle where Ozzy Mandrill, a man after my own blackened soul, gave me a job at this fine establishment. Mwah! You know, the tale of your exodus wasn't particularly filled with heart-stopping malice and evil. Are you kidding? It had LeChuck, Ozzy, and yours truly. How much more evil can you get? Good point. What are you doing here? Isn't it obvious? I'm the greeter slash bouncer of Planet Freepwood. The creme de la creme in pirate theme family style, altogether evil dining. Murray! All right, I added the evil part. I can't imagine how you could be a very good bouncer. Why not? Well, for starters, you've got no arms. Evil needs no arms. Watch! You, over there with the face! Oh, who, me? Yes, you! I want you out of the restaurant now! Oh, but I'm not... Talk to the hand, mortal! Uh, what hand? Don't play smart with me, fleshbag! Out! 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 Impressive! I don't imagine you get much repeat business, though. It's 
So, how do you like this job? Personally, I preferred it when I was just the greeter. It really allowed me plenty of time to work on my evil dreams. But when Floppo the Bouncer Monkey ran away, they needed someone to double on bouncer duty, and I really needed the money. Murray, what do you need money for? To finance my diabolical schemes, of course. Do you have any idea how much it costs to hire a fleet of Scandinavian barbarians these days? How would you like to become an integral part of a powerful voodoo talisman? Is it an evil talisman? Potentially. What's it called? The ultimate insult. The ultimate... Don't be naive, mortal. The ultimate insult is too powerful to be wielded by the likes of you. But I need a headpiece, and you'd be perfect. See? You fool! This diagram clearly indicates you need a monkey head. I am a human head. Well, I just thought... Well, think a little harder. I want no part of this ultimate insult tomfoolery. I've got to go. Stop by any time for more pirate-themed fun and evil. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, madames and messieurs. Oh, I think the Gragacino's wearing off. Great chefs of the Tri-Island area. Stainless steel chef, copper chef, tin chef. I never heard of any of these guys. On today's menu is Swordmaster's Delight, Guybrush's Mighty Pirate Burger, Lobster LeChuck, and Elaine's Caesar salad. Big mighty pirates like myself can't live on salads. Today's special drinks are Largo's Lemonade and Fat Fizz. Planet Threepwood has won the Golden Fish Award in Jambalaya Town. Nice. Eh, at least this place has a bar. Eh, at least this place has a bar. Excuse me. Yes, would you like a free pirate caricature? Free pirate caricature? Yes, to help promote the zany swashbuckling atmosphere of Planet Treepwood. Ozzy Mandrill Enterprises has hired me, Christopher Kilometer, to render free pirate-themed caricatures of our guests. Would you like one? Sure, why not? Wonderful. Just a moment. Mm -hmm. You know what I like about pirates? They're so active and healthy, you know, all that sword fighting and sailing, really outdoorsy stuff. What's your favorite pirate activity? If you ask me, nothing can compare to the thrill of uncovering buried treasure. But you should always be careful to lift from the legs, or else you could throw your back out. You know what else I like about pirates? They're wacky, madcap accessories. Pegs, patches, parrots, hooks. They're just so darned whimsical. What's your favorite pirate accessory? Nothing makes a bold fashion statement like a pirate with a parrot on his shoulder. And most would agree that that statement is I'm a creepy jerk who tortures small animals for my personal amusement. You know what I can't figure out about pirates? I shudder to think. What do they do in their spare time? They can't spend their entire lives fighting, sailing, and winching, can they? I guess not. Of course not. So, what do you think pirates do in their off hours? If what I've heard is true, more and more pirates are spending their free time on the internet. I have no idea what it is, but I'll try to draw it. Mm -hmm, yes. Done. Here you are, sir. Thank you for your patronage, and enjoy your visit to the happiest island on Earth. Thanks. He made me look all goofy and cartoony, with a pile of treasure and a parrot on my shoulder, swinging a dead mouse around while entangled in a fishing net.
wonder if Murray knows that they have his arm on display in here. I can't reach it. LucasArts seems to have their grubby hands into everything around here. I guess they couldn't find anything else interesting when they were stealing stuff out of my closet. Oh. My. Gosh. Somebody stole my original pirate clothes out of my closet! Hey! Look, but don't touch. Oh my. Elaine's gonna have a fit if she sees this. They made her look fat. Pardon me. Ah, uh, yeah. You're a little goofy looking for a pirate, aren't you? Oh, 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 gosh. Me a pirate, don't I wish now. Pirates are the coolest. I'm a vacationing pet shop clerk, don't you know? Aren't you afraid of encountering real pirates? Oh, 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 nah. Everyone knows that Ozymandrill swept the island clean of those, you know, those real scary pirates. Well, thanks to him, I can indulge my passion for pirate memorabilia, if you must know. You know, without the hassle of dealing with actual pirates. <laughs> what would you say if I told you you were looking at a real pirate right now? Oh, get out of here right now. Real pirates have scars and parrots and peg legs, you know, stuff like that there. You look more like one of those squeaky clean pirate performers that Mandrill's hired to entertain the tourists. But I am a real pirate. I'm Guybrush Threepwood. Oh, don't be stupid now. The real Guybrush Threepwood is over seven feet tall, wears a hat dripping with the blood of his enemies, and he has the ghost of his favorite parrot perched on his shoulder there. Right there, yeah. Wow, I'm scarier than I thought. I'm looking for the pieces of the ultimate insult. Is that one of Planet Threepwood's toy giveaways? No, it's a volatile voodoo talisman of indescribably psyche-destroying power. I'm trying to stop an undead evil pirate from assembling it. Oh, cripes, a quest? This is just like my pirate role-playing games at home. What does this ultimate insult look like? One of the pieces looks like a golden man. Ah. That sounds like my yellow Avenger action figure back home in Oshkosh. I don't think that's it. One of the pieces looks like a bronze pirate hat. Hmm. <laughs> nope, I, uh, I guess I don't have the experience points to come up with a clue. One of the pieces looks like a silver monkey head. A silver monkey head, eh? Oh, that sounds like the silver monkey mug they use for special occasions here at Planet Threepwood. Yeah, I've had just about enough talking about the ultimate insult for now. Well, fine. I'll just be on my way. Bye bye now. Excuse me. Hi, I'm Elaine, and I'll be your waitress this afternoon. Would you like to hear about today's special? I'd love to hear about today's special. We call it Stan's Budget Bologna Sub. It's four pieces of bologna, ham, and turkey smothered in three types of cheese on rye bread. Ew. <laughs> That's funny. We've been getting that reaction all day. What kind of place is this, anyway? This is Planet Threepwood, one of a chain of restaurants dedicated to showcasing the exploits of the Tri-Island area's most famous pirate, Guybrush Threepwood. Ah, that explains why it looks like my life has been vomited all over the walls. Excuse me? I'm Guybrush Threepwood, and I'm not too thrilled about this place. <laughs> That's a good one, sir. What? Everyone knows that Guybrush Threepwood is about six foot four, has a scar about yay long over his left eye, and a big black parrot. No, really, I can prove it. Ask me something only Guybrush Threepwood would know. Okay. What are your parents' names?
John and Martha? Ha! Everyone knows their names were Fred and Ginger. Well, I didn't. Then maybe you aren't really Guybrush Threepwood. I guess not. So, who are you supposed to be? I'm Elaine Marley, the pirate princess of Melee Island. Hey, baby. You can be my Elaine anytime. What? Uh, nothing. I'm looking for the ultimate insult. I've never heard of that. Is it on the menu? I don't think so. If it's not on the menu, then we don't make it. Whose brilliant idea was this, anyway? Planet Threepwood is a wholly owned subsidiary of Ozymandrill Enterprises. I should have guessed. I think I'm ready to order. What'll it be? Guybrush's Mighty Pirate Burger sounds good. I thought it might. And to drink? Largo's Lemonade will be fine. Good choice, sir. And how will you be paying? I was thinking of running a tab. We don't run tabs at Planet Threepwood. There are still too many deadbeat pirates hanging around to start handing out lines of credit. You know the type. Um, yeah. Let me know when you've got some way to pay for a meal. Where do the real pirates go when they're looking for buccaneer style? Pirates go when they're looking for buccaneer style family dining at a reasonable price. Why, Planet Threepwood, of course. Come on in and taste our world famous Guybrush Burger. Jolly looking statue, but it looks like someone's taken a crowbar to its head. Tiny Lafitte, cuius prida est? Dang it, more Latin. Now I wish I'd bought that Latin for Scummy's book. Pardon me. Yes? What kind of a pirate are you? A pirate? Moi? Heaven forbid, old bean. I'm just a humble tourist. You're pretty brave for a tourist. Most tourists would steer clear of pirate-infested islands. Normally, you'd be right. In the past, I've avoided islands like Jambalaya because of their pirate problems. But my tour guide assured me that Jambalaya has been scrubbed clean of its more undesirable pirate elements, if you catch my drift. What would you say if I told you that I was one of those undesirable pirate elements? You! Don't be so hard on yourself. You may be a little smelly, and your manners could use some improvement, but you're not even one-tenth as vile as one of those rapacious brigands that used to roam this island. I think I've just been insulted. No, really, I am a grog-swilling, sword-waving reprobate. Honest. Whatever you say, old chap. That's a great ensemble. Isn't it, though? My wife picked it out for me. It looks like a produce cart exploded on your arms. Do you know where I can find the pieces of the ultimate insult? Is that a fruit-flavored drink over at Planet Threepwood? No, it's a dangerous voodoo talisman of inexplicably soul-crunching power. Its pieces are supposed to be somewhere on Jambalaya Island. Ooh, a scavenger hunt! How thrilling! Maybe I can help. What do the pieces look like? One of the pieces looks like a golden man. Hmm. Nope, nothing comes to mind. One of the pieces looks like a bronze pirate hat. A bronze pirate hat? That's interesting. Why? Take a good look at this statue, boyo.
Do you really think the bronze hat I'm looking for could have come from this statue? Well, that'd be my guess. One of the pieces looks like a silver monkey head. A silver monkey head, eh? Sorry, I'm drawing a blank. I've had just about enough talking about the ultimate insult for now. Fair enough. What are you doing? I'm admiring the craftsmanship of this statue of Jambalaya's most famous pirate, Tiny Lafitte. What made Tiny so famous? He was the friendly pirate of Jambalaya Island. He robbed from the bad and gave to the nice. And he always said please and thank you. Twice! He's the perfect symbol of the new, non-threatening Jambalaya Island. Was there really a tiny Lafitte, or was he dreamed up by someone's marketing department? Oh, he's real, all right. I hear his son lives across the bay, or nothing at all. What happened to the top of the statue? Looks like someone gave Tiny a bad haircut. I'm not sure. Rumor has it that some vandalist pirates from Nutton at all stole the statue's hat, but I don't believe it. They do a pretty good job of keeping those types off of Jambalaya. I'd rather not talk about Tiny right now. Fine. Sorry to bother you. No bother at all, old Bean. to the finest micro groggery in town. I wonder what that's all about. Carla! Where? What do you think you're doing? What does it look like I'm doing? It looks like you're trying to drink yourself into oblivion on crappy microgrog. Hey, that's a great idea. Thanks for the suggestion. Why are you getting drunk? I'm drunk to forget. Forget what? I forgot. Are you trying to forget Monkey Island? That's it. I'm drinking to forget all the time I spent stranded on Monkey Island. Thanks for reminding me. Now I'll have to start drinking all over again. Sorry. Drinking isn't the answer, Carla. That depends on the question, doesn't it? You want to help me find the pieces of the ultimate insult? I'll tell you what, by gosh. Brush guy. Feet good. I'll stay here and keep my eye out for any pieces of the ultimate insults that come by. Okay. Um. All right then. Barky! Margrog! You abysmable master. How do you like this place? It's horrible. The grog is shrieking in my pinky finger. They won't let me get into any short fights, and all the chips have got its cheese on them. I'll let you get back to your, uh, chore leave. Aye, aye, Captain. The bar counter is incredibly clean and unsticky. This bar counter is incredibly clean and unsticky. Hi! Howdy! What can I do you for?
So, how's business? It's great. This is the only place in the entire Tri-Island area that people can come and get gourmet, freshly distilled grog. People come from all over to sample our 65 different variations of grog and grog byproducts. These include Snoot Groggy Grog, Green Grog, Dangerous Dark, Siren's Urine, named for its color, not contents, and of course, our award-winning Stale Ale. Every grog we have is distilled lovingly and individually by members of the Micro Grogger family. What about just plain old-fashioned Grog Grog? What are you, some kind of unsophisticated hick? I'd like a drink, please. You got some ID? No. Well, then I can't give you the good stuff, but I can give you this new low inebriation grog like beverage. It's called Grog Junior. We developed it here in our micro groggery for people just like yourself. It's got just enough alcohol in it to stun a skinny parrot. Well, what's the point of that? Here, try some and tell me what you think. Mm, maybe later. So what is that thing over there with a saddle on it? That, my friend, is the menacing mechanical manatee. What the heck is a manatee? The manatee is a marine mammal that grazes on seagrass and other plant life in shallow waters. They are typically 9 to 10 feet long and weigh about 1,000 pounds. That doesn't sound menacing at all. Sounds more like a swimming cow. Oh? Will you try to snatch the grass out of a manatee's mouth and see how menacing it gets? What is this mechanical manatee here for? Well, mostly for entertainment. But as a promotional special, we're currently giving away a Planet Threepwood coupon for a complimentary monkey mug meal to anybody who could ride the manatee at the highest setting. This manatee talk is too strange for me. Let's talk about something else. Okay. Why does this island seem so wholesome? Well, the inhabitants of this island, in conjunction with Ozymandrill Enterprises, have worked very hard to keep this island friendly and clean and family compliant. Family compliant? Yeah. We don't have much use for those surly ragamuffin pirate types around here. They're not very good role models. Role models? You sound surprised. Say, you're not one of those scruffy, undesirable pirates that are always scaring little kids, are you? Oh, uh, no, no. I try to plant a tree and give insult sword fight, uh, grammar lessons to children every day. Well, good for you. Tell me again about the greatness of your micro groggery. It's great. This is the only place in the entire Tri-Island area that people can come and get gourmet, freshly distilled grog. People come from all over to sample our 65 different variations of grog and grog byproducts. These include Snoot Groggy Grog, Green Grog, Dangerous Dark, Siren's Urine, named for its color, not contents, and of course, our award-winning Stale Ale. Every grog we have is distilled lovingly and individually by members of the Micro Grogger family. What about just plain old-fashioned Grog Grog? What are you, some kind of unsophisticated hick? So what's the deal with that manatee thing again? It's called the Menacing Mechanical Manatee. I'd like to take a crack at writing that manatee thing. Alrighty, let's see what you got. Okay, I'm going to start at the bedwetter setting, which shouldn't be any trouble for a stout young guy like you. Ready? Ready. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh! Ow. <laughs> I've seen drunk old ladies who were able to hold on tighter than that. <laughs> Bad weather.
What's that? Whoa, nice dive. Thank you, my friend. I fear that my skills have atrophied as of late, though. I'm not half the diver I used to be. That was one of the best plank dives I've ever seen. And who are you that would take such pains to flatter an aging plank diver? I'm Guybrush Threepwood, plank diver. Welcome to Jambalaya Island, Mr. Threepwood. I am Marco De Pollo, undefeated and undisputed plank diving champion of the world. I'm looking for the pieces of the ultimate insult. What would I know of such things? One of the pieces is a silver monkey head. I'm sorry, but that doesn't ring a bell. One of the pieces is a golden man of some sort. Hmm. How peculiar. This solid gold all-world diving trophy looks like a golden man of some sort. It's over by the judge's table. One of the pieces is a bronze hat. I never wear hats. They might screw up the shape of my naturally streamlined head. Perhaps you're not the best person to ask about the ultimate insult. Perhaps not. How did you get into plank diving anyway? Ah, that is a story rife with melancholy. Are you sure you wish to hear it? Are you kidding? I love stories rife with melancholy. Very well. It begins with my father, Count Francisco Alvarez de Pollo. He was a man of peculiar moods and eccentricities. In one of his so-called lighter moments, he named his only son Marco, much to the consternation of his wife and extended family. Why the fuss? I take it you have never been in a public swimming pool. Pirates don't have much use for him. Ah, then allow me to elaborate. At the tender age of six, I was sent to my first swimming lesson. Oh, how I happily splashed about, taking to the water like a worm to dirt. Suddenly, someone shouted my name. Marco! I turned to see who it was. Before I could find who had called my name, everyone in the pool shouted in response, Poyo! I couldn't understand what was happening. Why were they shouting my name in such an annoying scene, song, manner? Why were they closing their eyes to my obvious torment? I, I tried to get them to stop, but they just kept chanting my name over and over again. Marco Puyo! Unable to tolerate it any further, I climbed to the highest diving board in the pool and cannonballed into the center of the taunting masses as I hit the water with a resounding splash. The haunting chants of my classmates finally gave way to comforting screams of terror. What a horrible story. Yes, but at least I gained a lucrative career out of my childhood trauma. Do you still dive to drown out the voices of the taunting children? Oh no! Now I'm in it for the thrill of victory and the lure of a fat paycheck! The fact that it provides a temporary bomb to my permanent psychological damage is purely a side benefit. That's good. I hate to think there was something weird going on here. So is this diving competition open to anyone? Hardly. If I were to compete against everyone who wanted to get their hands on a solid gold old world diving trophy, I'd be diving 24 hours a day. Oh, so who do you dive against? The judges panel over there does an excellent job of weeding out the poseurs from the serious divers. I'd like to dive against you. You want to dive? Against me? 
<laughs> ah, thank you, little friend, for bringing laughter back into my life. What's so funny? Don't tell me you're serious. As serious as scurvy, diver boy. It's not wise to trifle with me, Mr. Thripwood. I am the greatest diver in the world. Second greatest, you mean. Very well. The gauntlet has been thrown. I suppose you have been certified by the judging committee? Certified? Do you think I am some sort of clown who accepts the challenges of every two-shilling braggart that comes my way? Um, yes? If you want to dive, go to the judges' committee and get certified. I just remembered a previous engagement. Bye. Bosun and Bosun's baby seal oil. I'm assuming that this oil is meant to be used on baby seals rather than... Don't touch that oil! It's very expensive! It's a golden trophy of a man in a classic arms overhead diving pose. Oh, sorry. That trophy is for the winner of the All World Prank Diving Contest, Henry. Excuse me. Hey, hey, little dude. What's up? I'd like to take a crack at winning that diving trophy. You and dozens of other gold-hunting wannabes. If you wish to dive, you must be certified first. Why? We could leave ourselves open to most grievous lawsuits if we let physically uncool people try to dive. Now, if you just step behind the table... There won't be any word problems, will there? Hey, what are you doing with that? Please turn to the right, dude. You're not gonna put that there, are you? No, then. Let me know when this begins to hurt. Ouch! And another thing. I think the staple gun was completely uncalled for. Be that as it may, you have passed the physical. Really? Don't act so shocked. You'd have to be a palsy-ridden grandmother to fail. Here's your certificate. Feel free to challenge our champion diver whenever you want to dive. So, you've managed to get yourself certified. Ah! I've seen palsy-ridden grandmothers with better qualifying scores. So, are you challenging me to a dive-off then? You better believe it. Then, prepare to be humiliated, Mr. Thripwood. Marco De Pollo is about to attempt a alpha monkey keel hall spinning swordsman combination. Let's give him complete silence for this dive. I do not envy you, Mr. Thripwood.
wasn't that bad, was I? Rants. The winner and the steel all world prank diving champion is Marco De Pollo. Pardon me, what? What was wrong with my last dive? It sucked. Could you be more specific? Nope. Why are you giving me such low scores? Look, kid, it's nothing personal. It's just that I've got an expensive red-headed wife, two expensive red-headed kids, and an expensive red-headed dog to feed, you follow? Not really. Then let me spell it out for you. Mr. Mandrill pays me a lot of money to make sure that Mr. DePoyo always wins. Whatever Mandrill's paying you to fix this contest, I'll double it. I appreciate the sentiment, Junior, but it's obvious that you don't have two shillings to rub together, much less the kind of dough it takes to keep my red-headed wife living in the manner to which she's accustomed. I'm looking for the ultimate insult. You've obviously mistaken me for someone who gives a farthing. I think I'll leave you to your grouchiness. Whatever. Dan's desk is outside. That can't be good for the finish. Stan's new building sure is festive looking. Now that's a beautiful beach. If you think it's pretty now, imagine how much nicer it'll be with the addition of three dozen picturesque timeshare holiday bungalows. How could that possibly be an improvement? Variety, son, the spice of life. An empty beach is about as exciting as a blank canvas, know what I mean? Not really. It says, Stan's Timeshare Emporium. Hyperglue. Shaking's no use, because it won't come loose. Sounds like some pretty potent stuff. Stan, is that you? Why, if it isn't my old friend yet, Bob. It's Guybrush. Of course it is, of course it is. Welcome to Stan's Real Estate Emporium, where a deal's a deal and the real estate is real. Tell me about these pamphlets. Do yourself a favor and read them. They're full of all sorts of great information about Stan's timeshares. Take one, they're free. That's the kind of guy I am, just giving things away. I thought you were selling life insurance. Turned into a dead end. Get it? Dead end? <laughs> Seriously, no money in it anymore. It just dried up. Why? All my clients were dying and becoming ghosts just to collect on their policies. Oh, well, gotta remain flexible, kid. Know what I mean? Timeshares are the wave of the future. Why is your desk outside? Ah, it's a beautiful day. How can you work inside on a day like this? Why are you really outside? Just a mm, small problem with the local vermin. It's the problem that's small. The vermin themselves are actually quite large. But it's nothing to worry about. It'll be taken care of right away. It's just a minor setback. What's important is that the timeshare units are, legally speaking, practically vermin-free.
You're hawking real estate now? Time shares, my good man. Looking for a second home? Investment property? A little extra income? Look no further. You can't afford not to take advantage of this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. And for the next 24 hours, for just listening to my pitch, you get a coupon for a free monkey mug at Planet Freepwood. Limit one per customer while supplies last. Void where prohibited by law and in the state of Wyoming. Give me the pitch. Smart decision, my friend. You'll thank me after you've heard about this exciting opportunity. Stay with me. The full pitch takes just under three hours. Be prepared to be stunned by what I have to tell you. What's the best investment for your hard-earned cash? The stock market? No, too volatile. Duck food futures. No, ducks have short lifespans. Porcelain figurines. <laughs> Uh-oh, oops, too fragile. What then? Two words, time, share. That's right, real estate. Let me show you how a small investment today can compound into an incredible fortune in just a few short generations. So, who's excited and ready to invest, huh? Hey, wake up. Huh? Huh? Oh. You must have dozed off, pal. Uh, sorry. Hey, no skin off my nose. I'm not the one that's gonna miss out on this once in a millennium opportunity. Come back when you're ready to hear the whole pitch. You know where to find me. Ever heard of something called the ultimate insult? Why, are you looking for one? Yes, do you know where I can get it? Not just now, but perhaps I can acquire some. If the markup is substantial. How many units do you think I could push? Never mind. Are you working for Ozzy Mandrel? Ozzy Mandrel? Let me tell you something about Ozzy Mandrel, kid. Ozzy Mandrel doesn't know squat about being a real entrepreneur. He doesn't know the thrill of haggling, the ecstasy of a hard-earned sale, the agony of a lost customer. All Ozzy wants are orderly lines of zombies queuing up to purchase his prefabricated, pre-priced, pre-processed garbage. I ask a kid. Where's the fun in that, huh? Where's the love? He wouldn't hire you? Not even an interview. I'll just be on my way. You can't afford to wait too long. This deal won't last. Hey, there's a picture of that grouchy diving judge in here, but that blondie's with is definitely not his lovely red-headed wife. Hi, Stan. What can I do for you, young man? Tell me more about this timeshare deal. It'd be my pleasure, my pantaloon friend. You have to be touched in the head not to take advantage of this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. As a bonus, just for listening to my pitch, I'll give you a coupon for a free monkey mug at Planet Freepwood. Limit one per customer while supplies last. Void where prohibited by law and in the state of Wyoming. Give me the pitch. Smart decision, my friend. You'll thank me after you've heard about this exciting opportunity. Stay with me. The full pitch takes just under three hours. Be prepared to be stunned by what I have to tell you. What's the best investment for your hard-earned cash? The stock market? No, too volatile. Duck food futures. No, ducks have short lifespans. Porcelain figurines. <laughs> Uh-oh, oops, too fragile. What then? Two words, time, share. That's right, real estate. Let me show you how a small investment today can compound into an incredible fortune in just a few short generations. So, who's excited and ready to invest, huh? Uh, gosh, that sounds interesting, but I need to check with my wife first. You bet, gotta check with the missus. Wouldn't want to wind up in the old doghouse. Right. I mean, where would the piranha poodles sleep? Right, well, thanks for listening. Have this coupon for a free monkey mug at Planet Threepwood from your old friend, Stan. I'll just be on my way. You can't afford to wait too long. This deal won't last. Oh, I think the 
Gragachino's wearing off. Come back to give the old cow another run? <laughs> Just splatter some glue on here like this. Voila! A puddle of glue. Hi! Howdy! What can I do you for? So what's the deal with that manatee thing again? It's called the Menacing Mechanical Manatee. I want another shot at taming the manatee. Alrighty, let's see what you got. Okay, I'm going to start at the bedwetter setting, which shouldn't be any trouble for a stout young guy like you. Ready? Bring it on. Yahoo! Not bad! Okay, now let's increase the difficulty until we get to the top setting. we'd lose you on the grazing frenzy setting, but you made it. You've joined an elite fraternity, my friend. Not many have survived their rides on the savage manatee. Come on over to the bar, partner, and I'll get you your monkey mug meal coupon. Here you go, enjoy your prize. This coupon is redeemable at any Planet Threepwood Diner and is good for one silver monkey mug meal. Offer expires 1225, void where prohibited. Not valid in conjunction with any other offers or to employees or slaves of the Planet Threepwood conglomerate. Promotion subject to change, so don't bug us if it does. This coupon is redeemable at any Planet Threepwood Diner and is good for one Silver Monkey Mug Meal. Offer expires 1225, void where prohibited. Not valid in conjunction with any other offers or to employees or slaves of the Planet Threepwood conglomerate. Promotion subject to change, so don't bug us if it does. This coupon is redeemable at any Planet Threepwood Diner and is good for one Silver Monkey Mug Meal. Offer expires 1225, void where prohibited. Not valid in conjunction with any other offers or to employees or slaves of the Planet Threepwood conglomerate. Promotion subject to change, so don't bug us if it does. Pardon me, what? I think I'll leave you to your grouchiness. Whatever. Watch this. It's a brochure for Stan's Jambalaya Timeshare Emporium. Yeah? So? Take a look at page three. Yikes! I think your red-headed wife would be very interested to find out about the time you've been sharing with this blonde, don't you? You got it all wrong, kid. She's just a friend of the family. Really? Really? 
Huh, well, then I guess your wife won't mind if I show her the brochure. Wait, stop! What do you want? What's it worth to you? I've got money, jewels, property, anything. Just don't tell my wife. Fine. All I want is a fair diving competition. That's all? Really? Really. Do we have a deal? Deal. It won't do you any good, though. DePoyo's too good to be beaten by a flat-headed loser like you. Welcome to Planet Threepwood, the piratiest place on Earth. Step inside and sample our fun-filled, genuine pirate... Excuse me. Hi, I'm Elaine, and I'll be your waitress this afternoon. I think I'm ready to order. What'll it be? Guybrush's Mighty Pirate Burger sounds good. I thought it might. And to drink? Largo's Lemonade will be fine. Good choice, sir. And how will you be paying? Check out this Mega Monkey Meal ticket. Very good, sir. Please note that due to the unexpectedly high demand, we are no longer providing the entree portion of the meal for coupon-bearing customers. However, you will still receive your complimentary beverage in the ceremonial monkey mug. I guess I should go sit down. It's a silver mug that looks a lot like a monkey head. Spooky. After all the work I went through to get this thing, there's no way I'm just gonna drink from it. I'm afraid I'm gonna have to ask you to relinquish the monkey mug. You're not allowed to keep it. Uh, I wasn't gonna keep it, really. There must be some way to grab it, but make them think it's still here. I don't think that would help anything. I don't think you'd like that. Sir, please return the monkey mug. Uh, I wasn't gonna keep it, really. There must be some way to grab it, but make them think it's still here. Excuse me. You already got a caricature. Don't be greedy. But I want one with me in the monkey mug. Oh, all right. What's your favorite pirate activity? I love the smell of gunpowder in the morning. It smells like victory. Of course, gunpowder in the late afternoon tends to smell a little more like weak old macaroni, which is why I always try to have my gun battles before lunch. You know what else I like about pirates? They're wacky madcap accessories. Pegs, patches, parrots, hooks. They're just so darned whimsical. What's your favorite pirate accessory?
I've never met a pirate who didn't love his eye patch. Although I suppose they'd love to have their eyes back even more. You know what I can't figure out about pirates? I shudder to think. What do they do in their spare time? They can't spend their entire lives fighting, sailing, and wenching. Can they? I guess not. Of course not. So, what do you think pirates do in their off hours? Personally, I prefer to spend my weekends doing chores around the house. Ew. No, really, it's quite relaxing. Mm-hmm, yes. Done. Here you are, sir. Thank you for your patronage, and enjoy your visit to the happiest island on Earth. Thanks. The caricature won't stay on the mug by itself. Now I can stick this on something. Gee, this might actually pass as the real thing. Sir, please return the monkey mug. Uh, I wasn't gonna keep it, really. There must be some way to grab it, but make them think it's still here. Where do the real pirates go when they're looking for buccaneer-style family dining at a reasonable price? Where do the real pirates go when they're looking for buccaneer-style family dining at a reasonable price? Are you crazy? You could have killed me! Crazy? I'm not the one flagrantly violating the rules and regulations of nothing at all. Huh? What's your name, sailor? Guybrush Threepwood, sir. Now, Mr. Threepwood, what is your business on nothing at all? I'm just looking around, sir. Very good, Mr. Threepwood. Now, before I allow you to pass, 
Do you have any questions? Who the heck are you? My name is Ricardo Luigi Pietenbenga Cheng Nehru O'Hara Kasaba the third. But you can call me Admiral Kasaba. How'd you get a name like Ricardo Luigi Pierre Menga Chang Nero O'Hara Cassaba III? For generations and throughout the world, the Cassaba family has enforced the laws of the seas. As a result, we've picked up an interesting and eclectic variety of in-laws. What are you doing here? I have been assigned the singular honor of guarding Ozymandru's commercial interests on Jambalaya Island. To that end, I have rounded up all of Jambalaya's scrofulous pirate trash and transported them to nothing at all, where they will remain until they become productive members of society. Well, how many of Nutton's pirates have been allowed to return to Jambalaya? Oh, only a handful. It's deucedly slow, re-educating them one at a time, you know. Luckily, I hear that Mr. Mandrill has some sort of secret plan to re-educate them all at once. Why are you firing cannonballs at innocent pirates? Mr. Threepwood, it is my experience that there are only two kinds of pirates. Those who are committing acts of wanton savagery and those planning to commit acts of wanton savagery. If you allow groups of the latter to congregate for any length of time, they inevitably transform into mobs of the former. What was that middle part again? Do you really fling cannonballs at any group of pirates you happen to spot? Of course. It's the only way to stop their infernal plotting. Even now, I can hear them contemplating foul deeds against the good and wholesome citizens of Jambalaya. Really? Well, I can hear some seagulls. I think I'll just be on my merry way. Good lad. Remember, I'm watching you. They're aimed at that beach. It's a ship of the line. There's a picture of a koala bear. Obviously the work of a certain awful Australian. cow to water. Wall drug, 7,921 kilometers. Jambalaya Island, three kilometers. Wall drug, 7,921 kilometers. Now you're just being obstinate. What's important here is more wenches. No, no, Hello? Anyone home? Leave me alone. Day. Right, now we're getting somewhere. Let's move on to play. More wenches. Now you're just being obstinate. What's important here? A wash in sand. Now you're just being obstinate. What's important here is me. I think we're getting off track here. Let's get back to booty. Right, now we're getting somewhere. Let's move on to Icor. Who are you? Ah, I be Hellbeard, the unrepentant, the scourge of the seven seas. Hellbeard, I think I've heard of you. Yeah, of course you've heard of me. I'm the nastiest pirate in the world. Wait a minute. Hellbeard the Unrepentant died over 80 years ago. Do I look dead to you? No, you look like a sock. If you're Hellbeard, where have you been for the past 80 years? I, uh, um, uh, Look! Over there! Who are you? I'm Hellbird the Unrepentant, of course. Why can I only talk to one of you at a time? Because of that paranoid jerk. 
Admiral Kassaba. Whenever he sees three or more pirates talking, he assumes they're plotting some sort of mischief. So he lobs a cannonball at them. Can't he tell the difference between pirates and puppets? I don't know if you've noticed, but Kassaba's not too bright. Do you know anything about the ultimate insult? If only I didn't. Many years ago, I was the last pirate to be exposed to the ultimate insult. In one fell swoop, its devastating jibes utterly destroyed my once indomitable ego. Can I talk to your puppeteer? I'd rather you didn't. We're trying to protect him. Come on, let me talk to the puppeteer. Yeah, all right, but don't make any sudden moves. I'll be as gentle as a baby dolphin. You must be Hellbeard. If you say so, sir. Why do your puppets look like me and LeChuck? Puppets? Uh, what puppets? Wow, you are a basket case, aren't you? Yes, sir. Very good, sir. You don't look like a fearsome pirate to me. Me? A fearsome pirate? You must be mistaken, sir. I wouldn't harm a fly. But you're Hellbeard the Unrepentant. You sacked an entire archipelago with a rowboat and the jawbone of a bilge rat named Stinky. Oh, dear. That sounds far too violent and adventurous for me. Well, if there aren't any puppets, then why are you in a puppet theater? Ha! Huh. Explain that. This is my home, sir. What? I know it's not much to look at, but it's actually quite roomy. I can't believe that you live in a puppet theater. It's a humble home, but I'm a humble man. Do you know anything about the ultimate insult? The, the, the ultimate insult? <laughs> ah! oh, you again! If you're Hellbeard, where have you been for the past 80 years? I am... Uh, look! Over there! You again? Do you know anything else about the ultimate insult? It destroyed my ego. What more do I need to know? I guess you're right. I thought the other puppet was Hellbeard. You'd like to think that. You're remarkably level-headed for a guy named Hellbeard. Eighty years of living under the influence of the ultimate insult will do that. Can I talk to the other puppet? If you must. He's not much of a conversationalist, though. Ah, you again! If you're Hellbeard, where have you been for the past 80 years? I uh, um, uh, Look! Over there! You again? Can I talk to the puppeteer again? All right. Hellbeard? Please, stop bothering me. I'm harmless, really. Do you know anything about the ultimate insult? The, the, the ultimate insult? <laughs> You again! See ya, Hellbeard. I heard those sarcastic quotes, you stab-covered whale whipper! Land shark.
excuse me, ma'am. What can I do for you, young man? This is kind of a strange place for a school. This isn't your average school, dearie. This is the Ozymandrill Pirate Transmogrification Center. Uh, uh, Transmogrification? Transmogrification. We take barbaric, foul-smelling pirates, like yourself, and transform them into prim, productive, and polite members of the emerging consumer-based economy. That's the most nefariously evil thing I've ever heard. Oh, now, now, sweetie. Don't knock it till you've tried it. Do you know anything about the ultimate insult? What's that? It's a powerful voodoo talisman that destroys people's egos. Oh, my. We don't allow any voodoo paraphernalia in our classroom, young man. Mr. Mandrell feels that voodoo is a prime contributor to the pirate lifestyle. Did you know that there's a crazy man cruising along your shore? Do you mean that brave Admiral Kasaba? Brave? He's single-handedly keeping the great unwashed pirate masses of Nutton Atoll from corrupting the paradise of Jambalaya Island. He's a loon. The most courageous men are always a little crazy, dearie. I'm tired of being a slimy pirate. Sign me up. Wonderful. Just go in and take a seat, and you'll soon be on your way to a brighter tomorrow. Good afternoon, class. My name is Miss Rivers, and I'd like to welcome you to Ozymandrill's Pirate Transmogrification Academy, a wholly owned subsidiary of Ozymandrill Enterprises. Just by walking in that door, you've already taken a courageous first step in a journey. A journey that will transform you from swashbuckling pirates into healthy, normal, and most of all, productive members of society. And why have you made this step? Because we don't have a choice. No, dear. You've come here because you're scum-sucking pirates who deserve to be dragged into the street and shot like the dogs you are. Yikes. Now then, for the next few hours, we'll be breaking down your antisocial pirate defense mechanisms and replacing them with more acceptable, marketable, behavioral traits. This could take a while. Why don't you come back later? First, let's have a frank talk about pillaging. And that's why keel hauling is bad. Very nice, young ya. Now, class, let's move along to your final exam. Three questions that will account for 90% of your grade. That doesn't seem fair. Don't get smart with me, Sonny. Sorry, ma'am. Let's begin. Yang Yang? Yes, ma'am. Your tofu burger is delivered medium well, despite your explicit request for medium rare. How do you react? I grudgingly eat the burger while hoping the service improves during my next visit. Ah. Now then, guy brush. Yes, Miss Rivers? While delivering Christmas toys to orphans on a nearby island, you notice a passing ship that's obviously taken on too much cargo. What do you do? I dump the toys, hoist the Jolly Roger, plunder the ship, decapitate their captain, and set fire to the bloody husk. Well, I never. Cripes, you are hardcore. Now, Mungo. Yes? What's in your mouth, young man? Pirate spitting tobacco, ma'am. Did you bring enough for everyone? Actually, yes. Well, that's hardly the point, young man. We don't allow pirate paraphernalia in this classroom. Hand it to me. Sorry, ma'am. Now then, Nungle. Yes, ma'am? While reading a book of poetry in the library, what appears to be a treasure map falls out of the book. What's your plan of action? Uh, you make a copy for safekeeping. Good. Okay, second question. Guy Brush? Yes? A member of the opposite sex rebuffs your advances. How do you cope? I transform myself into an undead creature of unrelenting evil, terrorizing the Seven Seas in my never-ending quest to make her my bride. Ah! Oh, my. 
Oh, that's cool, man. Mungo. Yes, sir? After drinking too much grog, a friend of 20 years teases you about your haircut. What is your reaction? I, uh, I make a joke about the expanding size of his grog belly. Good. And Yanya? Yes, Miss Rivers? Your captain has plotted a course directly through the heart of the Devil's Triangle. How do you react? I feel a small degree of superstitious, irrational fear, but press on with my duties. I see. All righty then, now for the third and final question. Mungo. Yes, ma'am? A scruffy-looking stranger offers you a grog. What's your response? I, uh, accept a drink, but pour it in a bush when he isn't looking. Interesting. Now, Yanya. Yes, ma'am? A stranger approaches you and asks for the time. How do you respond? I politely give the stranger the correct time and point him in the direction of a watch shop. Hmm. And finally, Mr. Threepwood. Yes? You see a man accosting another with a sword. What do you do? Taking advantage of their mutual distraction, I impale both men on my trusty sword and steal their gold. Yikes! Whoa! Well, I've added up all your scores, and I must say that I'm very unhappy. Mungle, I'm afraid you didn't pass. Your heart's in the right place, dear, but your brain is somewhere cold and dark and covered with spiders. Oh. Ha! Yanya, I'm flunking you, too. Why? I got every answer right! Yes, dear, but your attitude sucks. This is horribly unfair. So's life, sweetie. Get used to it. And then we have Guybrush. Guybrush, Guybrush, Guybrush. I've been teaching this course for months, and I can safely say that you're the single worst student I've ever met. I've picked lint out of my belly button with more learning potential than you. Now, in order to guarantee that you never darken my school's doorstep again, and to stigmatize you for the rest of your hopefully short life, I'm strapping this dunce cap to your stubborn pirate head in the hopes that humiliation will succeed where education failed. Now get out of my classroom and never return! Yeah, I may be a dunce, but at least I'm a mighty pirate dunce. Woo, free goodies. Mr. Threepwood, we don't want to touch the nasty old pirate toys, do we? Someone spat on this sign. It's one of those new controversial ball maps of the world. My pants are already pretty controversial. I don't need to add crackpot pseudoscience to the mix. It's the timeout stool for bad pirates. I'm not picking that up. Pretty flowers. Nice, wholesome, non-threatening, little colored blocks. No, too wholesome and non-threatening for me. What tiny desks. What tiny desks. Looks like someone's Emily Eyepatch doll got confiscated. What tiny desks. Learning is good. Toy boat. Toy boat, toy boat, toy boat, toy. No swearing. A, B, C, D, E, F, Z, C, A, T, D, O, G, S, C, U, R, V, Y. I'm not picking that up. I can't reach it. Uh, Miss Rivers? Yes, Mr. Threepwood. Ooh, 
why didn't I get a pirate transmoglorification certificate? You have to pass the course to get a certificate, Mr. Threepwood. Oh. What's your first name, baby? Don't try to smooth talk me, mister. I'd like to reclaim a confiscated item. But I didn't confiscate anything from you, sweetie. I'm, uh, collecting it for a friend. Sorry, dear, but the owners of confiscated items must reclaim them in person. Darn. And watch the mouth, Sonny. I'd like to take another whack at becoming a trans pirate. Absolutely not! I have no intention of wasting my precious skills on intractable pirates like you. Not while there are pirates out there who are practically begging for this service. But... Go away, Mr. Threepwood! Um, bye. In case of fire, pull alarm. I'm not picking that up. Never try this at home, boys and girls. False fire alarms cost lives. Ah! Fire! Everyone run for your lives! It's a classic 1582 Mercedes-Benz racing schooner. Not so fast, Buster! Thought you could pull a fast one on me, huh? Um... Get out! Now I remember why I dropped out of school. In case of fire, pull alarm. The lighter side of walking the plank. Not so fast, Buster! Think you're pretty clever, don't you? Um... Get out! I'm surprised she fell for that again. I outgrew toys like this weeks ago. Good thing that Miss River's short-term memory seems to be on the fritz.
That fire alarm is not a toy, Mr. Threepwood. Um... Get out! I wonder how many times I can get away with this. In case of fire, pull alarm. Getting off track here. Let's get back to Ico. Right, now we're getting somewhere. Let's move on to sleep. No, 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 no. You're forgetting the importance of wenches. I think we're getting off track here. Let's get back to more wenches. Well, yes, but I think you need to rationalize me. That's obvious, naturally. But what about Booty? No, 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 no. You're forgetting the importance of Ico. Well, that's obvious, naturally. But what about I think we're getting off track here. Let's get back to... I'm not trading this to anyone. Well, yes, but I think you need to rationalize. Uh, I won't See? risk putting this card into right. play unless now it's absolutely necessary. Back. Let's move on to... Frog! Well, that's obvious, naturally. I don't think what that would help anything. Dancing? Now you're just being obstinate. What's important here is food. Well, yes, but I think you need to rationalize. Kind of sounds like a parrot. I guess there aren't any parrots no, in the no, range. No, 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 no. You're forgetting the importance of... Dancing! Well, that's obvious, naturally. But what about... Sheep? I'd rather not. I see what you're saying, but let's try to focus on... Frog! Well, I have yes, toys like this weeks ago. Violence! Violence! Right, now we're getting somewhere. Let's These move arrows on are to too valuable to waste on that. I think we're getting off track here. Let's get back to Flatulence. Well, that's obvious, naturally. But what about you again? Can I talk to your puppeteer? Puppeteer? Hellbeard, the unrepentant, is no man's puppet! Arr! Can I talk to the other puppet? Puppet? There be no puppets here, boy. There be only the unrelenting terror of Hellbeard. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, where's the other puppet? Get this through your lice-infested skull, cabin boy. There be no puppets. There be only Hellbeard. Come on, let me talk to the puppeteer. Talk to the hand, you nosy scupper scraper. Do you know anything about the ultimate insult? The ultimate insult? Never heard of it. But I said I never heard of it. Come on, let me talk to the puppeteer. Talk to the hand, you nosy scupper scraper. If you're Hellbeard, where have you been for the past 80 years? I uh, um, uh, Look! Over there! You again? Do 
Do you know anything else about the ultimate insult? It destroyed my ego. What more do I need to know? I guess you're right. Can I talk to the puppeteer again? Well, all right. Halbert? Please, stop bothering me. I'm harmless, really. Do you know anything about the ultimate insult? The, the, the ultimate insult? <laughs> ah! Arr, you again. Come on, let me talk to the puppeteer. Talk to the hand, you nosy scupper scraper. If you're Hellbeard, where have you been for the past 80 years? I, uh, um, uh, look, over there. You again. Can I talk to the puppeteer again? Uh, all right. Halbert, please, stop bothering me. I'm harmless, really. I think I'll leave you alone. Thank you, kind sir. Could you help me find this? <laughs> What's that? It's a picture of the ultimate insult. <laughs> the ultimate insult? <laughs> hey, you forgot your puppets! Gee, guess that was just the kind of breakthrough he needed to mend his shattered psyche. This little Guybrush puppet sure is cute. On the other hand, literally, this LeChuck puppet is downright creepy. I better put these away before Kasaba flings a cannonball at me. So that's when I sliced open his pancreas. Hi there. You idiot! What do you think you're doing? Uh, what's the matter? He'll see us, you ignoramus! I'm out of here! Fire! Uh, you may want to move a couple of feet to your left. Gee. Thanks. You're welcome. Now go away so I can resume my discussion with the delightful Miss Daisy. That cassava guy almost killed me. Again! Who are you, you annoying little miscreant? I'm Guybrush Threepwood, mighty pirate. And you are? Jumbo Lafitte, last of the Lafitte pirates. You're awfully large. Figured that one out all by yourself, did you? I'm looking for the pieces of the ultimate insult. What's that? It's an ancient voodoo talisman of button-numbingly incredible power. Ooh, sounds dreadful. Jumbo Lafitte. Any relation to Tiny Lafitte? Tiny Lafitte was my father. I'd like to talk some more about your father. <laughs> okay. Was he really called Tiny the Friendly Pirate? No! My daddy was everything a real pirate should be. Violent, vulgar, psychotic. Pirates lined up for miles to spit on his grave. <laughs> if Tiny was such a great pirate, then what's with the Tiny the Friendly Pirate statue? It's those soulless Cretans at Ozymandrel Enterprises. They're using my father's name and image as happy icons for their new family-friendly Jambalaya Island. Those jerks. What happened to Tiny's statue? I happened to it. Come again? To lend a touch of authenticity to their precious statue, Mandrill's flunkies bronzed my father's captain's hat and welded it to the statue. Enraged by this sacrilege, I gathered some pirates and raided Jambalaya Island. Before anyone knew what happened, I rescued my father's chapeau, returned to Nutton Atoll, and buried my treasure. Your father would have been proud of your piratey prowess. 
Oh, thanks. Unfortunately, my raid inspired Mandrill to hire Kasaba to patrol the waters of Nutton. Now, Nutton Atoll is nothing more than a prison for recalcitrant pirates who don't share Ozzy Mandrill's vision. One pirate to another. Where did you bury your father's bronze hat? I don't know. What? I know I buried it under a boulder along the beach. I just don't know which one. Ah. Uh... If I find your father's hat, can I borrow it? I don't know. Why do you want it? I'm going to use it to crush Ozymandra like a bug. Really? Oh, that's great! If you can find it, feel free to use it. Are you sure you weren't adopted? After all, you're so big and Tiny was so... Tiny. You should have seen my mother. She was a large woman, I take it? She had a picture of Monkey Island tattooed on her butt. So? Actual size. Ugh. This is obviously a painful subject. Let's talk about something else. Okay. Are you aware that you've got a pair of parrots on your shoulders? Really? I hadn't noticed. Was that sarcasm? You know, I can't really tell anymore. In any event, these are, in fact, my parrots. I call them hugging and kissing. You're joking. You're not joking. Which parrot's hugging and which one's kissing? I can't believe I just asked that. I don't know. They're identical twins. It's too bad, too. Why? Because they're special parrots. Special how? Do they fire pistols with their beaks? Of course not. But they are cursed with powerful voodoo magic. How so? One of them always tells the truth. The other one always lies. Isn't that right, fellas? Ah, yes. Ah, no. Oh. If I knew which one was which, they would be tremendously useful. As it is, they're rather annoying. Don't get up. I'll see myself out. Goodbye, little pirate. I don't think so. It looks really heavy. That cassava guy almost killed me. Again! Two plus two? Three! Ah. That must have been the lying parrot. What's my name? Ah! I brush three foot! Ah. That must have been the truth-telling parrot. Which way should I go to find Tiny's hat? Ah, east. That must have been the truth-telling parrot. Holy jumping monkeys, that's a lot of boulders. How am I ever gonna find the right one?
I don't think he'd like that. Are you the parrot that always tells the truth? Ah, yes. I don't think that told me anything. Pretty Polly. Ah, pretty Polly. Who's your daddy? Ah, jump on the feet. That must have been the truth-telling parrot. It's the boat I brought from Jambalaya Island. I'm back. So I see. What can I do for you, Mr. Thripwood? Now I'm ready to dive against you now. Then prepare to be humiliated, Mr. Thripwood. Marco Di Pollo is about to attempt a rum barrel, keel horn, spinning swordsman combination. Let's give him complete silence on his entire. The plank is yours, Thripwood. They look really hungry. No wonder. I don't think there's any fish up here. to see that good old-fashioned blackmail still works in some parts of this modern world. Eh, I guess the dunce cap worked. Oh, here's a big surprise. Marco de Pollo has won again. Madames and messieurs, brigands and wenches. Welcome to Planet Freepwood, the pirateiest place on Earth.
still offering that free refill? You betcha, sir. I'll take care of that for you. Can't get enough of my sweet coffee goodness, can you? Uh, just get me my Gragaccino, please. Alrighty, coming right up. Where do the real pirates go when they're looking for buccaneer-style family dining at a reasonable price? I'm back! So I see. What can I do for you, Mr. Thripwood? I'd like to dive against you again. Oh, come now. This is becoming pathetic. Marco, Pollo. <sighs> All right, let's get this over with. Marco de Pollo is about to attempt a keel haul, rum barrel, alpha monkey combination. Let's give him complete silence for this dive. You really should have stopped while you were behind, Mr. Thripwood. See that good old-fashioned blackmail still works in some parts of this modern world. Eh, I guess the dunce cap worked. Whoa, flashback, man! Marco de Pollo wins again! Excuse me. Oh, what is a little diver, dude? What was wrong with my last dive? Eh, you really didn't get into the flow of DePoyo's groove, man. Say what? Hey, you gotta match DePoyo's moves if you want to be the dude. But how? Well, basically, there are four types of moves allowed in plank diving, man. Well, first you got the keel haul, you know, a mellow, swan-like move that you can do by lifting your nose up in the air. Keel haul, up, got it. Next is the rum barrel, man, a somersault move that's easy to do by shoving your chin down into your chest. Rum barrel, down. Check. The third move is the spinning swordsman, man. That's a dangerous vertical spin that should only be started to the right. Spinning swordsman, right. Okay. Finally, there's the alpha monkey, a chest pounding maneuver that always starts with the left hand. Alpha monkey left. Good. Okay, bro. Pay attention to the moves that DePoyo makes, you know, and try and match them. For example, on his last dive, he did a keel haul, rum barrel, alpha monkey combination. So if you want to match him, you'd lean up, down, left. <laughs> you got it, man. See you later. You got it, dude. Woo! I'm back. So I see. What can I do for you, Mr. Thripwood? I'd like to dive against you again. Oh, come now. This is becoming pathetic. Marco, Pollo. <sighs> All right. Let's get this over with. Marco de Pollo is about to attempt a keel haul, alpha monkey, rum barrel combination. Let's give him complete silence for this dive. Ah! 
I do not envy you, Mr. Threepwood. to see that good old-fashioned blackmail still works in some parts of this modern world. Looking good. Whoa, dudes, this is unprecedented. The newcomer has tied Marco de Pollo. Well, what happens now? We move on to the tiebreaker round. Scissors, rock, paper? You wish. In this round of dives, you will go first, and de Pollo will try to match your dive. You have shown that you can mimic my moves, Mr. Threepoor, but I doubt that you can concoct a dive that I cannot perform. We'll just see about that dive, monkey. Very well. The plank is yours. to see that good old-fashioned blackmail still works in some parts of this modern world. Eh, I guess the dunce cap worked. Very good, Mr. Threepwood. Just give me a second to prepare for my dive. Ugh. Now, my friend, prepare to watch a master. In action. Now, Marco de Pollo will attempt to beat Guy Brush Threeport's dive. Let's give him complete silence for this dive. Shh. It was a cross one, but our winner is still. Marco Di Pollo! Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Good day, Mr. Threepwood. Bosun and Bosun's baby seal oil. I'm assuming that this oil is meant to be used on baby seals rather than... I told you not to touch that! Hey, look! Over there! I'm back. So I see. What can I do for you, Mr. Thripwood? I'd like to dive against you again. Haven't you had enough? I don't know the meaning of the word. <sighs> Very well. Marco de Pollo is about to attempt a keel hole, rum barrel, keel hole combination. Let's give him complete silence for this dive. Was wrong. I will enjoy defeating you again. Cool. Good. Looking good. Well done, young one. By tying the pollo, you've earned the right to face him in another tiebreaker round. 
I do not envy you the pummeling you are about to receive. Nevertheless, the plank is yours. to see that good old-fashioned blackmail still works in some parts of this modern world. Eh, I guess the dunce cap worked. Very good, Mr. Threepwood. Just give me a second to prepare for my dive. What Margo doesn't know is that we've replaced his regular baby seal oil with Star Buccaneer Schmearwiz. Let's watch. Now, my friend, prepare to watch a master in action. Now, Marco de Pollo will attempt to beat Guy Brush Threepwood's dive. Let's give him complete silence for this dive. What? Shoot! Go away! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the new all-world plank diving champion is, uh... Guybrush Threepwood! I protest! That was not a fair dive! I want a rematch right now! I am Marco de Pollo, the greatest plank diver in the world! Marco... Polo! Who said that? Marco... Polo! Stop it! I will not be mocked! Marco! Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Polo! <laughs> Gee, I wonder how Elaine's doing. Hey, thanks for coming out to vote. Remember, a vote for me is a vote against Demon Spawn Hell Pirates. Thanks for your support, citizen. Good times and free grog are just around the corner. Don't vote for Charles. He's really LeChuck, the demon zombie ghost pirate from hell. Oh, give it up, Mrs. Threepwood. Everybody knows that LeChuck is dead and that your husband killed him. You'll have to excuse her, Mr. Charles. Think nothing of it, my good man. Ah, there! There, you see? Charles is with Chuck! Look! Well, that should just about wrap things up. I think I'll go pack my bags and get ready to move into the governor's mansion. <laughs> It's a temporarily beautiful beach. It's the community robot I borrowed.
What are you? Parrot. That must have been the truth-telling parrot. Which way should I go to find Tiny's hat? Stop, 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 stop. I don't think he'd like that. Which way should I go to find Tiny's hat? East, 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 east. I don't think he'd like that. Which way should I go to find Tiny's hat? East, 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 east. Which way should I go to find Tiny's hat? East, 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 east. Which way should I go to find Tiny's hat? East, 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 east. Which way should I go to find Tiny's hat? East, 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 east. Which way should I go to find Tiny's hat? East, 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 east.
Which way should I go to find Tiny's hat? East, 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 east. Is Tiny Lafitte's hat buried under this rock? Rock. No! Hmm, I know that that parrot always tells the truth, so Tiny Lafitte's hat must not be here. Which way should I go to find Tiny's hat? Rock. East, 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 east. would help anything. Which way should I go to find Tiny's hat? East, 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 east. Which way should I go to find Tiny's hat? East, 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 east. Which way should I go to find Tiny's hat? East, 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 east. There's nothing in that direction but impenetrable jungle. Is Tiny Lafitte's hat buried under this rock? Uh, yes, sir, Bob. Hmm, I know that that parrot always tells the truth, so Tiny Lafitte's hat must be buried under this rock. I guess the parrot's lost interest. If my clever use of the parrots was correct, the bronze hat is under this immense rock. Hi there, little Guybrush. Hi there, big Guybrush. Hi there, little Lechuck. Arr, ahoy there, big Guybrush. What's on your mind, little Guybrush? I think Admiral Kassaba's a big dope, don't you? Oh, I don't know, little Guybrush. What do you think, little Lechuck? 
I think little Guybrush wouldn't know a real pirate if it stabbed him in the liver. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Now, boys. A moral lout. Defeat doily sniffer. Unemployed layabout. Guys. Pirate poser. Uncultured corpse. Girly man. Uh, I really think that's loud enough to catch Kasaba's attention. Jerk. Idiot. Nimrod. Dark. Uh, I've obviously got some deep-seated issues to work out here. Moron. Spaz. Jerk. Idiot. Nimrod. Dark. Why, those, those ignorant anarchist savages! How dare they plot against my benevolent tyranny! Simkins, wheel out the relly big cannon! Do we have to, sir? Our ears are still ringing from the last time. I've had just about enough of your pusillanimous insubordination, Simkins. Now roll out the relly big cannon and blow up those terrorists this instant! Aye, aye, sir. Fire! Wow, here it is. The bronze hat of Tiny Lafitte. Mr. Cheese. Aye, Captain. Raise the anchor, hoist the sails, and ready the warp drive. Aye, Captain. Otis. What? Go find Carla and sober her up. Oh, yeah, that'll be easy. Now that the pieces of the ultimate insult are mine, it's back to Melee Island. Buddy, I'm home. <laughs> <laughs> LeChuck! That's Governor LeChuck to you, Steve Good. No way! Yes, why? Ozzy, I had a feeling you were working for LeChuck. I'm afraid you got it backwards, pirate boy. LeChuck's working for me. Well, that makes me feel better. Governor LeChuck, would you be kind enough to relieve Mr. Threepwood of the pieces to the ultimate insult? Ah, it'd be a pleasure, Mr. Mandrill. Don't do it, LeChuck. He wants to use the ultimate insult to humiliate every pirate on the face of the Earth. And? <laughs> you know? Oh, of course he knows, you sloth-brained pile of kookaburra droppings. B why, LeChuck? Why would a swashbuckling, albeit demonically evil, pirate like yourself willingly aid in the mass emasculation of your fellow buccaneers? Well, that's a long story, sheep good. Oh, no. But it basically boils down to two reasons. First of all, this mandrill scallywag pulled me out from under that mountain of ice that you left me under, and LeChuck always repays his debts. Fine, you owe the guy, but why go along with this plan to irreversibly insult all the pirates? Because, you seafaring scumweasel, when we succeed in breaking the fighting spirit of all the pirates, LeChuck will finally have the one thing he's always wanted in life. Or death, as the case may be. You don't mean... Yes, Elaine Marley's hand in marriage. Um, excuse me, see the ring on this finger? You're a little late, bucko. Well, I think I can fix that. LeChuck, no! We may need him as a hostage. Uh, yeah, <laughs> a hostage. Besides, even if you kill me, Elaine still never marry you. She hates your stinking undead guts. Ah, but that's the beauty of the ultimate insult, Threepwood. Once your wife has been exposed to its hideous, demoralizing power, her fiery pirate spirit will be shattered like so many emu eggs, leaving her compliant, submissive, and obedient. <laughs> In other words, the perfect wife. <laughs> Speaking of perfect wives, where is Elaine? We were hoping you could answer that question, Mr. Threepwood. Your mischievous Sheila went walkabout right after Captain LeChuck was elected governor of this pirate-infested backwater of an island. Good for her. I hope she comes back with an army of pirates and kicks your sorry butts. Are you sure I can't kill him yet? I've left him alive before, and it's always turned out to be a big mistake. I see your point. How about we stow the twerp in an inescapable faraway place where he can't do any harm? Then he'll still be a useful hostage, but he won't be able to affect our plans. Ha-ha! <laughs> That's a hellishly good idea! And I know just the place! <laughs> <laughs> Where am I? 
This island smells kind of familiar. Ugh. Only one island smells as bad as... Oh no! Those two maladjusted greed monsters left me marooned on Monkey Island! Well, that's it. I give up. I'll never overcome these incessant obstacles. It's like my whole life is a never-ending series of... of puzzles. Oh, hey, Timmy. <laughs> Don't try to cheer me up. Just give up. I know I am. No. Well, all right. I'll do it for the kids. First order of business, get off this stupid island. Second order of business, stop Ozzy and LeChuck from using the ultimate insult on Elaine and assorted others. Third order of business, buy some new shoes. <laughs> How'd he get here anyway? Hey, it's Timmy the monkey. How are you, boy? How'd he get here anyway? It looks like that's the only bunch of bananas in the area that these ravenous monkeys haven't gotten their opposable thumbs on yet. This poor starfish died on the dry, sandy shore of Monkey Island. Hope I don't share his fate. It's not wise to disturb the dead. Ever-increasing monkey population. Stop overpopulating the island. There are only so many bananas. Sign, HT. To all the Chuck fearing citizens of Monkey Island, you are cordially invited to play bingo at the church every Tuesday at midnight. Non members welcome. Signed, Father Rasputin, C O L, Orthodox. I wonder if that would be Tuesday morning or Tuesday night. How oh, quaint. Is it just me, or do these things look like they'd make good bowling balls? What fun is it to juggle just one thing? Ah, yes. The magic of a warm campfire. It's probably more charming at night. Herman! Where? Here! You're Herman Toothrot, the Hermit of Monkey Island! I am? Who are you? I'm Guybrush Threepwood, your best friend in the whole world. If you're my best friend, where were you when I lost my memory? Um... Your memory seems to be slipping. Is it? I can't remember. What's the earliest thing you remember? This isn't some sort of regression therapy, is it? Uh, I don't think so. Because I don't want to wake up thinking that I've been kidnapped by aliens or something. Just try to remember as far back as you can. Let's see, uh... uh Ow! What? I remember waking up next to my hammock with a bump on my noggin. When? Oh, a couple hours ago. You can't remember back more than a couple of hours? I guess not. Is that a bad thing? I can't remember. What do you remember? Mostly a lot of staggering around. Then a weird kid named Sheepgood showed up and told me my name was Herman. <laughs> well, it's nice to see that whatever scrambled your brain hasn't affected your sense of humor at all. Think hard. Do you remember anything else? I remember being asked a bunch of nosy questions, fancy boy. So your memory still doesn't reach back more than a couple of hours? Not since I woke up next to my hammock, nope. I think I'll plumb the murky depths of your memory later. Whatever! <laughs> How are things on Monkey Island? This is an island? I need some help. Get him. I'm the one with no memory and he wants my help. <laughs> Do you remember where you parked your ship? I really, really need to get back to Melee Island. I have a ship? I thought I was a hermit. Well, yeah, but... Do I have a cell phone, too? But... A hermit with a ship. Shit!
You probably don't know how to counteract an ultimate insult, do you? What's that? It's a big evil voodoo thingamajig. Voodoo? What's that? <laughs> this isn't helping. Let's talk about something else. Try and make it something recent, pants boy. <laughs> See you later, Herman. Who? Oh? Herman? Where? Ow! What the heck you trying to... Hey! I'm Herman Toothrot! Herman, you got your memory back! Some of it. I still don't remember you. This is gonna be harder than I thought. How are things on Monkey Island? Things? What things? Where are all the monkeys? I think they spend most of their time on the other side of the lava field, dirty little buggers. What have you been doing with yourself? Wouldn't you like to know? Yes, yes I would. Oh, well, when the volcano erupted, it ripped open the island's southern canyon. Guess what I found down there? The real secret to Monkey Island? Gold! Buckets of the stuff! I've been mining ever since! I even had my banana picker dipped in gold. Why does a hermit need gold? Insurance, bucko! The high-flying life of a hermit's fine and dandy now, but I may want to retire someday. <laughs> How's the mining going? I've had to stop. Why? I kept hitting a big metal wall. There's a big metal wall under Monkey Island? Yep. Who knew? About this impenetrable barrier under Monkey Island? Don't remind me, Squinky. All that gold, and I can't get to it. <laughs> Let's not talk about Monkey Island right now. Okie dokie. How's your memory? I don't know. Ask me something. What do you remember? Well... I remember building this campground and trying to keep the monkeys from stealing my bananas. Then some bozo whacked me with a coconut. <laughs> Do you remember anything else? I remember being annoyed by some fancy pants pirate. What's the earliest thing you remember? Hmm, let me think. I remember waking up in the middle of a clearing next to a milk bottle. A milk bottle? Yep. Probably had something to do with all the explosions going on at the amusement park. Explosions? Yep. Some sort of demon zombie ghost pirate blew up the place real good, then sailed off on his ghost ship. All the explosions activated the island's dormant volcano. When did all this happen? A few months ago. So you can only remember the last few months? That's right. I can't remember a thing before I woke up next to that milk bottle. I think I'll plumb the murky depths of your memory later. Whatever. <laughs> See you later, Herman. See you, stranger. They're just hanging out. I'm not picking that up. Wonder where this gigantic wheel came from. Wonder where this gigantic wheel came from. It's a gold-plated banana picker. Hey, 
The handle of this is shaped like a little man. Funny that I didn't notice that last time I had this thing. HT, regarding mining operations. Stop them, at once. Your mining is causing sinkholes in our sacred island. Signed, JJJ. Looks like the result of an exciting ride. Stealing my gold, Shuddy? Herman? That's me! Well, see you around, miner boy. There sure are a lot of roots growing through this ceiling. Without those roots, there'd be only sky left. It's broken. It's the lever that controls the track switch. I'm not picking that up. It's probably stuck. It's a pouch. Hmm, what could be behind this wall of boards? It looks pretty useless. I wonder if this barrel would explode if I shot it. There sure are a lot of roots growing through this ceiling. Without those roots, there'd be only sky left. There sure are a lot of roots growing through this ceiling. Without those roots, there'd be only sky left. It's dark in there, but I can see the latch for the door. It's a big metal door. It's a closed vent of some sort. It's dark in there, but I can see the latch for the door. There sure are a lot of roots growing through this ceiling. Without those roots, there'd be only sky left. It can't be safe to store cloth sacks of gunpowder so close to open flames. Those look too heavy to be carrying around. There's a hole in this bucket. No, it's got a hole in it. I wonder how these rocks managed to get stacked this way. There's an unusual canal cut into the side of the cliff here. There's an unusual canal cut into the side of the cliff here. Normally a pile of rocks wouldn't be that interesting, but these. Normally a pile of rocks wouldn't be that it.
guess there aren't any more boulders on that ramp. Hey, what are you doing with that? It's hot molten lava streaming all over this area. It's a little metal milk bottle. Shields. They must have been used in really tiny battles. That must be the most unholiest of Bibles. I'm not picking that up. Well, at least their heating bill must be pretty low. Greetings, my child. Welcome to the first church of Lechok, Orthodox. I am Father Allegro Rasputin. How may I help you? The first church of Lechok? You're kidding, right? Not at all. This temple is dedicated to worshipping the awe-inspiring perfection that is Lechok. Could you build a religion around the Chuck? He's an unholy demon pirate from heck. I kindly suggest that you mind your tongue, heretic. Such blasphemies will not be tolerated in the house of the Chuck. Well, how does the Church of the Chuck compare to other major religions? They're remarkably alike. Only ours is a lot more screaming flames and pointy snakes. That's kind of what I imagined. Don't look now, but there's a river of lava flowing through the middle of your church. Yes, I know. We use it for church ceremonies. Baptisms? Weddings. Well, I guess that's one way to cure cold feet. How does this stream of lava fit into the church's wedding ceremonies? Good question, Tovarish. Here at the Church of the Chuck, we see marriage as a plunge into the unknown. As a symbol of that plunge, we send our newlyweds on a harrowing ride down a river of molten lava. Doesn't that kill them? Only if the restless spirit of the Chuck doesn't approve of you. Besides, our honeymoon boats are lined with stantic voodoo enhanced asbestos. To keep fatalities to an acceptable minimum. Are you some sort of hologram or something? Of course not. I'm a ghost. And you're a priest. Da. So you're sort of a holy ghost then. <laughs> Very clever, my child. But let's not go looking for trouble. Eh? How did ghosts like you end up running the first church of Lechuk? That's an interesting story, Tovarish. Why do I keep asking people their life stories? Many years ago, I was the captain of a stately ship called the Weeping Iguana. It was a good life, 
hauling contraband plush toys from one island to another. And then you met LeChuck? And then I met LeChuck. His crew of crazed ghost pirates made quick work of my fine ship and their equally fine crew. Ugh, I hate when that happens. LeChuck himself gutted me with his flaming ghost sword and held my still-beating pancreas in front of my face before I die. Ugh, icky. Then I woke up. I was another member of his obedient ghost crew. Well, how'd you go from being a ghost pirate to a ghost priest? It was a gradual process. At first, I resented the job for turning me into a ghost. But the more I thought about it, the more I came to revere him as a god. After all, he did bring me back from the dead, which is a pretty neat treasure. So I decided to build this church in his honor. Well, how do you like being a ghost priest? The hours are good. I occasionally miss the high seas. I could use some advice, Padre. What's troubling you, my son? I need to find a way to get off this for Schluggener Island. There is no escape from Monkey Island. That's not true. I've escaped it on at least two occasions. Well, then why don't you just escape it again, Mr. Smutty Pants? I, um, can't. Ha! I'm looking for an antidote to the ultimate insult. I've never heard of that, but this is... It's a voodoo talisman that shatters the souls of pirates. Hmm. During my travels with Lechuk, I noticed that the easiest way to defeat a voodoo curse was by employing a bigger voodoo curse. But perhaps I'm oversimplifying your plight. Well, that's okay. My plight could use some simplifying. I've got a couple of evil schnooks on my back. You must do as LeChuck does when beset by many enemies at once, my son. Run like a cowardly dog? No, you must turn your enemies' energies against themselves. How? How should I know? I'm just a ghost. On second thought, getting advice from an obsessed ghost priest seems like a bad idea. As you wish. I'd like to try your lava plunge. Wonderful. That is your promise. Um, I'm already married, and my wife is several islands away being harassed by bad guys. Well then, you can't take the plunge. Oh, come on. Let me ride a boat down a river of molten lava. What am I saying? Well, I suppose we could use another test run before let Chuck and Elaine's impending nuptials. What? Hop on board. It's pink. If they both get stuck, just give it a good kick. I have a very bad feeling about this. hot in some places, kind of bumpy in others, and impossible to control. In other words, a perfect metaphor for marriage. Yeah. Those look pretty uncomfortable. You must be this tall to ride this ride. It's a stained glass window with a picture of LeChuck in his zombie pirate form. It's a stained glass window with a picture of LeChuck in his flaming demon ghost form. Ah, the lovely Mrs. Threepwood.
that one. That one. Ah, the sea. Giver of life, destroyer of ships. Wow, I'm glad I didn't accidentally squish Timmy. Here, have a banana. It's Timmy the monkey. How are you, boy? How do you get here anyway? Have a banana. Here, have a banana. I'm not picking that up. Here, monkey, monkey, monkey. That worked like a charm. Here, have a banana. Sir Francis Drake does all this machinery do. I wonder what this gauge is for. These controls seem too small for a human. I wonder what they're for. It's a ladder. I'm not picking that up. Why? The hatch is closed. seems to have fallen into the machinery. What in the Sir Francis Drake does all this machinery do? Hmm. 
Got it. Wow, I actually get to use this banana picker more than once. I wonder what this valve controls. Curious as I am, I think I'll leave it alone for safety's sake. I could be scalded by steam or something. a pile of rocks wouldn't be that interesting, but these... Normally a pile of rocks wouldn't be that... It's hot molten lava streaming all over this area. Look pretty uncomfortable. Um, Your Holiness? Yes, my child. What was that you said about LeChuck and Elaine getting married? Oh, yes. The prophesied wedding of noble LeChuck and the chaste Elaine. 
chased. All the signs point towards the prophecy being fulfilled any day now. I've been working my ghost fingers to the bone, trying to get the church ready for their wedding ceremony. Elaine can't marry LeChuck, she's already married. The first church of LeChuck, Orthodox, doesn't recognize Elaine's blasphemous marriage to the anti-LeChuck. Who? The evil anti-LeChuck. He whose name must not be spoken. Guybrush Threepwood? That's the second name! Blasphemer! I'm the anti-Lechuck? <laughs> Don't be silly. The anti-Lechuck is three meters tall, has a prehensile tail, a forked tongue, and the number 1138 stamped on his forehead. But his name is Guybrush Threepwood, right? Stop saying that name! I'd like to take another test ride on your matrimonial lava plunge. This is highly unorthodox, but what the heck? That's the spirit. If the boat gets stuck, just give it a good kick. Ooh, my sweat's vaporizing as the temperature's rising and I can't feel my legs below my knees anymore. Please, step up to the boat to your right, and enjoy your visit to the First Church of LeChuck, Orthodox. Um, Your Holiness? Yes, my child. I'd like to take another test ride on your matrimonial lava plunge. This is highly unorthodox, but what the heck? That's the spirit! I hope this isn't the boat with the leak. <laughs> I don't think Elaine and I will be renewing our vows this way. This banana picker is really starting to come in handy. There's a pool of lava here, with some amazingly heat-resistant weed sticking out. The lava goes, back to the earth from whence it came. All the lava is seeping into the ground now that all the heat-resistant weeds have been whipped. All the lava is seeping into the ground now that all the heat-resistant weeds have been whipped. You know, this tree doesn't look very stable. It looks lonely, too. Maybe I should- I'm not picking that up. You know, this tree doesn't look very stable. 
Looks lonely, too. Maybe I should just put it out of its misery. Wow! That tree just fell right over! Going into any cave that's hot and smells like burning rotten eggs. Herman? That's me! See you later, Herman. See you, stranger! Herman? Where? Ow! Are you trying to kill me, you ration freshin' guy brush? Herman, you remember me? Of course! You're the kid who found my banana picker! How are things on Monkey Island? I need some help. Don't you always? <laughs> Do you know how to fight an ultimate insult? That sounds familiar. What is it? It's a voodoo talisman with the power to crush men's souls. Ultimate insult. Ultimate insult. Nope, never heard of it. Do you know any secret hermit tricks to defeat LeChuck and Ozzy Mandrill? Why is that name so familiar? LeChuck? No, Twerpo! The other one! Ozzy Mandrill? You know Ozzy Mandrill? I don't know. I think, maybe. Nope, I guess I don't. Do you remember where you parked your ship? I really, really need to get back to Melee Island. Of course I do. Great. It's at the bottom of the ocean. What? A few months ago, I got to thinking that a hermit with a ship is like a unicycle with training wheels. It just doesn't make much sense. So, in the spirit of genuine hermitity, I sank it. That's just great. Now I'll have to find some other way off this heck hole of a lush tropical island paradise. You wouldn't happen to know any other ways off Monkey Island, would you? Don't know, and I don't care. I'm a full-time hermit now. <laughs> Oy. Are you sure you can't help me beat Ozzy and LeChuck? Well, LeChuck you can beat by taking advantage of the fact that he's a big dope. <laughs> As for Ozzy... Ozzy... Nope, can't help you. On second thought, maybe I'll ask for your help later. Suits me! You've gotten all your memory back? I think so. Quiz me, hotshot. Do you remember the cannibals? Those jerks! They used to keep stealing my banana picker. Boy, was I happy when they moved away. Do you remember LeChuck's amusement park? Yep. Kinda silly if you ask me. Sticking an amusement park on a nigh unreachable, mystically obscured island. I kinda wondered about that myself. Well, that's LeChuck for you. A nasty piece of work but not too bright. Do you remember Dinky Island? I wish I could forget. I'm still not sure how I ended up there. LeChuck told me there was a tunnel between Dinky and Monkey Island. Really? Well, don't that beat all. Do you remember the caverns to heck under the giant monkey head? Oh yeah, the caverns of meat. <laughs> Those caves mysteriously sealed up after you left. It's a good thing too. We were losing a lot of monkeys down there. Do you remember anything else? I remember lots of stuff. I especially remember a snot-nosed kid who wouldn't let a hermit have a little peace and quiet. What's the earliest thing you remember? That's a long time ago, Skippy. Try. Hmm. I remember. It's 20 years ago. 
I'm washing ashore on Monkey Island. My head hurts. There's an accordion next to me on the beach. An accordion? Yep. I tried to play the thing for a few years, but I wasn't any good. So I threw it into a field of weeds. So you really don't remember anything about your life before you washed up on Monkey Island? Nope. Let's pour over your mental state later. Whatever. <laughs> See you later, Herman. Who? Oh. Herman? Streetwood? See you later, Herman. Who? Oh. All the lava is seeping into the ground now that all the heat-resistant weeds have been whipped. I hope that bridge has a high melting point. <laughs> Frightening. A monkey head on a stick. I can't imagine this thing smells good when it's open. I can't believe I'm looking up the nose of a giant monkey. It looks like there's some sort of latch in there. That's the second biggest monkey head I've ever seen. Oh, when monkey eyes are smiling and... Uh, uh, no, wait, that's not right. It seems to have failed due to a stress fracture and too much torsional pressure. I can't imagine why I'd need such a thing. Again. Here lies Jojo Sr., loyal to the end. I guess there's more than one way to skin a monkey. I sure am glad I've got this banana picker. Hey, there's a hidden passage back here. Hey, this place looks like some sort of control room. I can hear some bubbling noises coming from in there. I hope the monkey head isn't getting gas. There appear to be a bunch of valves and pressure lines running into this control panel. Looks like an interior designer must have been trapped on the island at one time. They look like controls of some sort. I can't imagine that this actually steers anything. It looks like something important is supposed to go in there. They look like controls of some sort. Nothing happened. Let's see, temperature, pressure, monkeys. The temperature and pressure seem to be rising. Lots of random unlabeled buttons. Somebody needs to learn some user interface design theory. They look like controls of some sort. Joe Jr. Monkey Prince. 
I still can't believe you're a talking monkey. The question is not why a talking monkey, but rather, why not a talking monkey? Okay, so why not a talking monkey? Precisely, why not? How did this come to pass, O oh Great One? On a warm, sunny day. Uh, much like this one. Short version, please. I, I was in the clearing next to the giant monkey head, burying my dearly departed father. Your father? You mean... Jojo Sr. Apparently, someone had trained the poor, loyal fool to grab the switch that controlled the gate to the giant monkey head. Why does that sound familiar? But that same stupid someone forgot to train my father to let go of the switch. Oh, no. Eventually, my father starved to death, swinging on a switch, waiting for a simple command that never came. Gee, that's, um, horrible. Yes, well, I was just completing the grim task, and I heard a low humming coming from the giant monkey head. Well, being a curious monkey by nature, I cautiously approached the humming head and reached out my hand towards its massive mouth. As I touched it, a tremendous bolt shot through my body, knocking me unconscious. But when I came to, I discovered that I had an enormous understanding of the world around me. You mean you could talk? Oh, that too. Do any other monkeys talk? Of course they do. Oh. <laughs> you mean, do they talk in your language? No, I am the only one. As interesting as this may be to you, I feel we might be straying from what is important. There are buttons and levers and stuff in the giant monkey head. Very interesting. I think I need some monkeys. Yes? The gauges inside the giant monkey head are telling me that I'm low on monkeys. The monkeys choose their own path. I have no control over them. Rats. Although, they do show great respect for the wearer of the Hat of Honor. I want off this crazy island. The want of things is the core of the human experience. That's very profound, but I have no idea what you just said. It's good to want things. I want off this crazy island. Can you help me or not? I don't have a ship, if that's what you are asking. Great. How am I supposed to get back to Melee without a ship? Everyone who leaves Monkey Island finds their own path. I foresee a unique path for you, of an epic nature. Or perhaps I'm hungry again. Any less nebulous clues about how to get off of Monkey Island? I foresee a unique path for you, of an epic nature. No details? No, no details. Since when are there so many monkeys on Monkey Island? Since the Great Summoning. Great Summoning? What are you talking about? Shut your yap, impatient one, and I shall tell you. The Brotherhood of Primates has a unique bond with the whole world that surrounds us. Could you, uh, cut to the chase? I got an important meeting to get to. No one has any respect for history. A anyway, my monkey brethren have felt a need, a, a calling, to amass here. There is a feeling that something wonderful will happen soon. Something big. Something big? That is all we know. And even that is nothing more than a hunch. But it is the only explanation for this impromptu monkey reunion. But how did they know to come here? How did you know to come here? I didn't. I had no choice. And so it is for my monkey brethren. Ozzy Mandrill and LeChuck brought them all here? No. They came of their own accord, but they don't know why. I was only trying to illustrate their lack of power to fight it, much like you. Uh, oh, forget it. How did all these monkeys get here? Various ways. Each monkey has found their own path. Are any of those paths reversible? I'd sure like to get off this island. Your path is yours to find. Gee, thanks. I have no more insight for you. Perhaps you seek knowledge in other areas. Hey, neat hat. Thank you. It is a hat of honor. What do you mean, hat of honor? To earn the right to wear this hat, 
one must become the best at an ancient and noble sport, a contest with great and long-standing tradition among the monkey folk, the sport of monkey combat. What exactly is monkey combat? It was once used to train young monkey warriors in the way of combat. In these modern times, it has become a game, albeit a game of supreme honor. Very little has changed over the years. Much of the ceremony has been dropped, but the flinging of insults and witty monkey repartee has remained. Well, how does it work? Pay attention. I don't want to have to say this again. There are five battle stances in monkey combat. The bobbing baboon, the gimpy gibbon, the anxious ape, and the drunken monkey. Each of these stances is dominant over two other stances. For example, the bobbing baboon always defeats the gimpy gibbon. So all I have to do is learn which stances beat the others, right? Yes, but there's more to it than that. I was afraid you'd say that. In order to move from one battle stance to another, you must invoke certain secret monkey insults. These insults are built from combinations of the four most ancient words in the monkey language. Eek, ak, oop, and chi. For example, if I wanted to move from the drunken monkey stance to the anxious ape, I would use the following insult. Ooh, ah, eek. I can also use the same insult to move from the anxious ape stance back to the drunken monkey. Any questions? Could you show me that drunken monkey to anxious ape move again? Certainly. Don't forget that the same insult works for the return move as well. Could you teach me some of the other monkey combat insults? I'm afraid not. Each monkey combatant must earn the knowledge of the sacred monkey insults through actual monkey combat. But you already told me one of the insults. Yes, well, the first one's free. Are there any secret tips to mastering monkey combat? There is no way to master monkey combat without experiencing monkey combat. Rats. However, when I was a younger monkey, I found that employing the monkey see, monkey do strategy allowed me to quickly master several simple moves. It also irritated my opponents. Are there any other monkey combat tips you wish to impart, my wise little monkey friend? Only that you may hold your current position by repeating any of the primal words three times in a row. How do I employ this monkey see, monkey do strategy? Simply copy your opponent's insults. You'll lose many battles, but you'll learn many moves. This is giving me a headache. Then we shall take a break. I really should be going. I wish you luck and health on your journey. Unfortunately, I am on duty and could not possibly take the time to enjoy a banana. But thank you for the kind offer. That wouldn't go well with bananas. Leftover cannibal art. It says HT on it. Hi there. Strange. This monkey seems more interested in his musical instrument than in bananas. I guess he's really intent on starting that monkey band. It's 
It's the ladder to that hut. I'm not picking that up. Mm, that didn't get me anywhere. Inhabitants realize this hut was once owned by a human cannibal. Actually, I guess the monkeys don't really care. There doesn't seem to be anything interesting back there. I see you are trained in the arts of monkey combat. Let's rumble. Ah, 
Ow. I don't think I have the hang of this yet. I see you are trained in the arts of monkey combat. Let's rumble. Ow. One. Ah, ee, ee. So, I see you are trained in the arts of monkey combat. Let's see what you got.
I won! So, I see you are trained in the arts of monkey combat. Let's see what you got. Getting pretty good. Hello again, Monkey Prince. Greetings, unenlightened one. I challenge you to monkey combat. I can see that you've been training, Threepwood, but you're still not ready. I really should be going. I wish you luck and health on your journey. Yep. So, I see you are trained in the arts of monkey combat. Let's see what you got. Oh! 
Ching, ching, ching. I think I might be ready to take on Jojo Jr. Hello again, Monkey Prince. Greetings, unenlightened one. I challenge you to monkey combat. I can see you've been training. Perhaps you are ready to fulfill the prophecies. Eh, prophecies, schmophecies. Are we gonna fight or what? Very well. Monkey combat! On guard, monkey. You are indeed ready to fight me. Ooh, ah, eek! Ow.
Peek. Oop. Ack. I cannot believe it. I had foreseen losing my crown eventually, but not to such an unlikely opponent. The honor of victory is yours, Guybrush, as well as the ceremonial bronze hat. Please take good care of it. It is very special. Herman? Where? Ow! Ouch! Uh, what in the name of hey? I just remembered where I left my pants! That's, um, great, I guess. Uh, what about Ozymandrel? Ozymandrel? Never heard of him. <gasps> Wait! Now I remember! Oh no! By Triton's panty line, this is horrible! Herman? Oh? Oh yeah, that's me. Herman. <laughs> Listen, Junior, you better take a seat because I got some whale staggering news to lay on you. I didn't know whales could stagger, but go ahead. Okay, first of all, my real name isn't Herman Toothrot. Really? What is it? I'll get to that. First, let me tell you how I ended up here on Monkey Island. With nothing but a busted accordion, most of the clothes on my back, and a head full of broken memories. Is this going to take a while? I'm in kind of a hurry. Stow it, Blondie. This is important. Like so many stories, it began some 20 years ago in a bar on the other side of the world. I had been lured out of my peaceful retirement in the Caribbean by the thrill of a dangerous sailing regatta off the coast of Australia. Australia? Wait a minute. It... Hush up, kid. I'm telling a story here. Sorry. Anyhow, the night before the competition, I was stealing myself for the race with several pitchers of grog when I was joined at the bar by one of the other competitors, an unhappy Australian tycoon with the unlikely name of Ozzy Mandro. No. Yes. The poor guy seemed so sad just because no one would do business with him anymore. Well, to cheer him up, I regaled him with stories of my adventures on the untamed Caribbean seas. So you were the one who told Ozzy about the lucrative development opportunities of the Caribbean. Yes, but that's not all. The next day, as I reached the race's halfway point, I'd already forgotten the grog-induced revelries of the night before. Suddenly, I found myself being rammed by another boat, pushed into a freakish whirlpool. It was none other than Ozzy. I hate it when that happens. It gets worse. Yipes. I hadn't just told Ozzy about the wonders of the Caribbean. I'd also told him about all of its terrible voodoo secrets. Secrets that men would kill to possess. I told him about the gate to heck known as Big Whoop. I told him about the unbelievable lineage of the three-headed monkey. Worst of all, I told him about the ultimate insult, the voodoo talisman that could make mice out of men. Remind me to never tell you a secret. Strangely, the whirlpool didn't kill me. Instead, it dropped me and my shattered ship on the other side of the world. By the time I had righted myself, I had no idea who I was or where I came from. I took the name Herman Toothrot after the remaining letters on my accordion, H.T. H.T.? Wait a minute, you're not telling me that you're really... 
That's right. My real name is Horatio Torquemada Marley. But you can't be Governor Marley. I mean, everyone knows that H.T. Marley died over 20 years ago, off the coast of Australia, in a boat race. Grandpa! Get your thinking hands off of me, you blamed octopus! But, sir, we're family. See? I married your granddaughter, Elaine. Oh, that's just wonderful. I finally rid myself of 20 years of amnesia, and the first thing I learned is that my granddaughter has married the sorriest excuse for a pirate in the seven seas. Somebody get me a coconut so I can go back to being blissfully ignorant. <laughs> This is a prime sitting log. Grandpa? Quit calling me that! That's no way to talk, sir. We're gonna have to work together to defeat Ozzy and LeChuck. LeChuck's involved, too? Actually, he's the new governor of Melee Island. Get jokes! Where's my granddaughter? She disappeared right after the election. Phew, that's a relief. Why? Because of the one secret I didn't reveal to Ozzy before he tried to kill me. The real secret of Monkey Island? Ah, of course not. I'm talking about the secret of the fourth piece of the ultimate insult. The one that had to do with the governorship of Melee Island? I was wondering about that. What is it? It's... This! That looks like the Melee Island gubernatorial seal. It is the official gubernatorial seal of Melee Island. One of them, anyway. A good governor always keeps a spare around, in case the original gets lost. The seal is the key to unlocking the dread power of the ultimate insult. Without it, it's just a funky-looking maraca. Now, Guybrush, this is very important. Where is the other gubernatorial seal? I guess it's with Elaine. She rarely lets it out of her sight. Oh, that's good. As long as Ozzy and LeChuck don't find her, they'll never be able to make the ultimate insult work. Ah, good times, free grog, my pockmarked fanny. You should all be ashamed of yourselves. Don't be looking at me, you mangy mongrel. I voted for Elaine, I did. Well, I certainly didn't vote for that bilge rat, LeChuck. Well, if none of us voted for him, then why is he the governor? And why are we being forced to build this colossal commemorative statue of him in the center of town? Ah, uh, shut up! This is horrible. LeChuck has enslaved my people. It's a good thing my grandfather isn't alive to see this. Why is he making them build that statue? What does that have to do with the ultimate insult? What's happened to Guybrush? What's that smell? Oh, ex-Governor Marley. You're a hard woman to find, you know that? Obviously, not hard enough. You must be Pegnose Pete. Aye. The Governor and Mr. Mandrill have a few questions they'd like to ask you. Gee, you know, I'd like to. But I have to wash my hair for the next seven years. I really must insist. Drat. Like I said, as long as Ozzy and LeChuck don't find Elaine, the ultimate insult can never be completed. Maybe we should come up with a backup plan.
Now, if I can somehow manage to stick this huge head onto a golden man, I'll have a giant ultimate insult. That's where the control room is. I wonder what all this stuff does. It looks like something important is supposed to go in there. I'll just put the gubernatorial symbol here. Hey, it fits! I better get out of here before someone finds out what I did. Relax there, son. We're going for a little ride. Sure. Pull that lever there, would you? Ride? Uh, what do you mean by that? We're taking this giant monkey robot to Melee Island to rescue my granddaughter. Giant monkey robot? Hmm. Are you sure you have all of your memory back? Maybe I should hit you again. What in the name of Poseidon's pig sticker is that? Unless I miss my guess, that's an ultimate insult amplification tower. You just made that up, didn't you? An amplifier, of course. Guybrush, this tower is part of Ozzy's fiendish plot. Oh, I see. He plans to build really ugly towers all over the Caribbean, driving down property values to the point where he can scoop up all the land for a fraction of its real value. How ingenious. What the flimdy flam are you talking about? Ozzy's gonna use that tower to amplify the effects of an ultimate insult a million fold, so he can simultaneously expose every pirate in the Tri Island area to the devastating effects of the ultimate insult. Are you sure it's not the property values thing? If you wish to fulfill your destiny and save your pirate friends, you must climb this tower and destroy its devilish machinery. Somehow I knew you were gonna say that. Now that's a tower. That's the second largest... No. No, that is the largest conch shell I've ever seen. For a medium-sized tower, it's pretty huge. That's the shortest of the very, very, very tall towers.
Where did they find a tree big enough to make a plank this big? That's the second largest... No. No, that is the largest conch shell I've ever seen! Are you trying to get us killed? There's a very large switch sticking out of this shell. I'm not picking that up. What's wrong, you reanimated lump of voodoo flotsam? I'll tell you what's wrong. This so-called ultimate insult doesn't work. I tried locking it against every piece of junk in this accursed hovel, but nothing happens. Ha. Well, I guess Grandpa was too smart for you diabolical dodos after all. Quiet, you. Grrr. What in the name of Adam Smith's invisible hand is that? That? Oh, that's nothing. Just a piece of junk I bought on my honeymoon. Darn! The gubernatorial seal of Melee Island. Of course! Let me see that. Well, that seems to have shaved the proverbial dingo. Let's test this bugger out. Ah, pig nose. What? Would you be so good as to stand over there? Look, Mr. High and Mighty Mandrel, I'm getting awfully tired of following orders. I think it's about time we renegotiated the terms of my employment. Or oh, what? Or I'll fill your belly full of lead, you scissified fossil! No one messes with Pink Nose the Pirate and lives to tell the tale! Why, I'll rip off your arms and I'll beat you! You were saying? Please, please don't hurt me, Mr. Mandrel. I'll do whatever you say from now on, I promise. Take a long walk off a short pier, you craven wretch. <laughs> what, oh, sir? Well, Mrs. Threepwood, it seems as though the power of the ultimate insult is finally mine. <laughs> oh, let me use it on Elaine. All in due time, Captain. But first, let's give her a taste of things to come. Ah, you're a sadist after my own blackened lump of a heart, Mandrill. For years, the Caribbean has been buffeted by the unpredictable winds of runaway piracy. Now, by the power of the ultimate insult, I hereby banish those chaotic tempests and usher in a new age of orderly consumerism. I am Ozzy Mandrill. Look upon my works, ye mighty pirates, and despair. No! <laughs> Where's the kaboom? There's supposed to be a Caribbean shattering kaboom! Work, damn your eyes! Work! I knew this ridiculous plan would never succeed. I guess this just goes to show that you should never send an Australian girly man to do the work of a real pirate. Lechuk, get back here and help me fix this thing. Oh, Ozzy. You two stay here and guard the robot. Good luck. Try not to break any of my stuff. Nice kid, but about as sharp as a soggy pancake. You know what I mean? Tell me about it. 
I'll show that chum bucket of panty waste some real voodoo. Honey, I'm home. Guybrush, look out for the ultimate insult. Oh, I don't know how you dimwits managed to sabotage my magnificent insult amplification apparatus, but I'll at least have the satisfaction of annihilating your arrogant pirate souls. Somehow, I always knew it would end like this. Really? Prepare to meet your doom, Three Puts. What the didgeridoo is that? Let's get out of here. You won't escape that easy, you swashbuckling ninnies. Right, Barrier Reef! from up here. Guybrush? Yes? Am I the only one seeing a giant walking statue of LeChuck on our front lawn? Uh, no. Elaine! Ah! 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 Guybrush! Help! Hang on, I'll be right back. Guybrush, don't you dare leave me! Don't worry, my beloved. Guybrush isn't going anywhere. <laughs> Let go of me, you rock-brained monstrosity! You insignificant mortal flea! How dare you wield your pathetic voodoo magics against the immortal might of the demon pirate Nechuk! I'll grind your bones to make me grog, you triple diamond bastard! Ah, oh, shut up! How may I serve you, master? Well, eventually, I'll be wanting you to squish every pirate on the face of the planet into a sticky red goo. But for now, let's just kill Guybrush Reaprod! <laughs> Come on, guys! We've got to get this giant monkey robot moving now! Where's my granddaughter? Actually, that's kind of a funny story. Freepod! Where did you find that ridiculous-looking contraption? It was a present from H.T. Marley. Grandpa? I'm in here, dear! Well, what an unexpected family reunion. Too bad I have to ruin it by savaging your puny minds with the power of the ultimate insult! Now what? Now is your undoing, evil one. Now is the time foretold in the ancient prophecies of Monkey Island. Now is the time for the ultimate in Monkey Combat! <laughs>
Monkey robot guy brush. <laughs>
Hey, what's going on here? Lechuk, you colossal idiots! I order you to cease this at once! Hey, wait a minute! You can't do this to me! I'm Ozzy Mandrel! I'm the future of the Caribbean! I come in! Stop! Don't! Ah! Oh, yeah! yeah! Think about it, Pink Boy. Guybrush, how can I ever thank you for reuniting me with my granddaughter? Well, for starters, you could put on some pants. <laughs> Consider it done. Also, yes? Would you please be the governor of Melee Island again? Uh-uh, no way, no how. I hated being governor. Why do you think I went all the way to Australia in the first place? For the cuisine? Grandfather, please. I can't stand being the governor. It's no way for a pirate to live. Guybrush and I need to be on the open seas, waving our swords, swashing our buckles. We're too young to become career bureaucrats. Well, <laughs> all right. But you better come by to visit. Every month. And I want to start seeing some pirate great-grandchildren. Um, <laughs> we'll see what we can do. <laughs> and so the circle of life continues. Hey, you're a talking monkey. Oh, uh, Elaine, I'd like you to meet Jojo Jr., the monkey prince of Monkey Island. Well, thank you, noble Jojo, for helping to make the seas once again safe for pirates everywhere. It was my pleasure, Mrs. Threepwood. But now I must be going. Somewhere out there, my monkey brothers and I have a destiny to fulfill. Where will you go? I don't really know. I hear that Martha's Vineyard is nice this time of year, but first we have a crew member who wants to disembark. Timmy! Farewell, everyone. Goodbye, Jojo. We'll never forget you. Of course I'll never forget him. I mean, he's a talking monkey. How creepy is that? Well, that's it. We've saved the mansion, found your grandfather, and once again made the Caribbean safe for bloodthirsty, grog-swilling reprobates. Whew, who knew married life would be so much fun? Skybrush, now that Grandpa's governor again, we're free. <laughs> we can go wherever and do whatever we want. I want another shot at taming the manatee. Elaine? Oh, hey. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> um, Elaine? Uh, Timmy? Uh, Herman? Mommy? D George? Hey guys, I'm stuck down here. Wally, Lindy, oh, long way down. Uh, Murray, uh, Sean, Mike, oh, Jar Jar. <laughs> <laughs> 